the committee shall come to order. We are meeting today to consider a committee print of, a leg of legislative proposals to comply with the reconciliation directive in the concurrent resolution on the budget for fiscal year 2022. The committee print has been properly noticed and circulated electronically, along with copies of timely, timely filed amendments that will be available to, on the committee repository at docs.house.gov. Late amendments are also circulated electronically. Pursuant to committee rules, members of the committee may submit written opening statements for the record. I ask that members may revise and extend the remarks from the committee print to be considered at this markup and have those remarks included in the record. Without objection, so ordered. Without objection, the chair may also declare a recess subject to the call of the chair. Pursuant to committee rule 3I and the House Rule 11, Clause 2, I announce that I may postpone further proceed proceedings today on the question of approving any measure or, or matter or adopting an amendment on which a recorded vote or the yeas and nays have been ordered. Document, documents, amendments, or motion must be submitted to HNRC docs email from a house maintained email address. Pursuant to the committee rule 3L, and the latest guidance from the attending physician, anyone present at the hearing room today must wear a mask covering their mouth and their nose, regardless of vaccination status. Please note that as usual, members are responsible for their own microphones. Members can be muted by staff only to avoid inadvertent background uh, noise. I strongly recommend that members use the grid, view, and the pin, and the pin, the timer, so that it remains visible. Members experience technical problems should immediately inform committees uh, for their assistance. The ranking member has uh, requested that he be recognized for a formal opening statement, so I will recognize him. But first, I, I will make it. Uh, I will recognize myself for my opening comments. I want to uh, note for the record uh, what you all what you already know that today markup is not a committee business as usual. Today, we have a once in a lifetime, once in a generation opportunity to advance a bold, ambitious investment in the people of, of the United States. The president has asked us to draft a spending framework that will confront the damage being done by climate change, put our country on a sustainable path and equitable economic and, envi and, and environmental uh, considerations on this environmental path that will create millions of jobs. We have been tasked with spending 25.6 billion over 10 years. And in addition to that, I've included a variety of revenue raising measures to raise an additional $6 billion. If past experience is anything uh, to go by, our Republican colleagues will argue that these revenue raisers will reduce our energy security and increase our reliance on foreign minerals. That and other na national priorities, such as Afghanistan, require we not we not do our part in the reconciliation package that's coming from the House of Representatives, and that was a, a as a based on a resolution, a bipartisan resolution in the Senate. But these are the these all these tired talking points we have repeatedly heard on this committee, and they continue to have no basis in reality. Billions in the legislation will go toward tribal hospitals, providing access to comprehensive health care services for communities that suffer from historic underrepresentation and underinvestment. 650 million will go toward emergency drought response, which is sorely needed as the West faces climate driven, a climate driven mega drought. 1 billion will go toward wildfire safety, including tribal communities to help reduce fire danger and save lives. Throughout the country, coastal and Great Lake communities will receive funding they need to become more resilient as they faced increased risk of storms, sea level rise, and erosion. And we will direct 3.5 billion to the land management agencies to support a civilian climate board. However, we also need to look beyond the top line. For example, even with these investments, the Indian Health Services will not be able to address all of its priority healthcare construction projects from 1993. Critical drought relief and wildfire protection needs in the West will not be fully met. I stand behind this proposal based on the spending levels put forward, but I also fully intend to work with my colleagues in the House and the Senate to ensure that the priorities under our jurisdiction 
re, that are underfunded do not remain so, and that, that there be an effort to address a package which is fully funded and fully begins to address every need that we have identified. Our committee has, broad, has a broad mandate to support tribes, territorial areas, public lands, oceans, waters, wildlife, and environmental reviews that give communities a voice in the process. These are all critical needs and they deserve to be funded as such. Several of our Republican colleagues wrote to me suggesting that we not meet today to complete this work. If it is, it is my determination that members are capable of focusing on multiple important critical tasks all at once. In fact, I believe our constituents expect nothing less, and so we are proceeding. I look forward to uh, advancing this important measure today and certainly before September 15th, and I look forward to continuing to fight for the communities that we represent and the resources that we, are, that we steward. Mr. Ranking Member, uh, you are recognized for your opening statement, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Where's the rationale? What the heck is going on and what are Democrats trying to do to our country? I want to know the answer to these questions. My Republican colleagues want to know the answers. And I believe America wants to know the answer to these questions. As we speak, countless Americans and our allies remain stranded in Afghanistan by President Biden and are at the mercy of the Taliban and ISIS-K. Thousands of refugees are heading to America. What are the plans for resettlement? Have they even been properly vetted? The president and this Democrat majority continue ignoring the humanitarian, environmental, and national security crisis at our southern border. Millions of Americans are without power and other basic necessities and are beginning the long road to rebuilding their lives following the devastation of Hurricane Ida and the massive flooding that resulted from it. Deadly wildfires have ravaged nearly 3 million acres of the Western United States, destroying and threatening numerous homes, businesses, and other critical infrastructure, while drought also ravages much of the West. Where's the rationale? At any other time, any one of these would be a crisis of national proportions, the kind of national priority that requires Congress to put partisanship aside and come together for the good of the nation. Unfortunately, the exact opposite is true. We're seeing this Democrat majority dig in their heels and refuse to work across the aisle, instead choosing to prioritize partisan slush funds and payouts to special interest groups. A myriad of crises facing America remain unresolved. And in the meantime, we find ourselves here today, not actually here, but remotely through Zoom, to debate a climate change bill that arguably will do nothing, nothing to mitigate carbon in the global atmosphere, which at the end of the day is the total premise of the climate debate. It's easily arguable that these misguided policies will actually increase global carbon, uh, global carbon in the atmosphere. The Natural Resources Committee Democrats' plans for budget reconciliation are at best a package of partisan government overreach, the likes of which uh, this committee rarely sees. At worst, their bill is a mean to hamstring the economy, cripple domestic energy production, and make the U.S. dependent on foreign adversaries. Committee Republicans stand united in strong opposition to this package. Their bill's staggering $31.7 billion price tag, still less than 1% of the Democrat majority's total $3.5 trillion spending target, dwarf the budgets of 27 U.S. states. Their deficit spending proposals saddle future generations with insurmountable debt in order to give Nancy Pelosi things like a $200 million earmark. On top of spending all these taxpayer dollars, the majority has conveniently left out increasing funding for the Inspector General oversight of the spending. I ask again, where is the rationale? It spends more than $3.5 billion to resurrect a nearly 100-year-old make-work program first implemented by FDR. 
creating a new bureaucracy to compete against American businesses at a time when help wanted signs remain in the windows of thousands of private businesses nationwide. Where is the rationale? Meanwhile, the bill makes zero new investments in new water storage, failing to address and therefore further exasperating the Western drought crisis. Where is the rationale? Their proposal attacks safe and reliable American energy production, spends millions to kill domestic American natural resource jobs at home, imposes new taxes and fees on working families, and makes our nation more reliant than ever on foreign adversaries for critical minerals and energy resources that we could be producing more cleanly, cheaply, and effectively right here at home while growing our economy with high paying jobs, many of those jobs in rural areas. Where is the rationale? This bill has $350 million to close down a copper mine that could produce 25% of the U.S. demands for copper over the next 50 years. While the majority talks about a green economy and a, an electrified economy, where's the rationale of shutting down a copper mine that's already ready to be in production? Sadly, I could go on and on with the list of issues this legislation fails to address. Earlier this week, I and many of my colleagues called on Chairman Grijalva to postpone this markup to end the partisan charade and focus on the people's business. Unfortunately, our pleas have fallen on deaf ears. It is therefore unfortunate but necessary that I have to offer this motion to postpone today's markup so that this committee can refocus its priorities on the American people's priorities instead of the pet projects of Nancy Pelosi, Bernie Sanders, and others. I ask again, and I hope my colleagues can explain, where's the rationale? Mr. Chair, under Clause 4, Rule 16, I move that the consideration of this legislation be postponed until September 14, 2021. Gentlemen, will hold for a moment. The, the gentleman would please uh, hold for a second, Mr. Westerman. I'd second that motion. Thank you, Mr. Westerman and colleagues. Uh, I wanted to make sure that in response to your motion and second uh, to postpone um, today's proceeding till September 14th. Uh, does, uh, does the member have the motion in writing? I do. It's been submitted, correctly. Yes, it has. The motion has been circulated. Uh, I, I, at this point, uh, I would move uh, that we table uh, the member's motion. Uh, the motion to table is in order. I and second that. Not debatable. The question is, shall the committee table the motion to postpone? Uh, I will pause for all those members in favor can unmute. Aye. 
Aye. All those in favor aye. say aye. 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 Oh. aye. Members, aye. Uh, applause so that members aye. opposed can unmute. All those no. opposed? No. 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 The members no. will please mute again. In the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it, and the motion to table is agreed to. Is there a roll call vote? Is there a request for a recorded vote, Mr. Westerman? There is, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Recorded vote has been requested. Um, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Grialva. Yes, thank you. Mr. Rialba votes aye. Mr. Westerman? No. Mr. Westerman votes no. Mrs. Napolitano? Yes. Mrs. Napolitano votes aye. Mr. Young? Mr. Costa? Aye. Mr. Costa votes aye. Mr. Gomert? No. Mr. Gomert votes no. Mr. Sablon? Aye. Mr. Sablon votes aye. Mr. Lamborn? No. Mr. Lamborn votes no. Mr. Huffman? Aye. Mr. Huffman votes aye. Mr. Whitman? No. Mr. Whitman votes no. Mr. Lowenthal? Aye. Uh, Mr. Lowenthal votes aye. Mr. McClintock? Think about this uh, cinema no. zoom at. Um, Mr. McClintock votes no. Mr. Gallego? Aye. Mr. Gallego votes aye. Mr. Gosar? Mr. Gosar votes no. Mr. Nagoose? Aye. Mr. Nagoose votes aye. Mr. Graves? No. Mr. Graves votes no. Mr. Levin? Aye. Mr. Levin votes aye. Mr. Heiss? No. Mr. Heiss votes no. Ms. Porter? Mrs. Radawagon? Ms. Leger Fernandez? Aye. Ms. Leger Fernandez votes aye. Mr. Webster? Nay. Mr. Webster votes no. Ms. Stansberry? Aye. Ms. Stansberry votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon? Ms. Velasquez? Velasquez votes aye. Ms. Velasquez votes aye. Mr. Fulcher? Ms. Deget. Deget votes aye. Ms. Deget votes aye. Mr. Stauber. Mr. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes aye. Ms. Brownlee votes aye. Mr. Tiffany. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes aye. Stingle votes aye. Mr. Carl. No. Mr. Carl votes no. Mr. McEachin. Aye. Mr. McEachin votes aye. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale's no. Mr. Rosendale votes no. Mr. Soto. Votes aye. Mr. Soto votes aye. Mr. Moore. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas votes aye. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes no. Ms. Harrell votes no. Mr. Garcia. Garcia votes aye. Mr. Garcia votes aye. Mrs. B Bobert. Bobert votes no. Ms. Bobert votes no. Mr. Case. Aye. Mr. Case votes aye. Mr. Obernolte. Obernolte no. Mr. Obernolte votes no. Ms. McCollum. Aye. Ms. McCollum votes aye. Mr. Benz. Mr. Benz votes no. Mr. Benz votes no. Mr. Cohen. I mean, yes, 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 yes. Mr. Cohen votes aye. Mr. Tonko. Votes aye. Mr. Uh, Tonko votes aye. Ms. Tlaib. Tlaib votes yes. Ms. Tlaib votes aye. Ms. Trahan. Aye. Ms. Trahan votes aye. Don't 
how am I recorded? This is Ms. Porter. Ms. Porter is not recorded. I vote aye. Ms. Porter votes aye. How am I recorded? This is Stauber. Mr. Stauber, you are not recorded. A Stauber will vote no. Mr. Stauber votes no. This is Gonzalez Colon. How am I recorded? Ms. Gonzalez Colon, you are not recorded. I wish to vote no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes no. Any other uh, members wish to be uh, recorded? Any members wish to uh, change their vote? Hearing none, uh, the clerk will report, please. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 26 and the nays are 17. The yeas have it and the motion uh, is tabled. The item for consideration is the committee print previously circulated. Without objection, the measure will be considered as read and open at amendment at any point. Uh, before we begin the general debate period, I would just note to members that uh, with this volume of amendments, there will be ample opportunity to debate the measure during that amendment process. That being said, uh, does any member wish to be recognized uh, on the measure before we begin amendments? Who seeks to be recognized? Who seeks to be recognized? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Graves. I just want to make sure I understand. You're, you're asking about opening statements? Yeah, well, I'm asking for the general debate on the item under consideration, and then we're going to go into amendments after that happens. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, I would like to seek recognition. Gentleman is recognized, Mr. Graves. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, um, I, I apologize. We, we we had to find somewhere where we could get a, a good enough cell connection uh, using both AT and T and Verizon because we just got hit with the fifth most powerful hurricane in U.S. history and the most powerful one to hit our state ever. Uh, winds preliminarily recorded to be up to about 190 190 miles per hour. So you can take what's going on up in New York, New Jersey, and you can throw in a little bit of of wind action there. Um, cell phone service is out um, uh, across most of the area of South Louisiana. We don't have water, we don't have sewer, we don't have electricity. Um, and this legislation will effectively, oh, and, and, and in fact, we have active search and rescue operations going on as we speak because cell phone service is down. So we don't even know where the hell people are right now uh, because we can't get in touch with them. Uh, doing welfare checks all over the Southern part of the state because because we don't we can't even communicate with one another. We have 911 systems down, emergency operations centers without uh, communications, and um, and this legislation. Oh, and we have uh, gas stations. Uh, I, I believe last I saw, 60% of our gas stations without fuel, with people sleeping in their cars outside of gas stations overnight in order to refuel their vehicles and their generators because it's the only way that some people can live that are on oxygen that have to have their insulin refrigerated and things like that. And quite frankly, the fact that I'm freaking sitting here right now, even spending time with y'all is ridiculous. This legislation, what it does is it actually is a is probably a final nail in the coffin of the industry that's that right now is struggling because 95% of the offshore industry right now, energy production is shut down, 95%. We have somewhere like 20% of the nation's refining capacity. It's shut down right now. And, and so this legislation comes in and tries to further kill it and then all this does is benefit iran it benefits uh russia it benefits china and and you sit there and say oh you're just being dramatic this is just rhetoric well i mean look at what's happened we, we talked about this the exact things that we said about increasing global emissions increasing energy prices becoming more dependent upon other countries that's exactly what's happening you you called it rhetoric and it's exactly what's happening right now I, I just, I, 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 it's, it's dumbfounding to me that, that people can think these things are good ideas. Like, where does this come from? You know, people say, oh, what happened in Afghanistan was just a, that was just a, a one-time thing. It was bad decision. No, this is, this is applying the stupidity and the afterthoughts of Afghanistan policy across every other area of government. Mr. Chairman, I, I just, I, I, this isn't political. Just stop. We have people that are dying right now. We have people that are, that are trying to live in homes without roofs that homes that have fallen down 
and you're sitting here doing a markup to spend however many gazillion dollars you want to spend. I just, this is just really ill-timed. It's insensitive. It's, it's, it's not paying attention to the realities on the ground. And, and I just, I, I urge you just, just have a little humanity and just, just take a break. This is just stupid. It, it is. It's just stupid that I've got to take time from, from, from doing what I need to be doing to help get people the resources. I just met with the fire chief. He, he, I mean, he's sitting there going through like they, they don't even have water. He just got a fuel tank. And, and, and we're sitting here talking about marking up trillion dollar legislation. If this were in your district, this wouldn't be happening and you know it. And, and I just I just urge y'all just just take a step back right now and and just just be a little sensitive to what in the world's going on, please. Gentlemen, yield back. Uh, I, you know, Mr. Graves, first of all, it, uh, uh, I, my, I sense in the sense of, of, of committee members goes beyond empathy uh, for your constituents, the people of the Gulf, and particularly Louisiana and where you are. Um, that tragedy, natural catastrophe of uh, proportions that, uh, that have uh, caused much hurt and much damage uh, throughout the region and to people, of course. And so, uh, as we separate the, the 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 debate that needs to happen over reconciliation, and what those priorities are and should be, uh, we hope that we are making some consequential investments in preventing the worst from happening in the future. Having said that, I also uh, think that there are also a function of this committee that all of my colleagues would agree with, Mr. Graves, that the response on the part of uh, the federal government to the crisis that the people in the region are are experiences through no fault of their own uh that that response be quick efficient and uh and accountable to to the committee and to other committees and i uh i i i hope that is uh as that is occurring that uh, they'll also keep the committee and its respective staffs informed as to the uh efficiency of the response that i think uh, we we all bear a responsibility for in the region. So thank you very much. Uh, anyone else wish to uh, debate the underlining? Uh, Mr. Chair. Proposal? Mr. Chair. Who, who seeks uh, to be recognized? Ed Case here. Mr. Case, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much for the opportunity to offer some opening remarks. Let me say first that I generally support this bill. Each and all of these initiatives um, address key priorities, and I very much hope they do advance. But I do need to note several concerns with the overall reconciliation process uh, we are pursuing uh, to include this measure. Uh, first, uh, as I understand it, this bill is largely not paid for. Uh, we do have $6 billion in pay-fors that I generally support, but that leaves fully $25 billion plus that is not paid for. I have to ask where are the revenues to support the, that spending coming from. We've just borrowed over $5 trillion for COVID-19 emergency assistance in the last 18 months, taking our total debt from 23 to 20, over 28 trillion. We cannot afford to continue these borrowings and reconciliation. If, as I believe there are solid initiatives for natural, these are solid initiatives for natural resources, then we should and can find the revenues or offsets to support them. In fact, I think we have this backwards. We should start with what we're willing to support in revenues and offsets and then work from there into what it supports in our programs and spending priorities, which I hope would include these. Second, I don't know where this bill fits in the overall scheme of reconciliation and can't and won't make a fully informed decision unless and until I do. How do these priorities match up against other priorities and other committees? Where should available revenue raises and offsets, which do have their limits, be best applied? Are there other revenues and offsets available to support these initiatives? I can't make these judgments now uh, in the narrow confines of this bill. A third, we have all been assured that we will not be asked to vote on an overall House bill that would not also pass the Senate. So where does this piece of the House reconciliation package fit into that agreement with the Senate? It may well be that it works with the Senate, but maybe the Senate has different priorities that we need to work through. So for these reasons, I will support this bill, but I must be clear that at this stage, that's purely aspirational and I must reserve my support for any overall reconciliation bill and this piece of it based on the big picture of available revenues and offsets, program and spending priorities within these bills and Senate agreement. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Case, and as always, forthright.
and to the point and very much appreciated not only by the chair but by, by your colleagues on this committee and that uh, and the one the one point that you made that I think everybody is in agreement with it is the, that um, this committee doing its job and sending out uh, based on the spending levels that it will get to with the Senate but you're right it's the Senate's role in this is paramount but I think the, I've defined our role to do what we have to do as members of the House and then the consequences later, but I, I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Costa, you're recognized, sir. Thank you. I want to thank the chairman and uh, and uh, our subcommittee chairs, as well as uh, our staff that have worked very hard to put this together. Uh, I want to begin by indicating that uh, I support uh, uh, the efforts to move on this legislation, uh, but have uh, similar concerns that my colleague, uh, Congressman Ed Case, just, uh, I think, uh, detailed. Uh, the fact is, is that we um, uh, have multiple crises, as the chairman noted, around the country uh, from uh, uh, droughts to uh, in California in the West of fires to issues of the impacts. It was noted by one of our other colleagues by this horrific uh, Hurricane Ida that has not only affected uh, Louisiana and Mississippi, but has gone completely up the, the eastern coast. And we've seen the devastation uh, this morning in, in places like Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York. Um, yeah, clearly, uh, our committee needs to address issues of, of climate change that uh, we uh, find ourselves unable to deal with as it relates to every region of the country. And that doesn't even begin to talk about the pandemic, obviously, that we have been with for 18 months. Um, these are challenging times, historical times in our nation's history. And uh, we have to ultimately um, uh, look at how we respond and, and uh, invest in America. And I have been one who has argued for a long time that we need to uh, invest in our infrastructure. That's why I support the bipartisan infrastructure package that I hope we'll vote on later this month. Um, this reconciliation uh, process is, is challenging for all of us. Uh, and we have to agree with the Senate ultimately to get something done. Um, uh, my Republican colleagues, who I always like to work with on a bipartisan basis, but given the the delusion of amendments today, clearly it's a strategy to simply slow down the process. And while I always would take amendments by any of our colleagues seriously, I, I, I wonder what the real intent of, of, of the amendments that we see before us today. Uh, I will reserve my judgment. I will vote for this measure in our committee today. I, the, the expenditures versus the revenues, I think, are not in balance uh, as uh, Congressman Case uh, indicated, uh, we have to work on that uh, and determine, you know, how we pay for these things that are non-COVID, non-climate change related uh, under the rule. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, I am going to vote for something that we have consensus with our colleagues in the Senate that is pragmatic and practical and that uh, reflects the needs of our country. Uh, yes, the situation, as the chairman noted, uh, in Louisiana is, is devastating. Uh, we, uh, every region of the country seems to be having impacted in one way or another. But that doesn't mean that we can't multitask. So the work today is important. I don't know what marathon of voting that, Mr. Chairman, I, I have your support. I mean, I, I support your efforts. God bless all of us as we try to work through this. But the bottom line is, is that uh, we got to move this process forward and we'll all have the ability at the end of the day to determine what we think a reconciliation uh, measure looks like between the House and the Senate uh, that uh, is paid for, that is practical and meets the needs that, that the president has stipulated to build this country back together, uh, build back it better in a way that invests in America's future. So I yield back the balance of my time these critical investments are necessary, but clearly uh, we have a lot of work to do to make this uh, process um, uh, facilitate in a way that reflects the needs of our country. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Costa. And, and, and reaffirming what I believe is a, is a good reputation this committee has of having a work ethic. 
and that uh, and that you know, we we we, uh, we work at our, our at our responsibilities, and I and and I think your last closing point uh, reaffirmed that, and I appreciate it. Uh, with that, is there uh, anyone else uh, that seeks to be recognized on the uh, on the proposal? Mr. Chairman, Jerry Carl. Mr. Carl, you're recognized, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I really encourage you to stop and think. We just spent 16 and a half hours last night or yesterday in, in a committee on armed service, and we're trying to shore up problems that we have in Afghanistan and around the world. Those are problems that really, really need to be taken care of today. I don't understand why this is so important to take care of today, but I feel like the Democrat agenda here is uh, it, it's almost like riding the titanic and we've hit an iceberg we don't care about how much water we're taking on we've got to make it we've got to make uh, we've got to make a landing in, in new york at a set time so i feel like we're slowly sinking believe me people are watching this on the gulf coast when you talk about louisiana mississippi alabama we just went through a horrific hurricane nothing like louisiana but with, when you start looking at Tennessee, when you start looking at New Jersey and New York also, they are affected by this same hurricane. They have got damages today. They're licking their wounds. They're trying to dry themselves off. And what they're doing today will impact your election in 2020. Because what you're doing today is going to affect the prices of fuel at the pump. It's going to affect the prices of the fuel in their homes when it comes winter time. And I really encourage you to slow down. Please, let's slow down. Let's look at putting this off a couple of weeks. Nothing will be hurt. But it would certainly look so much better in the eyes of the Americans when it comes election time. Because I promise you, the majority of the people that are on this call are going to get pounded by this day and the actions that you're taking at this point. I thank you for your service to this country. I thank you for your service to this, this committee. And, and I give my time back. Gentlemen, back. Anyone else seek to be recognized? Yeah, Matt, uh, Chairman, it's Congresswoman Tlaib. Congresswoman, you're recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I, I, I with, you know, so many folks talking about uh, crises after crises. That's what happens when we do nothing. And so I know in Michigan, 800,000 people lost, had a huge power outage, right? Uh, all because of the climate issue. Uh, we've literally, my families have been flooded four times, four times taking sewage out of their basements. People are walking out in their streets, residential streets where there are schools and parks and, and homes literally turned into rivers. So I need to do something to help my residents and we can do it. We can do so much more right now in getting to work instead of making excuses. Again, our residents have to show up to work even in the middle of power outages. They have to show up to work even though their basements are flooded and they gotta clean it out. They have to show up to work even if though that they don't have internet at home. So all the challenges that we're having right now, we should be blessed that we're alive and that we're ready and that we have to serve the 650,000 people that sent us to do something to help them right now. And I, I don't want to do nothing. I don't wanna take a break. I want to be able to go back to the coffee hours that I'm doing with my residents and say, we had a natural resources committee and we were able to do this and that. Because guess what? Doing nothing and waiting and waiting and waiting is resulting in more pain and suffering for our families here at home. So I'm asking all of us to please, let's work hard. Let's buckle, work hard. The conditions that you are complaining about, that is what our residents are dealing with every single day right now when we do nothing. And so I'm just really asking all of us to please, you know, uh, you know, roll up your sleeves, do the sacrifices for our families and let's get this work done. We have to, even if we disagree, let's do it. Let's go through this committee process. Let's have this process in place. Again, we have a whole team that can help us be able to serve our families during these crises, but we have to do legislative work. It is so incredibly needed right now for our families. With that, I yield Mr. Chair. Thank you, General Lady Yields. Uh, I, like I said earlier, I, just to remind you that we have a volume, I think it's over 100 or so at this point, 
of amendments that have been filed. And uh, I think on many of the points, uh, we'll have ample time to continue this uh, discussion, debate. Uh, but if anybody else wishes to be recognized in the substance of the proposal, uh, please indicate. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Westerman. Mr. Westerman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank uh, you, sir. I made my opening remarks and I wasn't going to comment during this period until the gentlelady, um, I think, made our point, except she said that uh, we need to take action because the crises we're facing in our country today are because we haven't taken action. And I take exception to that. The actions that were taken in Afghanistan by President Biden and his cabinet caused the crisis in Afghanistan. The actions taken by uh, Congress and not uh, fixing the environmental rules that are allowing people to stop forest management in the West have caused catastrophic wildfires. The actions that haven't been taken or that have been taken that have stopped the development of water storage systems are causing drought in the West. The actions that this administration took to uh, undo the Trump policies on the southern border have caused 6,000 people a day to come across our borders illegally. And that's exactly the kind of policies that are being perpetuated through this reconciliation bill. And we're trying to warn you that, in, that passing these bills, that pushing this policy is going to hurt American energy. It's going to hurt American jobs. It's going to make us more dependent on foreign countries. It's going to make us more dependent on China and Russia and the Middle East for energy and uh, minerals. It's not going to do anything for the climate. It's actually going to cause more carbon emissions. It's going to produce energy in less sustainable ways. It's going to put onerous regulations on American businesses. It's going to cause competition among the private sector who can't hire people right now. So I would say the actions that Congress has taken, that the administration has taken, are exactly why we have the crises we're facing today. And the bill we're marking up today is simply going to add on to those crises. That's why we're asking you to slow down. We're asking the majority not to push these onerous policies on the American public, and especially not at this time. I yield back. Gentlemen, yields. Uh, I think we, uh, anyone else seek to be recognized? I, I think we'll have ample time, let me say it again, to, uh, to, to debate revisionist history or not. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we can do that. But if anybody wishes to be recognized on the substance, uh, Please indicate. Is, if there's no further debate before we begin the uh, amendment process, uh, and hearing none, uh, before we uh, before recognizing members to offer amendments, I would note, in the interest of time, that I have, uh, that I am prepared to accept the following Republican amendments: Westerman number one, Westerman number six, Gobert number twenty-four. Robert number 210, Graves number seven, Bents number one, Moore number 44, and Moore number 48, and a second degree amendment, uh, Grijalva number two. Uh, Mr. Re uh, Mr. Ranking member, let me ask you, and I yield to you, uh, is, is there support for adopting these Republican amendments and that uh, that I just mentioned for uh, unanimous consent, sir? Uh, yes, it is, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate Thank you uh, accepting those amendments. Thank you, Mr. Westerman, and I we appreciate the cooperation. In, in that case, I ask unanimous consent that the following amendments be considered adopted by uh, in, co in committee print: Westerman one, Westerman two, Bober twenty-four, Bober two ten, Graves seven, Bents number one, Moore forty-four, and Moore forty-eight, and a second-degree amendment Grijalva number two. And without objection, so ordered. Uh, I hope that my colleagues will. Uh, I hope that my colleagues at some point would consider offering some of their amendments and block, and withdrawing some others. 
uh, especially as the day wears on. But as always, I intend to provide members every opportunity to thoroughly debate uh, the matter that's before us. With that, uh, I, rec I de designate the number one, uh, the a manager's amendment, and I now recognize myself. My amendment primarily makes technical and clarifying changes to ensure that the language fully achieves the intended purpose of each provision. It also modifies the necessary terms and conditions for the expenditure of funds on tribal water settlements, non-tribal water settlements, and potable water projects for tribes and other communities. In addition, the amendment adds two new provisions with the withdrawal of the Thompson Divide and Chaco Canyon. These withdrawals complement other invest investments for the long-term health of public lands while ensuring the spending supports sound stewardship of taxpayer dollars. I urge adoption of the manager's amendment and yield back. Is there any further discussion on that? Here we no further debate. The question is on Grijalva amendment number one. All those in favor, on uh, Unmute and all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Um, I aye. will now pause so that members opposed can unmute. All those opposed, please indicate by saying no. 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 Uh, that was Mr. Uh, Chairman, can we have a report? Yes. Oh. Um, uh, members will pause again in the opinion of the chairs that eyes have it and the amendment is agreed to. Mr. Chairman, Mr. we have a recorded vote. Yeah, Rick, Mr. Westerman, thank you. The recorded vote has been requested. This vote will po be postponed pursuant to my prior announcement. Uh, at this point, let me recognize Representative Bobert. You have the next amendment designated as number 25 and you are recognized uh, for five minutes. Ms. Bobert, you're recognized. I apologize, Mr. Chairman, I couldn't hear you. Oh, you're up. Uh, Representative, you're recognized on uh, amendment designated number 25, your amendment, and you are recognized for five minutes to, uh, to, to discuss your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment should be an absolute no brainer. It prevents the Department of Interior uh, to pay the salary of anyone involved in eco terrorism. Tree spiking is a disgusting form of terrorism that injures innocent Americans just trying to do their job. This amendment should uh, receive bipartisan support, and I encourage my colleagues to support this. Um, tree spiking does not just prevent um, people from wanting to. Um, log or harvest timber, um, but this also puts our firefighters in danger when there is a wildfire and they go through and are um, uh, uh, cutting um, in the forest uh, to to stop this fire. So I uh, encourage all of my colleagues to support this and I yield back. Thank you. Uh, let me uh, let me recognize myself for uh, in opposition to the amendment. Uh, I oppose the amendment and I would urge my colleagues to vote no. The amendment is not a solution, it, it is a solution in search of a problem. Uh, there are not equal terrorism trying to infiltrate the Interior Department. This amendment is messaging uh, gimmick. However, as drafted, uh, it risks creating procedural issues which imperil the bill. For instance, the committee print is a serious proposal designed to invest. Uh, in our future by addressing the climate crisis, creating jobs, and providing the needed resources for communities that need it the most. This amendment has nothing to enhance or refine that investment, and that's why it should be rejected. And with that, I urge a uh, no vote, and I yield back. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Mr. Chairman. Who, who seeks to be recognized? Dale. Sir, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would urge every one of the committee members to please support this legislation. We right now have a nominee 
for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, a disgraced nominee from the state of Montana that has been involved in tree spiking, putting people's lives at risk. And we cannot have people that are going out into the forest, stopping the harvesting of our timber and putting lives at stake, whether it is the firefighters or the people that are actually in the plants that are trying to process this timber to continue on like this. So I would urge everyone, please, to support this legislation. Thank you. The gentleman yields back. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Mr. Chairman. Who seeks uh, recognition? Uh, great. Great to recognize, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, um, I'll take a minute here um, to respond to comments lady from, from Michigan. Um, I gotta tell you, <laughs> I, I, I'm really shocked that rather than recognizing that it's made an error uh, by, by moving forward right now and, and fail to properly prioritize instead she chose to double down on, on that decision. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to remind you and, and, and talk to my friends on the, on the other side and actually my truck that I do want to Express some appreciation to Mr. Case and Mr. Costner for, for exercising some discretion in regard to absurdity of budget numbers. I appreciate you all recognizing that there is a limit somewhere um, and, and y'all's desire to, 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 to make sure this thing's paid for. I, I obviously don't, don't totally agree with everything, but, but I appreciate y'all ha having some sensitivity there. I, I do. Thank you for, for noting that. But, but back to Mr. Talib, Mr. Mr. Chairman, it's our job. Um, to, to, to represent people who do right for the country. And um, as, chairman, as you well know, we could we could spend uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, working through issues that are presented to us. And what you have to do all the time is you have to prioritize. And and so, um, you know, reminding members on, on the other side that, that you've all voted against. Every single one of you have voted against efforts to make south louisiana more resilient you've all voted against efforts to try to expedite as our ranking member has stated expedite project development delivery processes you, you've all and, and so right now part of the reason that we're dealing with some of the the chaos that we're dealing with is because your refusal and failure to actually recognize proper priorities and needs and voting against things that need to be done like miss bobert's amendment and, and so to, to suggest that, oh, well, people underwater they have flooding in their basements, still have to go to work, and people that, yeah, yeah, you're damn right they do, absolutely. But you know what? When you have people that are still missing, when you have people that don't have service that are out of contact and don't have water and wastewater, <coughs> like every single one of you do right now, like every single one of you do right now, what you're supposed to do is prioritize. The federal response here is not what it needs to be. It's not. and and. I'm not blaming this administration. This happens every time. And it takes about two weeks for folks to get kind of in battle rhythm. But, but what happens then is everybody's got to put all hands on deck and try and save lives and try and provide some of these, these necessities. If somebody thinks that establishing a civilian climate core is more important than going to search and rescue, more important than refrigerating somebody's insulin, more important than getting that lady oxygen that doesn't have it right now, that's fine. I'd love for you to explicitly say that so we can show the American people Colors are. So, so look, I'll shut up, but but this is crazy. What the ranking member said about all of these actions that are not thought out and just chasing these these emotions, this is dangerous stuff. This is dangerous stuff. And you may consider it to be rhetoric, but but some of the acting, then thinking that, that happened in Afghanistan, that's exactly what's happening right now in all of these other areas of policy where folks are acting on emotion, not acting on facts, not acting on evidence, not realizing that, you know what, I made a mistake, which I'll say, I make them every single day, multiple times. That's really dangerous. This is really dangerous stuff. And I think that this country and this committee could show better leadership that's being exercised right now. Mr. The gentleman yields back. Anyone else wish to be recognized on Bobert Amendment number 25? Hearing no further debate. The Sorry. question is, who wishes to be recognized? 
Gosar. Mr. Gosar, sir, you're recognized. Trying to get my camera going here. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And once again, uh, I, I rise to support the gentle lady from Colorado's amendment. You know, once again, uh, uh, we show uh, deference to holding people accountable for actions of terrorism. This is eco terrorism. That is nothing less uh, and can be stated nothing differently. Uh, there have to be ramifications for people when they do things like this. That, that timber is not the, that individual's property. It is the people's property in many cases because of the public lands. And so those people have to be held accountable. And for this committee and for the, the chairman to facilitate those types of actions, facilitate uh, the breaking of the law. And this country cannot stand unless we have equal application of the law. And I, I find it uh, very disheartening that we're not holding people accountable for their actions. So once again, I rise in support of the gentlelady from Colorado and would uh, ask everybody to support it. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Anyone uh, else wish to be recognized? This is Lauren Bobert. Will someone yield to me? The representative is seeking uh, I would yield the balance of my time. Who who is speaking? This this is Westerman. You don't have you you already finished your part of it. I'll, I haven't Chair, I would, I would yield, I would yield the balance of my time. Sir, when you finished talking, that was the balance of your time. Uh, Mr. Chair, so Mr. Chair, someone that has not, would you please? This is Mr. Time? Chairman. It's Congresswoman Harrell. I will. Uh, Ms. Give Thank you very much, Congresswoman. Congresswoman Yield, Ms. Bullard. Mr. Chairman, I haven't uh, debated this amendment. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I heard you so often, I, I got confused. But anyway, uh, no, I apologize. Uh, thank you, Congresswoman uh, Harrell, for yielding uh, some time to me. Um, I just want to um, reiterate with this amendment um, and it, it being an absolute no-brainer, no preventing the Department of Interior to pay a salary to anyone involved in ecoterrorism. The current nominee for the director of the BLM is still actively engaged in ecoterrorism as the tree spikes are still in the trees when she was very much involved in spiking. And the only reason that she's not in federal prison right now is uh, because she took an immunity deal with the FBI. And uh, so I, I just want to um, put weight on that, that this person, this individual is still currently involved in eco-terrorism. If, if you go and put uh, bombs or grenades out in the forest and leave them there and then say, oh, well, I'm not I don't have anything to do with it anymore. No, they're still there. They can still kill someone. Tree spiking is intended to kill people it is not a deterrent it is intended to kill people and uh with that i yield back thank you and he yields Ms. and Ms. representative harold yields uh anyone else seek to be recognized on bobert amendment mr chair i have my hand up this is mccollum Ms. mccollum sorry you're recognized that's okay I, I find uh, this conversation a uh, slightly ironic person's going to go through full Senate confirmation and we're doing a character assassination and people are, in my opinion, being a little fast and loose with some of the public statements. I just want to, on the record, um, ask my uh, colleagues if they think in 2014, when we had the Bundy standoff, uh, was uh, Cliven Bundy and uh, law enforcement after a 21 year legal dispute in which the United States uh, Bureau of Land Management obtained a court order directing Mr. Bundy to pay over $1 million in grazing fees. I did not hear any outrage from my colleagues on the other side of the aisle on that. So we're gonna talk about full enforcement and holding people accountable, sign me up, but let's make sure we hold everybody accountable. With that, I yield back, Mr. Chair. General lady yields back. Anyone else wish to be recognized in the amendment? Mr. Chairman. Who seeks to be recognized? Uh, Sir Nicholas from Guam, Mr. Chairman. 
to San Nicolas, please recognize, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to um, first put uh, an inquiry to the chair. Uh, is the language of this amendment consistent with the bird rule or would it's Go ahead. Uh, he's still talking. Uh, I, I can't hear you, Mr. S Representative, we, I, we, can, we cannot hear you. Of the Mr. Uh, Representative, um, you can speak. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Okay. Um, I think at the heart of your question is is, is the violation, as I stated at the beginning of of, of the discussion. That it creates that some amendments create significant procedural problems that are going to hurt us as we go through the process going into the Senate. Uh, let me leave it at that. You know, and instead of getting into whatever definition of the bird rule that will come down to a parliamentarian or whatever this thing is, I don't. Right now, we're talking about the procedures that we have under the instructions, and this would call cause significant uh, significant problems on that area. Oh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to clarify that because, you know, I, I think that we need to make sure we don't lose sight of that risk as we proceed with, with uh, all of the other amendments on this, uh, on this, uh, on this measure. Um, because as, as much as we, as much as we get into um, debating, you know, whether or not something sounds good or something looks like good policy, we're talking about a reconciliation bill and we have a very different set of rules that we need to follow. And so um, I would like for all of us to, to, please, uh, to please just stay focused on that so that we don't um, um, end up stepping out of bounds on what reconciliation is limited to. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and thank you for that admonition. I think that is important. We all keep that in mind. I appreciate that, uh, Representative. Uh, anyone else wish to be recognized? Uh, if there's no further discussion on the amendment and hearing no debate, the question is on the amend Bobert Amendment number 25. I will pause so that members in favor can unmute. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 I will now pause so that members opposed can unmute. All those opposed, please indicate by saying no. 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 Members can can then again uh, mute again, and the opinion of the chair, the noes have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Uh, can we get a recorded vote? A recorded vote has been requested, and the vote will be postponed pursuant to my prior announcement. Uh, Representative Bubber, you have the next amendment as well, designated uh, 218, and you are recognized uh, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank uh, you. Sorry, it, it would be it would be wonderful if we were actually in in person doing this stuff. And if we had a list of what was next, um, this amendment changes the date of the Secretary of Interior. Um, uh, that should publish final regulations from one year after the enactment of this act to three years and makes it conditional on having congressional hearings on how these regulations will affect the oil and gas industry in the United States. When average Americans are feeling the massive costs of this administration's reckless energy policy, Congress should be working overtime to enact common sense policies that foster domestic energy production. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment. Mr. Chair. Uh, anyone wish to be recognized in opposition? Mr. Chair, it's Representative Porter. 
Representative, uh, you're recognized for five minutes. I want to urge opposition to this amendment. The intent of the amendment is to raise revenue and protect taxpayers. And this amendment will absolutely undermine the intent of the provision in question. I strongly oppose the amendment and I urge all of my colleagues to vote no. I yield back. Gentlelady yields. Anyone else would wish to be recognized on uh, amendment 218? There no further debate. The question is on amendment, Gilbert Amendment 218. I will pause so that members uh, can unmute. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 I will now pause so that uh, members opposed can unmute. All those opposed, indicate by saying no. 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 Nope. No. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman, can I request a roll call? And the uh, gentlelady uh, request a roll call, a recorded vote uh, ha having been requested, it will be postponed pursuant to the prior announcement. Representative Bobert, you have the next amendment designated two, 223 and you're recognized for five minutes to present your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bobert Amendment 223 strikes the Civilian Climate Corps. During a time where employers cannot find work, this bill provides $3.5 billion for a new Civilian Climate Corps. There is absolutely no reason to funnel money toward a program like this when so many of our industries are already struggling to find workers. The duties and responsibilities of the CCC are vague and, un uh, and undefined. Uh, whether uh, whether it was intentional or a result from negligence is unclear. Either way, it should not be allowed. And uh, this, Mr. Chairman, is a problem that I see on a daily basis traveling um, my, my district and other areas uh, where people absolutely cannot find employees to work. Every business that you go to has a help wanted sign. And there are 10 million jobs unfulfilled in America right now. So this is uh, completely unnecessary and um, I urge adoption of my amendment uh, to my colleagues. Thank you all. I yield. General Lady Yields, uh, anyone else seek to be recognized on amendment 223? Mr. Chairman, I seek recognition in uh, opposition to the amendment. Mr. Nagus, sir, you're recognized for five. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, colleagues, I strongly oppose uh, this amendment. I would uh, urge all of my colleagues to vote no. This committee print invests in a robust civilian climate corps that will train the next generation of American land managers, uh, park rangers, stewards of our natural resources. It is a bold investment and a necessary response to the climate crisis and will prioritize the maintenance and upkeep of public lands. This amendment, as I understand it, would strike literally the entire section, uh, undermining a core component of this committee's vision for investing in the future of our public lands. Uh, and I'd remiss, I'd be remiss not to just share, uh, just yesterday I spent the day with constituents of mine in Larimer County, Northern Colorado, with park rangers, forest supervisors, constituents, scientists, fire chiefs, uh, including fire chiefs from across the state, in Grand County, uh, many other communities uh, that I have the honor of representing. And they made very clear to me, abundantly clear, the desperate need for treatments in our forests, for mitigation, for resiliency, uh, and for folks to be able to come in and do that work. In Colorado, we had three of the largest wildfires literally in the history of our entire state, two of which happened in my district uh, just 11 months ago, the Cameron Peak Fire and the East Troublesome Fire uh, that ravaged our communities. Uh, and tragically, uh, we lost uh, lives uh, during the course of the East Troublesome Fire in particular. Uh, this triple C program would invest billions of dollars towards doing this critical mitigation work in our national forests, addressing deferred maintenance in our national parks, uh, causes that uh, I believe that many of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle support. So I would hope uh, that uh, we could get a bipartisan vote against uh, this amendment, and I would certainly urge my colleagues uh, to do the same. And with that, uh, Mr. Chair, I would yield back. Gentlemen, 
Anyone else seek to be recognized on this amendment? Yes, we go, sir. Mr. Gosar, sir, you're recognized. Yes, I, I, I rise uh, in support of this. And uh, being one that has worked tirelessly in regards to forest mitigation, particularly in the Southwest, um, we don't need more people. We need people to do their job and, and actually get the, the fundamentals in place with the Four Fry Initiative in the, the chairman in my uh, home state where we're victims right now, when there's solutions sitting on the table. We don't need people uh, from, from the civilian corps. We need the people that are in proper places to make those decisions and make them appropriately and make them now. Uh, our forests are burning and it's because we have neglected them. And then putting civilians in place here is, is, is just another aberration. We have to make sure that the people that are responsible are held accountable and that we get this mitigation taken care of and done. For those who talk climate change, you know, this is the, only to uh, volcanic, uh, volcanic eruptions. Catastrophic wildfires are one of the most polluting events in our history and uh, in, 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 into the climate. Heavy metals, uh, carbon monoxide, uh, all sorts of things uh, um, are uh, put into the atmosphere. So from the standpoint of, uh, you know, getting things right, maybe we ought to re-address uh, uh, the Forest Service, the Four Fry Initiatives, and these processes where we engage uh, the private sector uh, in, in scientific things that actually work. I was, I was with uh, the Park Service yesterday, and they, they, they claimed uh, once again that not thinning our national forest is, is a, a problem waiting to continue to happen. We become victims instead of empowered solution uh, advocates. So uh, I love the general lady's uh, uh, amendment because it prioritizes uh, making sure that people that have the responsibility uh, be held accountable. But that I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Anyone else uh, wish to be recognized in the amendment? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Vince here. Gentlemen's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I support this amendment and let me explain why. The uh, Civilian Conservation Corps was uh, originally conceived of uh, by the Roosevelt administration many years ago when unemployment stood at 20% and people couldn't find a job anywhere. The, the, the idea was an interesting idea and resulted in many uh, projects, not, no, some of them not far from where I sit right now, out here in Eastern Oregon where the, the folks came in and, and helped build ditches and canals uh, necessary for uh, irrigation systems. Uh, but there was a huge difference between then and now, and I mentioned it, 20% unemployment. I met uh, several weeks ago with folks that are engaged in the exact type of thing we've heard mentioned that this CCC, this CC02.20, excuse me, uh, would engage in, and the folks that are out actually cleaning up the forest, they cannot find anyone that wants to work for them. They cannot find anybody that actually wants to go out into the hot, uh, uh, smoky, dirty uh, uh, environment and actually do this work, even though they're offering more than the $15 an hour that's suggested in this legislation. So uh, this, is, this is what I call uh, one of many uh, self-delusional parts of this bill. And so why would we think that suddenly people are going to jump at running out and doing really, really, really hard, dirty, dangerous work because we offer them $15 an hour? That's not what's going to happen. That's not where this bill is going to go. And what I see instead is what we saw in the Wall Street Journal as they commented on this, this concept, which was to say that what we'll have is trained up folks that go around and lecture everybody on how they should act. Well, I'm not inclined to support uh, a program that builds uh, our youth into those who come around and lecture us. Now, perhaps if there was something in here that said, yeah, you actually have to go out and work at it. And, and, uh, and I mean work. Uh, and uh, I've, I've fought fire before. I, I've planted trees before. Uh, and I'll tell you, it's hard work. And that's why nobody's taking those jobs right now, Mr. Chair. And that's why I support this amendment. I uh, urge everybody to vote for it. Thank you. I yield back. Mr. Chairman. Anyone seek to be recognized? Uh, Velasquez here. Representative, you're recognized. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I oppose this amendment because it's a poison pill that is designed to eventually prevent our ability to invest in our country and build back better for those who deserve it most. Today, the scenes of flooding from Ida in my district and across New York City are devastating. There have never been a greater need to build climate resilient infrastructure and to have a strong civilian climate core. This is a visionary policy that will create a government jobs program putting a new generation of Americans to work combating the climate crisis. And for that reason, I oppose it, I yield back. Thank you. Uh, I thank the general lady for her comments and uh, she yields back. Anyone else wants to be recognized? Mr. Chairman, it's uh, Westerman. Sir, you're recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know you love to hear me debate these amendments, and uh, so I thought I would give you that opportunity one more time here. Yes. They won't be the I, last. No, and you know, I having having been in uh, in uh, a ranking member as well, Mr. Uh, Westerman. Yeah, that's your job, and uh, I did mine pretty well, and I expect you to do yours pretty well too. So we're we're, we're trying to today. And that's why I, I support this amendment, because it is a good amendment uh, that will ensure that the money proposed today will not be used to create an FDR era big government jobs program. There are a lot of problems with the resurrection of the CCC. Uh, Mr. Bentz described that uh, very well. The, the original CCC was put in place when unemployment rates were through the roof. We were experiencing a depression. Uh, today, employers cannot find workers. Uh, my grandfather uh, worked for the CCC, and I remember him telling me how terrible it was, uh, how backbreaking the work was, and he was a hard worker. And I'll tell you, the first thing he did when he could get a job working at the aluminum smelter was he took that job at the aluminum smelter. Um, we don't need another FDR era program. And the idea that this is going to help land management I think is a false idea as well. The problem with land management in this country is not a lack of labor. It's a lack of being able to actually manage the land. You could create a massive workforce, uh, and I guess you're going to equip them with uh, axes and shovels and rakes to go out and uh, try to fix the, the inherent problem with the overstocked stands of timber. Uh, but when you're talking about 80 million plus acres, of land that needs attention. Uh, I don't even think the, the, that China could get enough manual laborers to address that kind of an issue in a uh, right amount of time, especially if they didn't have the, uh, the authority to go out and actually manage the forest. So what this is, is just opening the door for creating an inefficient and ineffective federal work program. And we already have, as it's been mentioned, private groups who are doing this kind of work. If young people want to go do hard manual labor on public land, there are plenty of opportunities for them to do that. Um, and we're all we're going to create another federal program that's going to compete not only with the private sector, but with nonprofits that are doing this very work right now. Uh, we should be focusing on ways to actually manage our federal lands, uh, not to throw a lot of money uh, at a program that's going to compete with the private sector and get little benefit on the ground uh, for making our federal lands more resilient and making our forest healthier. Again, I support this amendment. We shouldn't be throwing billions of dollars at a government work program when unemployment rates are low and the private sector can't find employees and I yield back. Gentlemen yields. Uh, anyone else wish to be recognized? Let me recognize myself in closing very quickly. I'm, 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 I'm violating my own rule here, but um, it, I think this debate and in, 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 in opposition to the amendment, uh, I think it comes down to, to, to a couple of things, if I may. It comes down to about rebuilding uh, 
interior and rebuilding our land management and water uh, responsible agencies within that, within our jurisdiction. And, and the civilian core targeting young people, targeting diversity and targeting those uh, is not just about brawn. Yes, jobs in, in, in these areas require people to get their hands dirty, uh, Mr. Westerman, but it also requires them uh, to, uh, to know what they're doing. And that is a whole spectrum in the profession. And this is the backfill for the future. And I think that uh, not only Mr. Negus's legislation, but also the intent of uh, for the future for the land uh, agencies and interior is to build toward that future. And I think I think we need to look at it that way as well. That it's an investment uh, in in the management and the stewardship of our public lands and waters for the future. And I think it's a good one. And I, I oppose the amendment. Anything else? Anybody else Mr. wish to Chairman? be recognized? Mr. Chairman, who seeks? Uh, McClintock, of California. Sir, you're recognized. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome, sir. I, I just I've, I've noticed over the years that when, when one bureaucracy fails, we have this tendency to add more bureaucracy first and ask ourselves why the first ones fail. The fact is, we've got a great many conservation cores already. We've got the youth conservation cores, we've got public land cores. On top of these, you can add similar state programs like the California Conservation Corps. And to those, then you add the sprawling bureaucracies, the U.S. Forest Service, National Park Service, Bureau of Land Management, need I go on? The problem is not that we don't have enough bureaucracies, it's we have too many, all enforcing idiotic laws and regulations that have made competent management of our public lands impossible. And let me add one final concern to this, uh, this new climate change cores. There's one feature of the proposal that um, does not overlap a lot of existing agencies. This bureaucracy of young people will also address the cli a changing climate. What exactly does that mean? Does it mean a, a taxpayer funded community organizing effort sending these these young climate pioneers into every neighborhood to report who's watering their lawn? whose fireplace is smoking, who's spreading forbidden climate disinformation. Uh, a few years ago, such fears would have seemed absurd, but not so much these days. So I, I, I'd ask, uh, what exactly is this bureau new bureaucracy going to accomplish? I yield back. I disconnected. You're using computer for audio. I disconnected. Does anyone else wish to be recognized? Hearing no further debate, the question is on the Gobert Amendment uh, 22.3. I will pause so that members in favor of the amendment can unmute. And all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And aye. Those members will please mute themselves again. I will aye. pause so that members opposed can unmute. All those opposed, please, please say, indicate by saying no. 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 In the opinion of the chairs, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman, I request a recorded vote. General Lady has requested a recorded vote, and it will be postponed. Uh, Parliamentary inquiry. Please, sir. Yeah, this is Gosar. Um, is there some organization as to uh, uh, how the chairman is pulling up amendments? Uh, there's some of us who have uh, double markups going on right now, so it would be very interesting to know what the, the lineup is. My minority staff has that information since. Uh, Can they share it with the? Uh, but yeah, the, yeah, of course. I mean, that's that's the uh, your, your prerogative to ask them, sir. Well, it's, it seems like it's uh, haphazard. Thank you. Not on our end. Anyway, uh, the, uh, the the vote will be postponed. Representative uh, Ratterwagen, you have the next amendment designated as number one, and uh, general ladies recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In recent months, border officials reported more than 1,000 daily gotaways, meaning more than 1,000 illegal border crossers are escaping apprehension each day. 
As illegal border crossers attempt to evade arrest, they travel across our federal lands. For example, between 2017 and 2020, National Park Service General lady will, apprehended. If, if the general lady would suspend, I had called up uh, Representative Radawagon uh, for her amendment designated as number one, Ms. Bobert. I, uh, I, I have mine designated as number one. Sorry, that's what I was told, and that's the list that we see. If you don't mind, Ms. Bobert, I since I yes I, yes, I, yes I Mr. Called Chairman, Ms. Radawagon, and then we'll sort that out and we'll deal with 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 yours and that confusion. Sorry for the confusion. If you if I let me call Ms. Radawagon back up, and thank you for the courtesy, Ms. Uh, Ms. Bobert. Uh, amendment designated as number one, Ms. Ms. Radawagon, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was disappointed at such a biased breakdown was included in the proposal in the first place, but in light of the leaked staff memo causing confusion over what would be included in your efforts to address our concerns in a bipartisan manner ahead of time, I consider it all behind us and formally withdraw my amendment. I want to thank Ranking Member Westerman for supporting me on this and thank you again, Mr. Chairman, for your continued commitment to all the territories. This committee disagrees on a lot, but I'm glad that the well being of the territories continues to be a priority for both parties. I yield. Thank you very much and uh, uh, appreciate your comments. Uh, the amendment is withdrawn. And uh, like you said, that this is it's been a good and healthy rare opportunity to do some some bipartisan work and. I want to thank you for your leadership with that regard as well. Uh, we uh, amendments is withdrawn. Let me now uh, recognize uh, uh, Representative Bobert. You have the next amendment de designated and uh, as number one, and you are recognized for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In recent months, border officials reported more than one. Thousand daily gotaways, meaning more than a thousand illegal border crossers are escaping apprehension each day. As illegal border crossers attempt to evade arrest, they travel across our federal lands. For example, between 2017 and 2020, National Park Service Rangers apprehended 1,231 illegal aliens in just the Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. As the Biden border crisis continues to leave our southern border insecure, <clears throat> we can only expect for our rangers to apprehend more illegal aliens on our federal lands. My amendment would dedicate a portion of the funding for the National Park Service Civilian Climate Corps to projects that address the harms caused by illegal border crossers. By supporting these projects, not only will, will our federal federal lands be rehabilitated, but cleanups will remove hazardous materials that endanger uh, uh, officers keeping our lands safe. And I yield back, Mr. Thank you. Uh, let me recognize myself uh, in opposition to the amendment. Uh, You know, uh, if the general lady is interested, I and many of my colleagues would be happy to invest in cleaning up uh, the southern border for a variety of reasons. Included in that is the is the the, ob the obvious point that many of us would make is uh, uh, that we we think that uh, one of the most uh, wasteful, if not the most wasteful, uh, pollution issue that we have on these public lands that about uh, that about the border. Has been the wasteful, destructive, and really ineffective border southern wall that was all the craze uh, for the last the previous four years. And I know, uh, and that is still being dealt with. And uh, I, however, this committee print is about investing in in, in the climate and job creation, not uh, going into dealing with a political agenda of any kind. And uh, we've been uh, at least I've tried to be as uh, clear about that. We have different priorities. That's one thing. 
but there is no political agenda uh, that 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 would that should be included that would jeopardize the overall uh, ability of this package to move forward uh, into a real serious Senate discussion. So with that, I uh, just believe it's misplaced and uh, and doesn't understand the real uh, issue of the crisis of the border and uh, the real task before us today. With that, uh, I yield back and would recognize anybody who wants to speak to the amendment. Representative Tiffany. Representative Tiffany, you, you're recognized. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I rise in full support of Representative Bovert's uh, amendment here. And um, uh, obviously, um, based on your comments that you just shared, you have, you're not studying what has happened on the southern border because a year ago I went there in June, first trip I took after being elected and local law enforcement and state officials were saying the border wall works. It funnels people to entry points where the United States of America can vet people and make sure they are who they are. It isn't simply to keep people out it is to funnel them to appropriate entry points so we know who's coming in. The uh, threat to our country has just went up significantly over the last week. We've seen Yemenis that were interdicted months ago, uh, back in February, March, coming across the border who were on the terrorism watch list, one of them being as high as you can get on the terrorism watch list. And now with Afghanistan in full control of ISIS, uh, Al Qaeda and the Taliban, uh, we are hearing from um, world sources that the terrorism threat has never been higher. And that was the purpose of the wall. And it was working. All you had to do is talk to local sheriffs, county sheriffs in Arizona, as many of us have, and they told us that the wall does work. Now, it's not the only answer, but it's one of the critical components in being able to make sure that we know who's coming in and out of our country. I understand you have an open borders philosophy, but that does not protect the safety and security of Americans. And we've seen the safety and security of Americans be left behind here over the last couple of weeks. We should not make the same mistake. And Representative Bobert's amendment is right on mark here. I urge everyone to vote for this amendment if you believe in protecting the safety and security of Americans. I yield back back. Anyone else wish to be recognized? There we no further debate. The question is sorry. on the board. Somebody seeks to be recognized. Yes, Gosar is. Mr. Gosar, you're recognized. Yes, you know, uh, having been uh, one of those participants over and over again, cleaning up the mess left behind on the border, I think this is a fabulous uh, amendment in regards to uh, all the drugs that are uh, found on the ground, uh, the crack pipes. Uh, you know, the, uh, the desecration of, uh, of the uh, habitat uh, for, you know, some of the, the most critical species uh, because of the rainfall and uh, nutritional value out there for them. So, you know, I, 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 the comment that this is not political, give me a break. Everything that you're, you're talking about today is politically oriented. I'm sorry if we have to call it like it is, but that's what it is. Everything from talking about tree spikes and not holding people accountable uh, to all the climate aspects, the climate uh, uh, details, to forest management, to shutting down mines on lands that aren't even uh, a jurisdiction uh, to uh, some of the folks that are holding it up. I guess I'm just going to tell you, uh, this is this, this markup is 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 uh, your push, your side's push uh, to get something done. It's not, it's not my agenda. You know, I, we have a different, a different agenda. So let's make something for perfectly clear. We're not in favor of, of, of many of the things on here. There are some of the things that uh, I, th I think we, we, we could do very, very well together. But when we see something like this in a very partisan fashion, I, I find it offensive. And so from that standpoint, I think the dental lady's got a perfect, a perfect uh, uh, amendment here uh, to direct some of those funds to the desecration of uh, these public lands. 
uh, and uh, you know, down in your in the German zone district in San Luis, you had the BLM has sections of land that don't allow people to even clean it up. You know, so uh, this is this is uh, at very best uh, a very good amendment to direct funds where they're so needed. And last but not least, the people that live on the border. They're no different than anybody from an interior throughout the country. They deserve the same type of respect of maintenance of their, their uh, properties of the federal estate as anybody else. I find it very discouraging that we would we would hold them at a different standard than the rest of us. I yield back. Anyone else seek, seek to be recognized in Bobert Amendment number one? Yes, Mr. Chairman, it's Yvette Harrell. Representative, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And I just urge everybody to support this bill living in a border state where we have 180 miles of southern border. I think this hits the mark and I really appreciate her bringing this forward. What I find fascinating is other other committee uh, hearings that we've had. You know, we've always had this discussion about protecting our public lands and ensuring our lands are well maintained and con the conservation efforts. And this just plays right into that. This is absolutely part of the bigger dialogue and things that this committee and bipartisan support has happened on this uh, committee as well with other bills and amendments that have been passed. But to protect our public lands, I think we have to look at the bigger picture. And this amendment does just that. So I would urge everybody to support this and if you haven't been down to the border please go um i represent 180 miles and the destruction that we've seen through trash and and stolen property uh, broken fences lost livestock loss of life it's devastating and so i would encourage everyone to support this uh, as another step to protect our public land so thank you uh, congresswoman bobert and i yield the balance of my time to ranking member westerman I thank the gentle lady, and uh, I also support this amendment. Uh, Representative Bobert's amendment is very similar to the amendment that I had to direct 10% uh, of the Fish and Wildlife Civilian Climate Corps funds to be used for damage caused by illegal border crossers. And I appreciate the uh, the chair accepting that on unanimous consent. Um, this bill allocates $1.7 billion to the National Park Service Civilian Climate Corps and the amendment simply moves 10% of that or $170 million towards repairing our federal lands. As, you know, we disagree with the idea of the, spending all this money on the Climate Corps, but if you're going to spend it, we hope you would at least focus some of it on uh, repairing damage along the southern border. Um, I've had the chance to visit in Arizona and in Texas and in New Mexico along along the border. And uh, I've witnessed some of this damage on public lands and private lands. Unfortunately, there's nothing that the government's doing or nothing in this bill that will help repair damage on private lands that's been caused uh, by the government's failure to secure our border. Uh, there's uh, 195 miles of the southern border that the National Park Service manages. Um, and this amendment recognizes uh, those consequences and pre uh, presents a way to counteract them. Uh, we think this is a proactive step um, to help mitigate the border. You know, we've already seen the Park Service spend $20 million in the Oregon Pop Cactus National Monument after damage was caused by illegal border crossers. And we know the damage is much greater than that when you consider the whole southern border. So again, I support uh, the gentle lady's amendment, and I yield back to Ms. Harrell. Thank you, ranking member. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're muted, Mr. Chairman. I will pause so the members in favor can unmute and all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Members, uh, members who uh, I will pause. Some members opposed can unmute. All those opposed indicate by saying no. 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 In the opinion of the chairs, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman, I request a recorded vote on this. General lady requests a recorded vote, and that will be postponed under further uh, previous agreement. Now uh, we move to the next amendment is designated Stauber number one. Uh, Representative Stauber, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my amendment strikes the putative royalty imposed by Democrats that they are attempting to sneak into this final bill. Levying a blanket royalty on our minors through the reconciliation is just another example of the Democrat Party punishing Americans to the benefit of our foreign adversaries. Democrats here know full well the implications of this royalty. It will freeze investment and grind our domestic production of minerals to a screeching halt. That means no more copper, nickel, cobalt, platinum group elements or others coming out of America's mines. Yet, ironically, this reconciliation package is full of green pork for electric vehicles and so-called other renewable energies. Therefore, Democrats seek to intentionally cripple domestic supply and drive up domestic demand. Remember when candidate Biden said we are going to uh, domestically source our critical minerals. And as president, he changed his mind and now wants to purchase them from overseas. As long as Democrats can tell their far left act activists led by billionaires like Tom Steyer and Mike Bloomer, that there are more e-bikes on New York City streets. It doesn't matter where the minerals are sourced. As long as these minerals come from children toiling in the Congolese mines or sold to companies by the Taliban or from Russian nickel deposits and not from our union miners in Minnesota, Arizona, Nevada, or elsewhere, those e-bikes are great. Because that's what this royalty is all about, ending our domestic supply and ignoring what that really means for America's future. We need mining. We have to be dominant in mining across this great nation. We are blessed with so many minerals and the opportunities we have to source these critical minerals here under the best labor standards and the best environmental standards. We do it better than anybody. I urge my colleagues to look at the big picture and I yield back. Gentlemen yields, anyone uh, wish to be yeah. recognized on stubborn number one? I I wish to be recognized, Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, Lowenthal, sir, you're recognized. Thank you. This is a, simply a procedural attempt uh, to kill the bill and I'm gonna urge my colleagues to vote no, but I do appreciate the ranking member Stauber's concern about hard rock mining in, in this country. But the committee print that we have before us is going to raise billions of dollars for the federal government in a way that is fair to both the mining industry and the American pu uh, public. Just remember that oil gas, coal companies, all of them have to pay royalties to the American people. The coal industry also already pays reclamation fees. This bill, the bill that we have, uh, that overall bill that we have before us, raises revenues by requiring the mining industry to make similar payments to the federal government. Most mining companies in the United States are large. They're multinational conglomerates. According to the latest data, the mining industry pulled out over $82 billion worth of minerals out of the ground last year. I urge opposition to this amendment and I yield back. Gentlemen yields. Uh, thank you. And anyone else wish to be uh, Mr. recognized? Chair, Rosendale. Mr. Rosendale, you're recognized for five minutes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, the, the 
this is just a false premise that uh, our colleagues across the aisle continue to try to perpetuate that you can raise one fee or several fees within the uh, resource management and extraction industry and not think that it's going to not impact the balance of the fees that these industries are paying uh, to the federal government. This is not a, 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 a balance. If they have to have increased fees in one section, then in order for them to keep the profit margins in place, they're going to have to lower the amount of money that they pay in another area. You just can't continue to push this false premise that we're going to raise this fee, everybody's going to pay it, and, and in the other areas, they're going to maintain those fees. This goes out on a free market open bid process, and, and you will reduce the fees in other areas. And as Representative Stolber clearly stated, all we're going to do is drive this resource development overseas to other areas that don't do it as environmentally sound, that don't have the labor standards in place to protect their workers and the union like we do here in our country. And it's going to hurt the environment globally much worse than, than we can do it here. We should be demanding that these resources are mined in the United States of America. And meanwhile, we are pushing it overseas at the same time that the left continues to, to subsidize and push these renewable energy sources, it takes approximately 4.7 tons of copper for each and every wind turbine that we construct here in our country. We can't generate that amount of copper from restoration of old buildings and recycling the copper that might have been contained within them. We have to bring that product out of the earth here. And if we're going to do it environmentally sound, if we're going to do it by safe labor standards, then let's go ahead and do it in our country and stop raising the prices so that we drive that development overseas. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I yield back. Gentlemen, yield. Anyone else wish to be recognized on uh, Stubber Amendment number one? Representative Tiffany. Sir, Ms. Tiffany, you're uh, recognized, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I support the representative from Minnesota's amendment here. Uh, it makes all the sense in the world. Let me tell you a little story about a uh, place in my district, Hurley, Wisconsin, which had the Montreal mine in it. They no longer mine here in northern Wisconsin. Uh, back in the 1930s, in the middle of the Depression, this area, uh, Hurley, Wisconsin, and Ironwood, Michigan, up on Lake Superior, was known as the garden spot in terms of prosperity, even during the Depression, because they produced minerals up here, and they produced them in abundance. And by the 1960s, some of those deposits ran out, additional ones were found, but they cannot be utilized. John F. Kennedy, President John F. Kennedy in the 1960 campaign went to Hurley, Wisconsin, the Montreal mine, went down thousands of feet into the shaft of that mine, and with his wingtips on, standing in water, said to those miners from northern Wisconsin, thank you. Thank you for allowing us to have a country where you do not have to speak German. I fought in that war, and you helped save this country. You helped save the world because you produced the raw materials that became the guns that allowed us to win World War II. So what are we doing now? We're weakening ourselves in terms of national security. We just talked about it in the previous uh, amendment from the representative from Colorado where our southern border is being overrun at this point. We see what's happening coming out of Afghanistan right now where we heard from the administration where they said, just get them on the planes. We will vet them later. We'll take care of the immigration stuff later. Aim, fire, shoot. Ready, aim, fire, more uh, accurately is what I meant to say. That is what is happening here. So why do we, uh, one of the previous commenters said, these are all multinational corporations. Why is it multinational corporations? Because domestic corporations know better. They know it's a suicide mission to try to get a, a permit for mining at this point. And we're all hearing about that. 
And the notion that we can raise billions of dollars, these are these deep pocketed companies and you can just take all the money you want out of their pockets, you're going to suffocate them. They're not investing in America. They're going overseas where there's more lax labor standards, where they can go about getting this done. That's why you don't have domestic mining companies here in the United States or very few of them. So we've seen word over the last few months that the big environmental groups have been saying to the Democrats, lay off on China, lay off on China. And why are they doing that? Because they wanna bring us to heel in America. They know freedom and prosperity reign here, but if they can put shackles on us, then it shifts to other parts of the world for these, mine, uh, for these minerals and other natural resources to be produced that are at the heart of our prosperity. We don't produce natural resources. We are going to become a second rate country. They know it. And most important, the Chinese know it. Those people who are your big supporters, the uh, big time environmentalists, the billionaires that are out there that are defending China at this point, understand what they're doing. They want the next century here, the 21st century, to be a Chinese century. They do not want it to be an American century. And that's what we're fighting for here. And that's why we su should support the Stauber Amendment here. Because if you believe in having good, strong national security, but more importantly, if you want to have a strong America, job security, economic security, and national security, you have to produce natural resources and you have to utilize them to create the things that makes a country great. We have shifted so much of our production overseas of critical items, including military items and pharmaceuticals to countries like China. And we are at a, at a very dangerous place where we cannot produce those things ourselves. And we are going to be dependent on the communist Chinese government. Is that where you want us? If you don't so, uh, support the Stauber Amendment, I yield back. Gentlemen yields, anyone else wish to be recognized in amendment, Stauber Amendment number one? Mr. Chairman. Who's, sir, you're recognized, Mr. McClintock. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, just two quick points. First of all, you need to understand that companies don't pay these fees and taxes. There's only three ways that a company can pay these assessments. They either pay it through their consumers, through higher prices, uh, through their employees, through lower wages, or from their investors as lower earnings. That's your 401k. Uh, and the second point I'd make is th there's a natural limit to how more, much you can impose fees and taxes when they become too heavy, it no longer makes sense to continue the activity and then you get nothing. So, so there are really two ways to raise money. You can keep raising fees and taxes until you suppress economic growth. The economy grinds to a halt under their weight and you get nothing. The other way is to remove the impediments to economic growth, encourage it. And then you collect more and more fees and taxes because you're producing more. One course damages the economy and ultimately reduces your revenue. The other enhances the economy and ultimately increases your revenues and the prosperity of your society, its consumers, its uh, 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 employees, uh, and its investors. Uh, you're taking exactly the wrong path on this, uh, and I hope you reconsider. I'll yield back. Gentleman Yields, anyone else? Mr. Chairman. Who seeks to be recognized? Westerman. Mr. Westerman, sir, you recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise in strong support of the gentleman's amendment. Uh, and I want to explain, hopefully with some common sense, why I support his amendment. Uh, first off, we're already behind the eight ball. Under current regulations, under our current bureaucracy, we're already losing this uh, competition on supply of minerals and metals. The chart you see behind me, it shows what's happening in America. America is getting smaller and China is getting larger. 
That's the trend we're on under current regulations and bureaucracies. The majority's bill will make those regulations and those disincentives even greater. So if this reconciliation bill goes into law, we're gonna see America get even smaller and we're gonna see China get even larger. Now, there's a, a retail company in my home state of Arkansas and there's a lot of them that have been very successful on the internet that realize that uh, your factors to maximize sales or to maximize profit are price times volume. And what the majority's policy is attempting to do is to raise price and thinking volume will stay the same. Uh, what you're going to do is drive volume to zero or next to zero and zero times any price is gonna be a zero. What we're gonna do is shift our wealth and jobs to China because we refuse to develop the resources and be good stewards of those resources that we have here in the US. USGS tells us that we have a tremendous amount of all kinds of elements and minerals that we could supply our own needs domestically. Think what that could do to rural economies across this country if we were utilizing the resources that we have instead of putting them in withdrawals, instead of charging erroneous fees and penalties for using the resources that we have. It would not only be good mining jobs, but we could have further processing jobs. Uh, we could really grow our economy if we were to utilize the resources that we have. But the Democrat policy is to lock those resources up, not in my backyard, let's export all of our wealth, let's export all of our jobs to China. It's already happening. We should be looking at policies to reverse the trend that we see behind us not policies that are gonna throw gasoline on the fire of what's already happening. Mr. Stauber's amendment would simply keep the status quo. We should be going further than that and looking at ways to reverse this trend. I hope my colleagues will support this amendment and will again reject the underlying bill. With that, I yield back. Gentlemen, yields, anyone else? Wish to be recognized as Stober Amendment Number One. This is Gosar. Mr. Gosar, sir, you're recognized. Yeah, my colleagues have said it very, very well. You know, multinational companies. Why? Well, the reason being is it takes so long for a mine to actually come into operations in the United States—10 to 20 years—where there's easier restrictions or impediments around the world. So, they're in, when they're looking at a portfolio that includes holdings in the United States. They have to have some ability to be making money uh, to keep their company alive uh, until that those things actually come in. You know, then then what we're doing is we're actually facilitating uh, poor mining habits, you know, child labor like in the Congo, uh, poor environmental standards like in in China, and and you wonder where, if there's a connection, you know, between some of the environmental groups and some of the money that's funneling into them. Uh, from nonprofits and from uh, uh, overseas funding from China and, Ru and Russia, nonetheless, because they know that if they can impede the process here in the United States, they actually have uh, their way. Um, and they, they definitely have a, a, an uphill uh, to swing. A look at Afghanistan. You know, the identification of rare earths and mining in, in Afghanistan and, and China was, is just picking away at it. And we're becoming more victim, victimized uh, because we're subjugating uh, all of that to that. And think about these mining, some of these things. Think, think about where, where it's headed. Let's talk about Scandia. Scandia, when it's added to other minerals like uh, iron or aluminum, you get twice the strength or half the weight. So when you're talking about electric planes, which are, are being developed even in my district uh, with the, the co -op, co cooperation of Israel, you need lighter weight and stronger materials. How is it that then, then we would be subject, you know, to Chinese uh, imports and, and cost uh, fluctuations? Those are, those are key things that are talking about for a green economy. We have the best environmental standards across the board. We ought to keep it here. By doing this, we go back to the old adage. If you want to use less of it, tax it. And that's exactly what this is, is a tax. And you'll see a lot less. 
every time we raise taxes, we see less. So when we empower people to be part of the solution instead of victims, which we are uh, totally uh, forcing us to become, uh, where we're not masters of our supply chain, we're dependent upon those uh, nations that want to see our demise. I think this amendment is perfectly in tune. Uh, we are rushing to a, a judgment that is ill-conceived and has some consequential consequences that will be uh, ramifying our economy, our, our uh, intellectual uh, uh, aptitude, and our defense of this country. Uh, I, I just uh, I tell you, I, I would ask everybody to vote for this amendment, and I yield back. Gentlemen, yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized on Stauber number one? Mr. Chairman, Graves. Mr. Graves, you recognize, sir? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I actually have a preliminary inquiry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I heard somebody ask before, and I'm, I'm trying to get a read on it as well. Um, do, you, do you have any, can you give us any indication in the sequencing of amendments that you plan to uh, have those heard in. Uh, we, we, we've got a lot of amendments, and as I believe Mr. Gosar mentioned, uh, a lot of us are trying to juggle a lot of other things. No, I got you. I got you. Uh, I thought that had been shared. We will reshare it, and then you will note that those that uh, went by unanimous consent, those initial seven, uh, that they're they're struck from that list. Uh, so we'll reshare it now. And uh, but they have been shared in the past, and I. I I don't know why some have them. Chairman, some I, I apologize if, if that was shared with us, but I, I checked with our folks and maybe, maybe we miscommunicated, but I, but I thought I was told they didn't have it. So if I'm wrong, I the, your folks, your, your folks on committee said that they wasn't shared. That's that's correct. Um, but but again, if, if I'm wrong, I apologize. Well, they have it. They have it. We'll, we'll share it again, but they have it because we were very conscious of that, sir. But anyway, we'll we'll. we'll We'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Mr. Chairman, can I interject? I, th I think the confusion, confusion is we're only getting a few amendments at a time. I think what Mr. Graves is probably looking for is the whole sequence of amendments. But we are, uh, we're trying to push those out as the majority shares the, uh, the amendments with us. Uh, but we don't have the complete list yet. Yeah, yeah. And just to clarify, Mr. Chairman, that's exactly it. I believe we're, we're uh, okay. I got you. It. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for the clarification. Uh, we've, we've shared a, a bundle. Uh, we have 140 plus amendments to go. Uh, so if they're sequenced, they're coming in a bundle. We'll see about, you know, just a, a list of all 150 and where, but I can. We've given up, I think we've given about five hours worth, but if we'll, if the whole quantity is needed right now, then that's what we'll work on, okay? I appreciate it, thank you, sir. Right. Anyone else? Uh, I'm hearing no further debate on stopper number one. Has not only resulted in the unnecessary- I will then pause for members in favor to unmute. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Hi. 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 Members, uh, those members can mute themselves again, and I will ask, pause so the members opposed can unmute. All those opposed indicate by saying no. 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 In the opinion no. of the chairs, in the opinion of the chair, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Chair Starber here. Uh, I'll ask for a recorded vote, and uh, just to make it easier on you, I will be asking for a recorded vote on all of my amendments, including the amendment I will be bringing on behalf of my colleague out of Alaska. Well, Mr. You Stopper, you're welcome, sir, and certainly something to look forward to. Uh, and uh, the gentleman's asked for a recorded vote, and it is uh, postponed. <laughs> pursuant to the agreement. And we now move to uh, Mr. Sabrin, you recognize uh, your amendment number two. You recognize for five minutes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this amendment should be familiar to this panel uh, as it received bipartisan support in this committee just four months ago. 
Uh, the amendment requires the interior and labor secretaries to determine that the act does not interfere with existing memorandums of understanding committing to union labor for mine construction, operation, and shutdown. Resolution Copper has committed to union labor by agreeing to a project labor agreement. This reconciliation bill today, which is supposedly a jobs bill, renders a union negotiated PLA moot. Mr. Chair, it is impossible to be pro-labor if you are not pro-job. The Arizona building and construction trades are uh, comprised of pipe fitters, laborers, iron workers, insulators, boiler makers, electric workers, and more. To quote Jacob Evenson, business manager for the boiler makers, local 627 in Arizona, as he refers to the project, quote, our members, most of which are Navajo and Apache tribal members, will continue to hope and wait for the day when they can clothe their families, feed their parents, and put shoes on little feet, end quote. I'd like to enter Mr. Evenson's letter into the record. Instead of creating jobs, this bill kills jobs. According to Mr. Evenson, this means the disappearance of the Apache and Navajo jobs that would mine copper with union protections, something this country desperately needs. These locals oppose this underlying bill because they have an agreement that gets them good wages, good benefits, and the peace of mind living a quality way of life. In Minnesota, our mining companies have agreements with the building trades, steel workers, and many other labor organizations. I therefore urge both my Republican and Democrat colleagues to stand with the workers and support this underlying amendment, and I yield back. Anyone else wish to be recognized on Mr. Sauberns Amendment Number Two? Mr. Chair, Congressman Lowenthal, I wish to be recognized. Mr. Lowenthal, sir, you're recognized for five. Well, we're here uh, to deal with um, amendments that are uh, consistent and with the with, with, and uh, I oppose this amendment because it it's really designed to eventually prevent our ability to invest in our country and build back America uh, for all Americans. I, uh, uh, this is really an, att an attempt to undermine why we're here today. I urge my colleagues to oppose this amendment. And Thank I yield. You, gentlemen, yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Mr. Chairman, it's Westerman. Mr. Gosar, you went. You recognize, sir? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise in support of this amendment. I am one of those people that actually had uh, the ability to work consensually across the board to get uh, resolution copper uh, put forward. Uh, it's gone through the last uh, almost decade in its development. And we've seen uh, uh, the chairman himself with uh, special interest groups try to include this back into the bill to mitigate and take off of the offline resolution copper. Now, the justification that I've heard over and over again has been that this is tribal land and it could be, could be further from the truth. Tribal historians for the San Carlos Apache have said this was never part of the jurisdictional aspect of the, uh, the Apache the nation. This company has invested almost $2 billion in remediation to an old mine site that it currently sits on. And this would actually, as previously stated, deliver almost 25% of the United States needed copper reserves, as well as other minerals that are associated with the mining of copper. They have, they have their plan of operation has looked at water and it's been very creative. They've been very open about it. And they have mitigated a safe environment for the workers. This is a poignant and predicated uh, uh, amendment because what it does is it shows the intent of this mining company to build America, be American, union made American, and union jobs. What, what could be further from being American? So the, the notion that this is, is something that uh, is getting uh, away from American, this is fully embraced in America. This is in the Copper Corridor. 
Arizona is five, four, uh, five C's. One of them is copper for mining. This is something that we ought to be looking at uh, intrinsically, making sure that we're supporting it and making sure that the good jobs, the good stewardship of land, the, the outline prescribed is held to accountable and making sure that these, these mine jobs uh, are uh, union based and that these are uh, good paying jobs that people invest in their communities, buy homes, buy electric cars, uh, get their kids to school, uh, send them off to college. I would hope that everybody would support um, Mr. Stauber's amendment in regards to this, this union job at, at amendment. With that, I uh, yield back. Gentleman yields, anyone else wish to be recognized? Run it's Westerman. Mr. Westerman, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also um, strongly support this amendment and urge a yes vote on it. Uh, this amendment is very straightforward. What it simply does is protects memorandums of understanding with labor agreements on projects um, that are already in the works. And it requires uh, the DOI to analyze these projects um, or to analyze if labor jobs will be lost uh, before the rules are implemented, before the legislation is implemented. You may think, well, that's unnecessary. Who needs that? We've already seen it happen. We saw it happen on day one of President Biden's administration when he canceled the XL uh, Keystone Pipeline and thousands of union workers lost their jobs. There were workers in my district in Arkansas that lost their high paying jobs uh, because of a, a partisan executive order uh, that had no rationale behind it. And again, we're asking the question, where's the rationale? Well, this is rationale to say that before you cancel jobs or implement these policies that you have to analyze it to make sure you're not going to destroy union jobs. And I find it ironic and also, again, not much common sense or rationale that this policy promotes low paying government funded civilian climate core jobs um, while it won't protect existing jobs that are high paying union jobs. So, again, I support the amendment. I would also like to submit for the record uh, this letter from the National Mining Association um, that's in opposition to the to the bill. Thank you. And with that, I yield back. Thank you, gentlemen. Yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized? On stubborn number two. Hearing no further debate, the question is on stubborn amendment number two. And all those in favor, un, uh, unmute and indicate by saying aye. 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 Members will please mute themselves that have voted and I will now pause for members opposed. Uh, they can unmute and indicate by saying no. 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 of the chairs, the no's have it and the amendment is not agreed to. And as the customary recorded vote requested, Mr. Chair. So Stobbert has asked for a recorded vote and I'll just note that, Mr. Stobbert, as we get to the end of each one, that way we don't have to Thank you. go back and forth. Uh, I now recognize Mr. Uh, Representative Stobbert for his amendment number three, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this amendment is timely as it directs the administration to assess and report on the development, production, and trade of mineral resources in Afghanistan while the country is under the control of the Taliban or another sponsor of global terror. We already know, due to a lot of our own mapping efforts of the mineral resources in Afghanistan. While we in Congress hamstring ourselves with royalties, endless consultations and frivolous lawsuits, the Taliban will undoubtedly develop and sell their mineral resources. And these Afghan mineral resources will end up in our cell phones, in your cell phones, in our electric vehicles, in your electric vehicles, and in wind turbines across this nation, as they will be mined with no environmental standards and no labor standards, making them cheaper to acquire. The last thing we need to do right now is ignore this threat. 
like this committee does with existing child labor supply chains and subsidize the Taliban. Purchasing mineral resources from the Taliban means subsidizing radical Islamic terrorism, denying rights to women internationally, and endorsing the horrors currently ongoing due to the short-sightedness of this administration, the Biden administration. Furthermore, the Global Times, an outlet owned by the Chinese Communist Party, opined that the Taliban in control of Afghanistan will lead to further rare earth element resources for their country, the communist country of China. Therefore, it's imperative we learn more about the minerals and capacity for development that these terrorists have. And we should make it readily available in the annual minerals commodity summaries posted by the USGS. Our foreign adversaries, be it radical Islamist terrorists or communist regimes compete on an un uneven playing field with our domestic mining industry. This should be an easy yes for it for everybody on this panel. And I do want to uh, make one state, one last comment. In Minnesota, the approximate starting wage for a miner is about $80,000. I urge adoption of my amendment, and I look forward to Mr. Lowenthal's response. Gentleman yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized on uh, stubborn number three? Well, Congressman Lowenthal, I wish to be. Uh, thank you, sir. You're recognized for five minutes. And I thank. Uh, the ranking member of the Energy and Mineral Resources Subcommittee for looking forward to my response. Uh, but this is really, we, remember, we're here uh, to invest in our country uh, and the Build Back Better uh, for all Americans. That's why we're here, to look at and how these amendments and the bill affect that. I'm going to urge my colleagues to see what this amendment is for. It really undermines, regardless of the issues that are raised, it undermines our efforts to do what we're here to do, and that's to deal with the Build Back uh, America overall reconciliation. And I urge my colleagues to oppose this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Lowenthal. Gentleman Niels. Who else we just recognized on Mr. Stubbers number three? Mr. Chairman, it's Westerman. Mr. Westerman, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This again is a rational amendment. There's a reason why Mr. Stauber has offered it and I rise in support of his amendment. Uh, what this amendment does is it, it simply um, re requires that the USGS assess the Afghanistan mineral development, production, and trade while Afghanistan is under the control of the Taliban or another sponsor, sponsor of global terror. Referring back to the chart behind me, as uh, we see the U.S. production of minerals and metals decrease and the Chinese production increase, uh, I don't think most Americans want to see their money going to China that's selling us elements and minerals that were mined in Afghanistan, which is run by a terrorist organization. And if you think that's not the case, I want to uh, read you a quote from a New York Times article from a former senior colonel in the People's Liberation Army. He wrote, Afghanistan in turn has what China most prizes, opportunities in infrastructure and industry building, areas in which China's capabilities are arguably unmatched and access to $1 trillion in untapped mineral deposits. I'd like to submit that New York Times story uh, to the record. Thank you. And also want to encourage everyone to support Mr. Stauber's amendment uh, so that we're not only not funneling US dollars to China, but US dollars to China that are going to Afghanistan and to a terrorist run country. That I yield back. Gentleman yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized on the amendment? Mr. Chairman. Who seeks rep? Rep Soto. 
Oh, Mr. Sutter, sir, you're recognized. Thank you. Thank you so much. I wanted to take a moment to address several debate points that have been made by our friends in the minority here today that make no sense. Some of you allege that this bill will make us less competitive against China and Russia. The bill finally makes the largest investment in our country's infrastructure in our nation's history. This will necessarily make us more competitive. When President Trump wanted to do this, you were all singing in support, and now not so much. Those arguments make no sense. Others of you want us to maintain our national parks better. We included a civilian corps to help, investments in that, to help maintain our parks. Yet you oppose that idea and offer up no other solutions. Again, it makes no sense. The next argument is that we should postpone, possibly indefinitely, this historic investment in our country's infrastructure to focus on Afghanistan. Whether you want to build back better or make America great again, this again makes no, spend, no sense. We're done with spending trillions to rebuild other nations. We're rebuilding our nation right now. The biggest whopper of them all is to do nothing on climate change or to delay solutions and that would somehow do justice or help victims of hurricanes. In Florida, we saw a rapid increase when Hurricane Michael turned from a tropical storm to a category five within a day or so. It devastated the Florida panhandle. The reason for its rapid intensification, climate change had cooked the Gulf of Mexico to superheated levels. Our prayers go out to Americans in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, those in the tri-state area and other states affected by Hurricane Ida. Congress should pass emergency relief without delay. Hurricane Ida increased from category two to category four in 18 hours. This is again because of the superheated Gulf of Mexico, which in turn supercharged Hurricane Ida, turning it into a monster. So are we just gonna sit here and watch as hurricanes get worse and worse in the Southeast? Heck no. We're going to act. That's what this legislation does. Rather than slapping a Band-Aid on these problems like intensifying hurricanes and sea rise, we're going to address the root causes of climate change by investing in carbon capture, by investing in coastal and national resiliency, and by investing in environmental mitigation of old mines, oil wells, and gypsum stacks. In short, we're going to build back better, and that is what this bill does. And Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Who seeks to be recognized? Yvette Mr. Harold. Mr. Representative Harold, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to uh, relinquish my time to Congressman Stauber. Thank you, uh, Stauber. Uh, thank you for yielding your time. I do. I do have to respond to my good friend, uh, uh, Congressman Soto. Um, my miners have been standing ready to mine these critical minerals that we are blessed to have. One company is in, in its 20th year. The Duluth complex in Northeastern Minnesota has the ability to reduce our supply chain dependency on China and Russia in Afghanistan now. So for you to say that it doesn't matter and, and our arguments are fruitless, I suggest to you, come up, talk to our miners, our laborers, our construction workers, our teamsters, our iron workers, and look them in the eye and say that you would rather have those minerals mined in foreign nations that don't have our labor standards, that don't have union agreements, that don't have envir environmental standards. Yes, this is located in the district that I'm fortunate to represent, and we are going to mine those minerals. We have colleagues on this call that want to remove all that acreage and have the dependency on the communist country of China or allow 
small children to be forced to mine cobalt for our electric vehicles and our alternative sources of energy. We have the ability to do it here, to do it right. And so I take, re I take great exception, uh, Mr. Soto, that, that these are frivolous arguments. These are real to the constituents. These are real to our supply chain dependency. There's a whole lot of stuff we agree on. But please don't diminish this opportunity that we have to secure our dependency. We cannot build China back better. We cannot build Afghanistan better. We cannot build Russia better. And I can give you examples of this administration doing just that. Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Why? We have the ability the here. They... We have the ability here. So let's have the, have the mining dominance that we need to compete in the world and reduce the greenhouse gases. We do it better in America with American workers, American jobs, our friends and neighbors. And in this case, Mr. Soto, my friends and neighbors. And I yield back. Gentleman Niels, anyone else wish to be recognized on gentleman's Mr. amendment number three? Yeah. Mr. President. Chairman, this is Representative Moore. Mr. Moore, sir, you're recognized. Thank you. Uh, and thanks to the, the committee staff for delaying some of my potential amendments. I just landed. I've, I've been watching the debate, so I've been engaged. And I'll have, a, I'll have an opportunity to address a lot of my amendments later, so I'll, I'll keep this brief. But I just wanted to also um, address Congressman Soto's comments, um, like <laughs> just just creating another bureaucracy to say we're going to go fix the backlog is really tough for Utahns to swallow when we have two hundred and fifty million dollars of backlog in our National Park Service that that all Utahns love that want to preserve want to conserve like we are all in okay two hundred fifty million dollars of backlog. In the Great American Outdoors Act first year of funding, $250 million went to the Virginia, the, the, the George Washington Parkway Highway. Like, what? So you're saying that if we add a whole new bureaucratic system, like a whole new agency, we've got the BLM, now we're going to have the CCC, now we're going to have the, I mean, all, it's, it's like, but what, what Republicans I think are trying to do by by helping folks understand, helping all understand, we're trying to embrace industry, right? I argue about this on my town halls. I'm talking about my willingness to engage on the climate debate, and I'm sincere about it, right? And and I just went and toured my my Rocky Mountain Power here in Utah. Thirty percent of what they're doing is renewables. I was I was so excited to hear that, and they have a whole plan that that looks out that actually is actually sustainable. It's got an actual strategic plan, and not just an arbitrary date and then hey let's do it by this date and oh no when pr gas prices go up we have to go ask OPEC for more oil like I don't understand the fact that we have no there's no there's no strategic plan for this billions and trillions and trillions of dollars and, and we're just trying to help you avoid like another cylindra right like that's picking winners and losers it ultimately fell flat and everybody knew everybody knows about and everybody knows that even the Obama administration would recognize it was a failure I did a report on it in my grad program, right? Like we're, we just, we want to help embrace industry, create a strategic plan to get to this without just like throwing out some date that we want to do something by. And then it, it, it just drives me absolutely bonkers because we're willing to engage on this, but, but just throwing a bunch of money at a whole new bureaucratic system is not going to help Zion's national park get its backlog fixed. I, and I associate my comments with, with Congressman Bentz. These are tough jobs to do. There's, it's not just a snap of the finger, create a bureaucratic organization, and then they're going to fix the backlog. Hopefully, the Great American Outdoors Act is a little more equitable over time. Maybe in years two and three, there's, there's a more sensible distribution here. But it, it simply just doesn't – you can't just say the CCC is going to solve all of our issues. Like it, it, There's no plan to that. I yield back. Gentlemen, gentlemen yields, and uh, does anyone wish to uh... – Continue to address Dauber number three. Representative Tiffany. Tiffany, you wish to be recognized, to recognize. 
Thank you very much. Um, I support uh, Stauber number three here. I think it's a very good amendment. But in particular, I have to comment in regards to the gentleman in Florida saying there are no solutions. And of course, um, it is blame uh, former President Trump that there are no solutions. Well, let's look at it. Energy independence for the first time in the United States in decades was achieved um, over the last four years. We hear just about a month ago, we heard President Biden begging OPEC to produce more oil, to stop this rise in oil prices. That's what we're getting now, is begging OPEC, while the opposite approach was taken over the, the previous four years, and you could actually say over the previous decade, including when President Obama was in office, as we continue to allow these private producers to continue to produce, built new pipelines, all those Rebecca good Taylor. things, what is the first thing that happens so, on January 20th? Keystone XL been... is shut down, and the message is sent very clearly. We are going to stop oil production and oil transportation in every way that we can. And that's indisputable. All the actions taken by this administration has done exactly that. So we had energy independence, and now it's going to be taken away, and we're back to begging OPEC, just like we did in previous decades, so unnecessarily. Same thing with mineral production. We can be independent here. We do not need to be uh, dependent on the Congo or China or Afghanistan in the future. We can produce it right here. And of course, forestry, uh, we've went over that multiple times. We've allowed our forests to burn here in America rather than managing them in an effective manner that we could use that to have mills to be able to produce those raw uh, materials or to take those raw materials and make them into the two by fours and all the rest that help build homes here in America. And so no solutions. Yeah, we had not just proposed solutions. We had put them forward and we had implemented them. And the unemployment rate, when you look at the end of 2019, at the lowest it had been in a long time and people were back to work and they were making more money with those good $80,000 a year um, jobs like Representative Stauber was alluding to. So now, where are we going to, this new energy uh, that we're going to have, the so-called renewables, where we, how is that going to be accomplished? With wind turbines and solar panels. Where are most of them coming from? They are coming from China. As my good friend from Minnesota said, is this all about build, China, uh, build back better for China? Because when you study this, it does appear to be that way. Final thing that I want to say in regards to this issue, in regards to intensity of hurricanes, go back and look at the hurricane data over the last hundred years. You will see that there are not more hurricanes. Now, to the good people in Louisiana and th throughout this country that have been affected by the most recent hurricane, um, our hearts go out to them. As you saw with Representative Graves, um, with the video he has in his background, he's out there working with people and our hearts go out to them and we should do everything possible to help them get through what is a very difficult time. But to take this incident, this disaster and say, this is why we completely change public policy in America. When the data is very clear, hurricanes have been with us for a long time. Let's go back and talk about Galveston in 1900. And there are others that we can talk about. I don't have their names in front of me. I think Carla was one of them. Uh, in the 1960s, those were devastating hurricanes. But one of the things that we need to do is make sure that our power lines are um, uh, built better, stronger, those type of things. The infrastructure for those things needs to be better rather than taking an infrastructure bill and spending it on community, free community college and various things like that. Actually spend it on infrastructure. That is what would be, uh, help Americans because we have more and more people that are living on the coast where hurricanes affect them the most compared to 100 years ago. Remember, pre-air conditioning, not many people lived in the South because of the extreme heat. Now they can as a result of the advent of that. And our coasts have continued to have so many more people living on them. Maybe that's why we're seeing such incredible damage because there is so much more building, so much more infrastructure that are now on the coast. And, but 
let's go back before we say that climate change is causing hurricanes. Hurricanes have been with us for a long, long time. And if you look at the data, there are not more hurricanes over the last couple decades than there were in the previous decades. And I will be happy to get the data for people to show that. I yield back. Gentlemen, gentlemen yields. Uh, anyone else wish to be recognized? Mr. Chair, uh, this is McCollum. Could I be recognized for uh, uh, just a brief no, period of time? You have five minutes. First Thank off, you. to Mr. Graves, it's devastating. And being at the headwaters of the Mississippi, we've talked about a bill that I'm working on to build resilience into the river uh, to help communities mitigate um, all these uh, natural disasters that they're having and then to clean up any potential pollution from what has happened and with these uh, really tough storms. Um, you know, I, I, I hope to be able to talk to you in person on how we can work together. Um, my heart goes out and I wish everyone a recovery and, and families um, a peace of mind in the next coming weeks as you struggle through this. I just wanted to, Mr. Chair, the reason why I wanted to bring something up, the Great American Outdoors Act was mentioned and the George Washington Parkway was mentioned. Um, Unless you're, uh, you know, really familiar with all the things that the Park Service does, it comes as a surprise to many members, and I know to the public, that the George Washington Parkway, Rock Creek Park, and the Memorial Bridge, big transportation projects, they're in the Department of Interior. And maintaining and keeping those safe uh, so that people uh, can live a day to join the great uh, American outdoors is, is very important. So those were not funds diverted away from the Department of Interior. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And with that, I yield back. Lady Yields, anyone else wish to be recognized? Chairman, can I, can I clarify my comments about the George Washington Parkway? I, I, if somebody would yield some time to you, I'd be glad to. Go, sir, I'll yield to him. Gentleman Yields. Sir, you're right. Thank you, Mr. Go. Thank you, Mr. Gosar. Um, my point is, is that National Park, Bryce National Park, all fun, not, it, it arches, our backlog is the same amount that one project got. So uh, I don't, I'm not arguing that it's that it's important or doesn't. I, I, I've enjoyed that parkway. I've been to Rock Creek Parkway. I, have, you know, that that that's not my point. My point is, zero dollars got put to our backlog. So creating another bureaucratic agency isn't going to solve that when the previous. You know, I recognize that the GW Parkway has a need that, 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 that I've never I've never um, argued otherwise. It's just out here in Utah, we got zero dollars for all of our amazing national parks that draw probably more tourism than I would say most anywhere in such gentlemen uh no i think we lost the uh, voice to, you know i yield back gentlemen i yield i i now yield to the, the ranking member mr westerman Gentlemen, uh, yields to Mr. Westerman, sir. Thank you, Mr. Gosar. And uh, since the Great American Outdoors Act has been brought into the discussion, uh, I think this exactly highlights the problem with this country, that this uh, bill was passed to address maintenance backlog on our parks and our forest lands and our fish and wildlife areas out across the country. And the first thing Department of Interior does is sends a huge chunk of money to the actual Beltway, to the George Washington Parkway. Uh, as I talk to people across the country about this, they are livid that that's the first priority of Department of Interior is to fix the road coming into the swamp. Uh, there's so much backlog that needs to be done on our federal lands. And this is atrocious. I yield back to Mr. Gosar. I yield back. I, I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Gosar Thank yields. You. Anyone else wish to be uh, 
recognized on stubborn number three. Hearing no further debate, the question is on the stubborn amendment number three. I will pause so those in favor can unmute. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Members will, uh, I will pause so the members opposed can unmute. All those opposed indicate by saying no. 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 Uh, in the opinion of the chairs, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Uh, Stalbert has requested a recorded vote postponed for prior agreement. Mr. Stalbert, uh, number four, you're recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, this is the 10th time I'm offering this bipartisan amendment. Last Congress, it received 16 Democrat votes in the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. Sadly, Democrats have blocked this amendment every single time. This Green New Deal reconciliation package is choke full of funding for items that will require mining, electric vehicles, energy mandates, energy efficient buildings, recycling infrastructure, all of which are built with mined resources. And right now, all of which are reliant on supply chains tainted with child and slave labor. For example, we are 76% import reliant on cobalt. Who is the top supplier of cobalt? The Congo, a country infamous for its use of forced child labor. Amnesty International and others have well documented the horrific examples of children being forced to pick cobalt by hand near pits of acid or crawling underground to mine it. Meanwhile, the Duluth complex in my district contains 88% of this country's cobalt. The projects proposed to extract this mineral have already signed project labor agreements with the Iron Range Building and Trades committing to union labor. By now, I hope this panel understands the issues with our existing supply chains. And I hope with that understanding comes a sense of urgency to work with me and my Republican colleagues to do something about it. If we're to have these massive expansions of renewable energy capacity, let's at least do it humanely. Let's do it in the United States of America with the best labor standards and the best environmental standards in a workforce that is ready, able, willing to do so. I once again urge adoption of this amendment and I yield back. Mr. Chairman. Gentleman yields, uh, Mr. Lowenthal. Sir, you're recognized. Thank you. And I first I want to thank the ranking member of the Energy and Mineral Resources of raising these issues uh, about uh, where critical minerals are mined and the importance uh, of mining, and especially of them in, in the United States. But let's be clear, uh, this amendment is designed to eventually prevent our ability to invest in our country now and uh, in the Build Back Better for all Americans. And so I'm urging my colleagues to understand this is an attempt to undermine our overall efforts here today, what we're trying to do today. And I urge my colleagues to oppose this amendment. Gentleman yields. Anyone I else yield. wish to speak to uh, stopper number four? Mr. Westerman. Mr. Westerman, you're recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I support this amendment as well. And I would agree with the, the chairman of the subcommittee that the purpose of this amendment is to undermine what the majority is trying to do in this bill today, which is shift America or move American jobs overseas into child labor. We've tried to make the argument from an economic standpoint that America could actually benefit if we were mining these materials and processing them in our country. Mr. Stauber is trying to make the point now that not only is it going to kill American jobs to implement this bill, 
it's going to give those jobs or move those jobs to child labor in the Congo, where cobalt is being produced right now and other places around the world. As we shut down mining in this country, as we open up our markets to anything China wants to sell us, we're not only exporting our wealth to China, but we're promoting this kind of labor practices around the world. So yeah, we're trying to undermine the intent of what this bill's doing, because this bill is going to promote child labor uh, in uh, undeveloped countries around the world at the benefit of the Communist Chinese Party. So yeah, we want to stop that. We want American workers to have jobs. We want to sustainably produce um, minerals and metals in the U.S. And we want to grow the U.S. economy. I don't think that's the wrong uh, approach to take. That's why I support um, Mr. Stauber's amendment, and I yield back. Gentleman yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized on Stauber number four? Hearing no further debate, the question sorry. is who wishes to be recognized? No, sir, would like to be recognized. Oh, sorry, sir, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise in support of this. I mean, I've now heard this all over and over again build America with this bill. And it's the furthest from the truth. We're going backwards. In order to build forward, what you have to have is supply chains dependable supply chains. You also have to have energy, prolific energy, if you're wanting to do these projects of infrastructure across the board. So it doesn't make sense. And when and, and then talking about climate change. Well, if you're talking about climate change and you want to talk about ca carbon capture, stop doing the things that are causing the problem. That's called catastrophic wildfires. That starts managing your forest properly. It, it's very, very simple here. But when you put the cart before the horse, be prepared for the consequences. Just because you want to spend money on infrastructure, look what happened in Japan. Japan, 20 years ago, decided to overdo and just go gangbusters on infrastructure. They have never re recovered, never recovered. What we're doing here in this bill is we're empowering China. We're empowering uh, Afghanistan and the uh, Taliban. We're empowering Russia. Everything that they want, we're doing in this bill. The minority is doing in this bill. It is not empowering Americans. It is actually uh, uh, making them victims, dependent upon a foreign country who's more polluting, who continues to build coal fire plants at a record pace, who, who uses child labor uh, laws against them who uses resources as a, a battering ram and one belt, one road, and, and to underserved and, and uh, uh, underpoverished countries. This is despicable. We know better. We should know better. And, and the technology, like I brought up Scandia, there, the, when, you, when you're taking Scandia and you add it to, to aluminum, you get twice the strength or half the weight. How amazing is that going to be for air travel? More efficiency, less carbon. So, I mean, from the standpoint here, Mr. Stauber makes a great point here, is you have to inventory. You have to make sure that, that you're playing on the same playing field. And if you certainly, certainly believe that child labor does not belong in mines, then you have no other option but to vote for this. Otherwise, you're condoning that practice of child labor laws and the violations in the Congo. You're, you're abusing the African continent. You're abusing the uh, Asian continent. So let's be straight about this. Mr. Stauber's amendment is a very good amendment and everybody should be voting for it. Otherwise you're condoning it. nothing less. I yield back. Gentleman yields. Anyone Mr. else wish to speak yes. on Stauber number four? Yes, Mr. Chairman, it's Congresswoman Harrell. Uh, the Representative Harold, you'll recognize for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I just echo what my colleagues are saying. I absolutely stand in support of this bipartisan amendment. And I applaud uh, Congressman Stauber for bringing it forward. And with that, I'd like to uh, turn over the balance of my time to Representative Stauber. General Lady Yields, Mr. Stauber. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and thank you, uh, Congresswoman Harold, for uh, yielding. I, I will just say that that we cannot accept forced child labor 
to be used in alternative sources of energy in this country. You cannot accept potentially 30% of the cobalt in your batteries for your electric vehicles to be mined by child labor. We can't accept that in this country. And we have to stand up and say, no, the United States of America will never purchase one ounce of critical minerals, rare earths, using forced child labor. We have the opportunity right now. We can't be hypocritical and be driving in our vehicles and using uh, uh, our, our cell phones that have uh, that have other uh, uh, mine minerals in that, knowing full well that we purchased them from foreign adversarial governments that have used child labor. We cannot turn a blind eye to that. We need to lead across the globe, critical minerals, rare earth, and mining. Because we do it better than anybody. And, and I do take a little bit, I, I'm very concerned about my colleagues' comments that this is just to stifle the bill. Couldn't be further from the truth. I want jobs. I want our economy. I want the, the United States of America to be supply chain uh, dependent on ourselves. We cannot rely on foreign adversarial nations for our dependency any longer. COVID showed us that. Let's mine these minerals that we are blessed to have in this country, doing it with the best standards labor environmental let's lead the world let's not allow or rare earths that are forced or were forcibly mined by child labor that's what i'm getting at do not be hypocritical and, and turn a blind eye to that because i have talked about this for a while now it is happening unicef a, a, a nonpartisan agency and others have said it's happening Let's, as Americans, say no more purchase of minerals that were mined due to child labor. We can do it. Let's lead American jobs, economy, our friends and neighbors, supply chain dependency, holding the destiny of this great nation in the palm of our own hands and not relying on other nations that don't have our best interests at heart, and I yield back. Just for a second for a question. Would the gentleman yield for a question? To... Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you, Mr. Stubber. Let me follow up on the last point you were making. Are you supportive or what's your, of, of, of saying for those multinational or mining companies that are doing business on, uh, federal public land, taxpayer land, should they uh, be able to do business with that public asset if they have a record that speaks to issues of child labor, speaks to issues of labor abuse, and, and speaks to environmental degradations in another part of the world? Should we be doing business with that corporation? What we need to do is make sure that they understand our labor standards they follow our rules when they want to invest in our nation. You can talk about the other nations, Mr. Chair. I'm a representative of Minnesota representing our great state and, and, and a colleague with you across the, across the world. I can't tell you what these other foreign nations are or aren't doing with the exception of the forced labor. I know that. And we in well, our I'm country- I'm just asking about a company, sir. I mean, uh, uh, that, you know, I, I just want to make sure that we're, we're being consistent here. If, if a company is responsible for, through their practices and their uh, and their plan and their financial and strategic operation for those violations, and I thought we shared the same ground and nobody wants child or slave labor involved anywhere. But having said that, should they be banned, restricted from doing business on our public asset, our public lands or waters. I would say they need they need to onshore their mining here because we do it best. Now, with that being said, Mr. Chair, Farewell. 
We've been mining for 130. We're going to have to explore that down the road because. Wait a minute, you Mr. Know, Chair. You asked a question. For the gander. Mr. Chair, you asked me a question. May I have the respect? Absolutely, to it's your answer time. It? time. Thank you. Mr. Absolutely, Chair, it's your time, sir. It's your time, Mr. sir. Mr. Chair, you asked me a question. Can I answer your question? I just said it's your time, sir. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, so we've been mining in Minnesota for 135 years. We've been we we helped win World War II with our with our iron ore mining. Let's be crystal clear. Some of the things that we did in the past were not good. The sin. Let's recognize the sins of our past, but also recognize where we are at today. In this country, with the OSHA standards and the mining standards and our labor standards and our environmental standards. There is no question that we do it better than anybody. And that's what I'm trying to tell my colleagues on both sides of the aisle. Let's do it here. I yield back. Wilson, thank you for your courtesy. Uh, any further debate on stopper number four? Hearing no further debate, the question is on the stopper amendment number four. I will pause so that members in favor can unmute and in indicate their favor by saying aye. 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 Uh, I will now add, pause so the members opposed can unmute and indicate their opposition by saying no. 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 In the, in the opinion of the, well, having discussed that, uh, Mr. Stauber, the standing request, this will be a recorded vote and postponed uh, based on the prior agreement. Now we go to, Stabber number five. Gentlemen's recognized. Very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, this amendment is simple. It strikes a provision in the reconciliation bill that arbitrarily withdraws forest service land that is rich in minerals and containing a promising proposed mining project. Once again, we have Democrats on this committee using the reconciliation process to sneak in pet priorities and failing to see the big picture. The chairman's bill to kill responsible mining in Arizona has not become law as a standalone, which is why I imagine they are trying to sneak it through in this massive reconciliation package. Also, Joe Biden, also Joe Biden, who claims to be in favor of union jobs, can quietly kill those union mining jobs and bury it in the new cycle under all his other reconciliation priorities. A reminder, then candidate, Biden in October of 2020 stated he wants to responsibly source critical minerals in our country. He becomes president and just a few months ago he says now we we don't want to uh, responsibly source we're going to purchase these minerals from adversarial countries. And then President Biden will according to Aaron Butler president of the Arizona State Building and Construction Trades Council, and I quote, deny thousands of Arizonans high paying quality jobs and suppressing millions of dollars in much needed economic investment in our region's economy, end quote. Mr. Chairman, these aren't my words. These are words of a union president in your great state of Arizona regarding legislation to kill the Resolution Copper Project in Oak Flat. I'd like to enter his letter into the record. Meanwhile, Democrats continue to kill domestic mining projects that are desperately needed. And if we're to fulfill the massive number of electric vehicle and Green New Deal mandates included in this legislation, whether it be oil from OPEC or minerals from foreign sources that use child labor, this committee continues to prioritize green wish list lists with resources from places that have no environmental protections. I urge adoption of my amendment. It is a good amendment, reasonable, and protects American jobs. And I yield back. The gentleman yields. Uh, I recognize myself in opposition to the amendment. The amendment. Uh, would strike the revenue measure considered in section 70 uh, 201, uh, the withdrawal of Oak Flats. Oak Flat withdrawal it fits squarely into the committee strategy to raise federal revenues in our jurisdictions in ways that best support the health of the climate, 
and the health of our public lands. In Subtitle H, the committee proposes to raise significant revenues by ensuring a fair return to taxpayers for the use of public resources. However, Oak Flat is simply not how we should be financing the government. It is, how we, it is not how we should be raising revenues in this budget. The committee print proposes reducing prospective revenues associated with Oak Flat. The way to accomplish this revenue adjustment is by means of this withdrawal and cancel transfers. Uh, I, tr I strongly oppose the amendment and urge my colleagues to, uh, I strongly oppose the, the Stopper amendment and urge my colleagues to vote no. With that, I yield back and would recognize anybody that wants to speak on Stopper amendment number five. This is Gosar. Mr. Gosar, you're recognized, sir. Yeah, that once again, this is a uh, 20, uh, 23 hour, 59 minute Hail Mary. Uh, this, this project has been in uh, orchestration for now over a decade. This company has followed every rule and law environmentally to the T, to the T. This is what we ought to be empowering people to do. And so this is an important amendment because without the Oak Flats, which by the way, uh, did not have uh, uh, being part of the uh, uh apache reservation ancestral lands um so this was already done this is already taken care of two billion dollars has been invested to do th this mining project right two billion dollars and what we're going to do is that right when they're ready to start mining setting new uh, discourses and mining apparatuses for future in space i gotta tell you this is just uh, just incomprehensible that we actually have to put an amendment like this because of the chairman's uh, detail to trying to remove this for special interest groups, the Sierra Club, some of some in the San Carlos Apache, not all, just some. This is this is a, a heinous way of going about things. So this amendment does exactly what it's supposed to do: remove the point of contention so that this mine project can go forward and be held accountable just like any other mine and to the, to the letter of the law. This is in the Copper Corridor. This is an important aspect for our national security, for the green new energy aspects. And, and we need to do our part as Arizona. So I applaud the gentleman from Minnesota for putting this forward. Um, it is sad that we see uh, special interest groups reign uh, over uh, this project, which has had so much highlighted about good and benefits, keeping it local, uh, empowering minorities, uh, you know, good paying jobs all the way across the, the, the jobs that and make allow people to invest in their community and build communities of, of subsequent. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I would hope that everybody will vote for this amendment um, because I think uh, this it gives that supply chain that the ranking member of energy and minerals talked about. If you want to pursue uh, the green energy, uh, electric vehicles and a grid, you gotta have copper. And there's no better place to bring copper than from Arizona. As I said before, one of the five C's that we're known for is mining and it's epitomized by copper so i thank the gentleman from minnesota for putting this forward and i would ask everybody to vote yes thank you i yield back gentlemen yields anyone else wish to be recognized? Chair. rosendale rosendale you recognized thank you mr chair uh this this committee time and time again is asking us to invest in parks but yet they reduce the funding into the land water conservation fund and the Great Outdoors Act by shutting down the leases on the public lands. Uh, they ask us to invest in forest conservation, but limit the harvesting of timber, which both provides healthier forests and tremendous revenue for the very forest service that, that uh, would be there trying to manage these forests. And now we're seeing here that they want us to invest in renewable energy, but you stop the production of the very minerals that are necessary to produce those components to produce the renewable energy. 
This is like some kind of a nightmare when you're asking us to do a better job and taking away the very revenue that can be produced here that would give us the ability to do it. The claim, the left claims time and time again to protect the environment, but you drive the resource development to countries that have no labor or environmental standards. And how are we to pay for all of this? by simply raising taxes on the middle class across the United States and making it more difficult for them at the same time that you're driving up the cost for them to live every single day, whether it's bread, milk and eggs or the gasoline so that they can get to their job. And you drive the production of those resources to hostile communist countries, hostile communist countries. You're sacrificing our economic potential and you're compromising our national security. Mr. Chair and everyone in this committee, please support this legislation that my friend from Minnesota has brought forward. Thank you. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Anyone else wish to be recognized on stubborn number five? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Congressman Benz here. Sir, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I actually, I'm just, I just have a question uh, for you, Mr. Chair, in your last remarks regarding why this particular uh, Section 70201 fit into the reconciliation bill. And I think you were trying to shore that up with your remarks, but I don't, I want to be clear on it. I think you said that the reason this is in here is to remove the copper um, mine, if you will, from the possibility of of, of creating revenue and by taking this out, uh, that is the, the Oak Flat, uh, somehow it's it's no longer uh, going to be a plague upon us by bringing money in the door. Thus, that's the justification uh, that you're using, I think, and that's why I'm asking uh, for this uh, this uh, vacant home withdrawal. Do I have it right? Uh, essentially, yes. I would. I would. I would. Uh disagree with your, your perceived motivation of the issue, but yes, that this is a, a revenue adjustment down, uh, which is uh, within uh, within the, the instructions that we need to follow as we go forward. And uh, that's primarily what it is. And that's why that section is, uh, is, is the viable one and the appropriate one. Well, well, thank you for the answer, Mr. Chair. And to continue just for a moment, I just want to make sure because I have some of my own amendments coming up, and I just want to make sure that the standard is uh, simply one of revenue adjustment. And thus, uh, any one of the amendments that comes forward, apparently, if it drives revenue up or drives revenue down, is relevant to this bill and and germane. That's really that's really what I'm getting at here. I mean, I mean, I'm not asking you to rule in advance on on my on my amendments, and I'm hoping they're all germane, but I just want to make sure I understand the standard that you've established by virtue of your your remarks, and I think you've made them clear, and I appreciate it. So with that, thank I yield back. the gentleman yield? Thank you for yielding. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I'll Is there anyone else that wishes to just... Uh, Would somebody um, yield to go, sir? Mr. Chairman, What's I yield my time to Congressman Gozar. To go, sir, you're recognized. I thank the gentleman. gentlewoman. Uh, uh, Representative Benz, this is a project that estimates between over $60 billion in revenues uh, and uh, uh, almost $15 billion in taxes. Um, the chairman does not want this project. It has been going on for now 10 years in, in development. It is on the cusp of being put into production. And what the chairman is doing is trying to take it offline by including it into a, a, a budget bill, a must pass bill, so that it rescinds uh, the, the agreement that we had made almost a decade ago with Senator McCain, uh, Senator Kyle, myself, and um, most of the delegation, uh, other than uh, the, the chairman. And this would uh, severely handicap Arizona. Uh, it would severely handicap our uh, supply chain uh, for copper uh, with renewables and, and our trans transmission lines. And it is solely on, on behalf of uh, like the Sierra Club 
and some on the hierarchy in the San Carlos Apache Nation. That's what this is all about. Pure and simple. He's beholding to special interest groups. And this is for the people of Arizona and for the people of the United States. They have set every bar and every standard correctly. And so I want to make sure that that is pointedly what is at, at, at stake here. No different than uh, what you're seeing in Minnesota or you're seeing anywhere. You know, it, it's not about um, the other side says uh, we're all for mining. Well, where? This is an area that was mined over, for over 100 years, for over 100 years. And now they're going back and finding the majority of the, the ore at 7,000 feet and below. And this is incredible. I mean, absolutely incredible. The other side talks about trying to position America first uh, for this plan for infrastructure, but then they take, take away all the aspects for supply chains, the energy to build them, and makes us totally, totally incapacitated and having to be relying on everybody else from the Middle East to China to Russia and all the above. That's just in incomprehensible, absolutely incomprehensible. I yield back. Gentlemen, Eagles, anyone else wish to be recognized on stubborn number five? Westerman, it's Westerman. Who wishes to be recognized? Westerman. Mr. Westerman, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, when we started this discussion today, I asked the question, where's the rationale? And this is one provision of this bill where I really have to ask that question again. Where's the rationale? Because I can't see any. Let's talk about the, the world that we live in today, where the left is pushing for a, an electric economy. And we know that the, the number one thing you need to electrify something is copper. There's no question that copper must be available if we're going to increase the electrification of our economy. Matter of fact, the World Bank says that by 2050, we're going to have a 200% increase in the demand for copper. Now, what the overall reconciliation bill tries to do on this one issue it has a provision to reverse a negotiated bipartisan land exchange included in the fiscal year 2015 NDAA. It was signed into law by President Obama uh, and it was as bipartisan as you can get. But that's not the, the overarching picture that's here. I believe this is one of the most uh, egregious examples of not using common sense. And it has much bigger ramifications. You have a company that's invested $2 billion in a copper mine that they started uh, decades ago, but since 2015, they've been able to actually dig a hole in the ground. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to visit this mine and ride an elevator for over 20 minutes to get to the bottom of a 7,000 feet deep mine. A mine that has enough copper to supply 25% of the U.S. demand for the next 50 years. And now we want to pull the rug out from under it? Where's the logic in that? How are we going to electrify our economy if we don't have the copper to electrify it? Why do we want to kill jobs? And this idea that there's an oak flat that's in jeopardy, this mine's 7,000 feet below ground. This defies logic, and it sets a terrible precedent. Who in their right mind would ever want to invest in mining in the United States if they see an example where a company can follow all the rules, can get the approval, can invest, can invest $2 billion, and then the federal government step in and say, oh, we were just kidding. You can't really mine the copper now. You're going to have to close your mine down. It makes no sense. It defies logic. There is no rationale in this provision, and Mr. Stauber's amendment wants to correct that. I wholeheartedly support his amendment, but I'm telling you, this is what this whole bill is about. No common sense, no rationale, bad for America, 
good for our adversaries, bad for the environment, bad for U.S. jobs, um, and we're just continuing to go down this path when we've got all these other issues that Speaker Pelosi should bring us back to D.C., all of us back here, to have face-to-face -face discussions, to get rid of this remote uh, WebEx or Zoom or whatever it is we're using, and sit down and solve the problems that are important to the American people. Uh, this is not solving a problem, it's creating a problem and it's piling on. Please support Representative Stauber's amendment and I yield back. Gentleman yields, anyone else wish to speak on Stauber number five? Hearing no further debate, the question is on the Stauber amendment number five. I will pause so members in favor can uh, indicate by voting aye. 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 Members uh, who are opposed can unmute and uh, all opposed indicate by saying no. No. Oh, no. 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 And in the opinion of the chairs, the no's have it, the no's have it, and based on prior request, uh, this action on this item, this amendment postponed uh, as agreed to prior to the meeting. Next item is uh, number, Mr. Stubborn, number six. Yes, yes. Correct. You recognize, sir? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this amendment uh, today exempts minerals that could be used for electric vehicles from the bill's proposed uh, punitive royalty. One of the recycle, recycle talking points uh, of this uh, inconceivable reconciliation bill is that it will supposedly help fight climate change. In reality, this bill makes sweeping policy changes that will fundamentally change everything about our American economy and actually further increase pollution. It makes no sense to funnel money to electric vehicle projects and then source these minerals abroad and from foreign nations where there are no environmental or labor standards. If this committee is serious about mitigating greenhouse gas emissions, it wouldn't punish domestic production of critical minerals, especially those needed for electric vehicles. As GM, Ford, Dodge, Tesla, and others keep making electric vehicles, let's ensure there's a domestic supply of clean sourced minerals. In Northern Minnesota, we have, been, we have mining companies at the forefront of clean mining technology. Polymet, for example, actually has to remineralize the water it uses as it's too clean after it goes through their osmosis process. Twin Metals plans to use electric vehicles for their mining fleet while using the dry stack tailings storage method, a process that is lauded by even the most frivolous of activist groups in Minnesota. Talon Metals is exploring innovative ways to sequester carbon and actually be a, quote, net negative emissions project. I asked the Democrats on this panel planning to just blindly vote no. How can you intend to fight climate change with electric vehicles manufactured with dirty minerals? How can you vote to support electric vehicles and you support the mining of these minerals in foreign adversarial lands that don't have the environmental or labor standards that we demand in our country. And we know we can do it better than anybody. Let's support the American worker. And I yield back. Else would be recognized? Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Lowenthal, sir, you're uh, recognized for five minutes. Thank you, thank you, and I and I, again, I, I I would like to compliment the ranking member of Energy and Mineral Resources for bringing up the issue about where critical minerals are mined. Uh, but I would like to point out we've already discussed the general topic of this amendment, and I don't believe we need to continue to elaborate on the subject further. I urge a no vote, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlemen, anyone else? 
Mr. Chair, member? I have a question for the author of the amendment. Is he available? The lady is uh, recognized. Mr. Thubber. The question for the author of the amendment is uh, he mentioned Twin Metals, which is, yes, in, uh, a, a company in Minnesota, but it's owned by Anna Facasia, a Chile mining uh, company that's based in Chile. So I'm assuming he's not saying that Twin Metals owned by a foreign mining company shouldn't pay royalties. That was my question. Um, with that, I yield back. Gentlelady yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Yes, Mr. Chair, Ben's here. Please, gentlemen is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and I just uh, am reminded of, of uh, situations out here in Oregon and the Oregon legislature where, where we would watch <clears throat> as the majority party would engage in a certain type of legislative activity, uh, ignoring the fact that they were doing just the opposite with the other hand. And that's what this reminds me of here where we are trying, or those in, in favor of this bill, and I am not, uh, are trying to uh, incent all kinds of green energy things while at the same time doing, doing just the opposite when it comes to the materials necessary to so engage. It just is amazing to watch the uh, counterindications contained in the bill. And I, of course, support the amendment because it would get us away from this uh, inconsistency that's so clear from the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair, I yield back. And yield, anyone else? Hearing no further debate, the question is stubborn amendment number six. Members in favor will unmute and indicates by uh, indicate so by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Members uh, opposed will also unmute and uh, indicate uh, their opposition by saying no. No. no, no. And the uh, opinion of the chair, the no's have it, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Uh, let me uh, record the vote on that one, are we not? We, that's, uh, yeah, that was in the agreement with Ms. Stubborn and the, 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 the all, vote. All thank, you. thank you. The vote is postponed until, uh, as per the agreement. Uh, Mr. Westerman, if I may just uh, have a short uh, discussion with you. Uh, when we did the list of Republican amendments accepted by our UC agreement, we skipped one. And to my utter shame, the amendment is from the ranking member. Uh, needing to correct that oversight. Uh, I, so I asked uh, that uh, Mr. Westerman, amendment number six be considered as adopted. Uh, unanimous consent. If without objection, so ordered. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to the committee. Uh, the next amendment is designated as Gosar number three. Mr. Gosar, you are recognized for five minutes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Here we are once again. We were trying to figure out how we can make America more secure while the majority on this committee wants to make us more dependent on foreign minerals. This amendment is simple. It would strike the massive mineral withdrawal and included in this bill. My local constituents and counties support this amendment, and I encourage my colleagues to respect our wishes. Mojave County, Arizona, which is the primary area, which, uh, primary area which this amendment would help protect, is currently facing nearly a 10% unemployment rate and has a per capita income of less than $35,000 a year. These economic conditions should be proof enough that we need to be promoting economic development in these regions, not simply closing off an important path to economic security for the people of Mojave, Mojave County. When I highlighted that offshore drilling in California would reduce our dependence on foreign oil, stop us from subsidizing Russia and Saudi Arabia, my colleagues from California scream out, respect our wishes, we don't want drilling. So I call on them here today. Join me in supporting my constituents who are crying out for the chance, just a chance to keep the potential of high paying jobs open and to support this amendment. It may come as a shock, but even today, we know little about the geological mineral makeup of our lands. Minerals that we are very important in the past, like gold and silver, are not always the key to our future technologies. Today, we are finding a whole new suit of minerals that are critically important to our future, while rare earths, and lithium are the stars, important minerals like cobalt, manganese, and copper are quickly becoming equally more both important and challenging to find and produce. However, 
This bill in front of us has no recognition of the importance of the breadth of minerals that may be included in the areas covered by this legislation, which is why my amendment is so important today. We shouldn't just simply withdraw a million acres of land without any idea of the full impact of the withdrawal areas prior to enacting this withdrawal. This is important because of the national security impacts of these proposed withdrawals, seeks to permanently ban oil, natural gas, geothermal, uranium, and other critical minerals and rare earths on over a million acres of land in Arizona. I will continue to make the case that the importance of uranium alone is key for keeping these lands open. I will remind everyone, American uranium production in the U.S. peaked in 1980 at 44 million pounds annually. In 2019, U.S. uranium mines produced only about 200,000 pounds, while we imported nearly 43 million pounds of uranium from foreign nations, many of whom actively work against American interests, like Russia. Our national dependency on foreign uranium supplies makes the U.S. vulnerable to supply disruptions of fuel funds these hostile foreign nations have. America needs to be, develop a long-term, sustainable, uh, responsible domestic uranium supply to meet, to meet our uh, current and future demands, both for, by civilian and military needs. However, this withdrawal isn't just about uranium. It will have a negative impact on other critical minerals on a massive, massive swath of land. Earlier, I mentioned the importance of lithium. And there's no question, question that lithium is critically important to our technology and energy future. However, we don't often know where all the lithium resources are in the United States. For example, in September of last year, the USGS funded an Earth MRI program in Arizona to study the lithium resources of the Big Sandy Valley in Arizona, in my district. This study will help us define and understand the lithium resources in this region. Yet it is important for us to reflect on the fact that we didn't know about these resources until recently. Had we closed off this area, like this bill proposes to do to more than a million acres of Arizona, we may have never known. Before I close, let me stress the underlying bill represents one of the largest legislative land grabs ever considered by Congress. This effort is permanently looked to lock away the highest grade and largest deposit of uranium in the country, will further increase our reliance on foreign adversaries like Russia, China, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan. We should stop right now and understand the full impacts of our actions instead of rushing headlong into the endeavor of permanently making this million acre area of off limits. We should know what the true impacts of this legislation will be on the long-term national security of our country. I also want to make sure that people understand this is not in the Grand Canyon. This is uh, material, lands outside of the Grand Canyon National Park. Uh, this is conflated. Now, the and my majority, the chairman may bring up the fact that uh, a poll was done in regards to withdrawing this uh, in Arizona. And they got something like 70% or almost 80% saying that we should. But when they were given the facts that uh, everything that was there, uh, whether it be timber uh, clearings, thinnings, uh, uh, resources for national security and for uh, energy production, 80% of them came back and said, we need to keep it off the track. So once again, this is all about special interest uh, groups. Uh, it, it bypasses a mitigated uh, uh, agreement that was done in the uh, late 80s with uh, Senator McCain and, and Democrats in regards to uh, keeping this available for evaluation for mining So, uh, and other resources. So with that, I would hope everybody would uh, join me in supporting this, uh, and uh, I yield back. Gentlemen, yield. Let me recognize myself in opposition to Mr. Gosar's amendment. Uh, the amendment would strike the inclusion of 1.5 million for the withdrawal of certain lands around the Grand Canyon. I strongly oppose this effort to undermine the essential investment made under this subtitle. Investing in the health of our public lands is a critical component of efforts to build back better. Public lands offer significant benefits to America communities with outdoor recreation alone, creating 5.2 million jobs and generating nearly 800 million in spending. Moreover, public lands are key to the health of our climate. Protecting clean water and water alone as well, clean air and a livable community and water for that basin states being essential in terms of the Colorado River. Investing in these irreplaceable resources is about as responsible a choice as we can make. Section fits squarely into the scope of the subtitle it is 
one among many investments in the protection of our public lands and climate. Striking this protection is not in the interest of, of the title. And, uh, and as a revenue measure, I, I, I strongly oppose this amendment and urge my colleagues to vote no. With that, I yield back and would recognize anyone interested uh, in, in uh, speaking to Gosar Amendment Number Three. Ms. Westerman. Mr. Westerman, sir, you're recognized. Thank you, Chairman Grijalva. Uh, I strongly support this amendment by my colleague, Mr. Gosar. And again, there's no rationale in why we would pull land and out of mineral production when it possibly or does contain uh, minerals that we're very much dependent on elements and minerals as mr gosar mentioned we're heavily dependent on russia for the uranium that we use today i believe the numbers are we produce one half of one percent of the uranium that we use today now, if we wanted to be intellectually honest and talk about a carbon-free economy, then nuclear has to come into that. And I realize this committee is not the committee that has jurisdiction over nuclear energy, but we certainly have jurisdiction over the fuels that go into nuclear energy. And that's what this amendment is about. It's about protecting those resources. And let's make sure we've got the facts straight here. Leaving this land open for extraction would not in any way be mining inside the Grand Canyon. There's a national park boundary around the Grand Canyon, and this land is all far outside that boundary. Matter of fact, it goes all the way to the Utah state line. Leaving this provision in the bill and getting it passed and signed into law, and I assume it's in this bill because this very legislation that was passed off the House floor probably met a dead end in the Senate in getting a, or would meet a dead end in getting the 60 votes required to get past a filibuster on it. But we can sneak it in, or not really sneak it in, but put it in boldly into this reconciliation bill and move it through with all the other irrational provisions that are in the bill. Let's be clear. This again is gonna make it harder for the United States to produce our own supply of uranium. If we ever do get serious about a, a carbon-free economy, a more electrified economy, then we have to have nuclear energy as part of that equation. And we're not gonna be able to produce the fuel for that nuclear energy because of the provision that's included in this ill-conceived bill. I strongly support the gentleman's amendment. Uh, again, uh, it would make a very bad bill slightly better, uh, but I assume the since the majority's already passed this off of the House floor, they've probably definitely got the votes to uh, keep it in this amendment or keep it in this uh, $31 billion bill that we're marking up in the Natural Resources Committee today. I yield back. Mr. Yields, anyone else wish to be recognized on Gosef, Mr. Gosef's First Amendment, number three? Yes, Mr. Chair. Who, who wishes? Uh, Mr. Benz, Oregon. Mr. Benz, you're recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I rise in support of the amendment. And I, I just want to call out uh, an experience I had uh, several days ago when I, my ancient uh, pickup truck is wearing out. So I thought I would go try to find a new one. And I found that the soonest I could acquire such a truck would be one year from now. And that is because we can't, uh, we don't have available computer chips uh, to build cars. And this is happening, it's an epidemic across our country. In fact, I think it's around the world, uh, except perhaps in Taiwan where they're building the chips. Um, in this situation here where we withdraw huge chunks of of our natural resources from from uh, any for, uh, form of disposal location entry or patent as this as the language reads makes me wonder why in the world we feel so secure in our ability to rapidly fill in the holes created by what we now have as a worldwide supply chain 
it amazes me that we think we are so wealthy and so immune from danger that we can take this kind of huge, amazingly, uh, and still misunderstood, not completely understood asset and set it aside. It is astounding to me that we would put ourselves in such a uh, position given the obvious uh, shortfalls in our current situation. I do not understand it. And the, 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 it's done so blithely without an understanding of that which we are giving away. And this is not the only place where this has happened. If we look at our national forest, we can see layers of regulation uh, upon layer of regulation upon layer of regulation that makes it almost impossible to do anything in those areas now. The withdrawal is almost like saying, well, you know what? It's almost impossible to get in here anyway. Let's look at the copper mine. But just in the, in the event that someone is, is, gets, fights their way through this, all this regulation, we don't want that to happen. It is amazing to me, Mr. Chair, how, how immune our country has become to the dangers it faces. And of course, I'll be supporting this amendment. I wish everybody else would too. Uh, I yield back. Thank you, gentlemen yields. Uh, who else seeks recognition? Uh, Mr. Chair Stauber, Minnesota. Mr. Stauber, you're recognized, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I strongly support uh, my colleague, Representative Gosar's amendment. Um, what what, uh, what uh, Congressman Gosar has been fighting, it's the same thing we've been fighting in Minnesota. The, the, um, the, the truth be told, there's going to be no mining in the Grand Canyon. That's crystal clear. Uh, the congressman has stated that, others have stated that, just like there will be no mining in the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness in Northeastern Minnesota, nor will there be any mining in the buffer zone around the Boundary Waters Canoe Area uh, Wilderness. Uh, that was in uh, the late 70s when we assured that. So the, some of the, <clears throat> the, the tactics of maybe not telling the total truth or, or putting scare tactics out there, uh, uh, such as the, this, this mine will be mining in the Grand Canyon is just uh, uncalled for. And we talk about clean energy. What an opportunity to have uh, to push for uh, all of the above energy, the strategy that we need to uh, adhere to in this country, all of the above energy strategy. And we know that nuclear is clean. And we have the resource, uh, the uranium. Uh, we could, again, we mine it here better than anybody following the best labor standards, um, environmental standards. And as a congressman said, the people that he represents wants it. He, he has been around long enough to talk to them and they understand the value of this. Let's mine this in Arizona. Not any other place in the world if we don't have to. It's, it's, it's there. The resource is there. Uh, so I stand strongly uh, in support of Representative Gosar's amendment and I yield back. Gentlemen yields, anyone else? Hearing no further debate, Mr. the question is Mr. Chairman, I, I have a letter for the record uh, from the American Exploration and Mining Association, the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the Arizona Mining Association, the National Mining Association, the Women's, Women's Mining Coalition, and the Wyoming Mining Association um, that opposes the bill. Uh, and I want to submit that to the record. Without objection and uh, so ordered. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Hearing no further debate, the question is on the Gosar Amendment number three. Uh, those members in favor, please unmute and indicate so by saying aye. 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 Members, uh, Opposed can unmute and please indicate so by saying no. 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 The opinion of the chair, the no's have it, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chair, I asked for a recorded vote. Gosar has requested a recorded vote and that will be uh, postponed until uh, based on the prior agreements. With that, let me now turn again to Mr. Gosar. You're recognized for five minutes, sir, uh, for amendment number four. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a simple amendment. We simply shouldn't be imposing massive unknown new taxes on our domestic industries through a partisan budget process. However, that is exactly what this Bernie Sanders banana republic budget does with this new dirt tax. Let's be clear, this isn't royalties. This isn't government fair share. This is a punitive punishment 
proposal to punish American industry, drive out jobs, and kill mining in America. Specifically, the proposal before us today establishes a seven cents per ton tax on dirt, rock, and other material moved during the mining process. This isn't material being sold. It is a material that is valuable to the taxpayer. This is a punitive tax to make mining in America more expensive, more costly, and drive it away. Just this summer, the International Energy Agency, the World Bank, our own USGS and GOE, are projecting mineral demands growing more than a thousand percent. The new energy economy that the majority wants to see come to fruition is driving cause of that demand. Yet this punitive fee on American hard rock mining will only deepen our foreign import reliance. This will have real consequences on our domestic ability to reassure businesses and industry of the new economy. The mining industry and the members on this side of the dais has said that we are committed to working in a bipartisan way towards finding a compromise on royalties that protects American mining while creating a new revenue stream to support communities, clean up historic uh, legacies and promote domestic security. However, the real impact of a 7% dirt tax will drive domestic mining overseas. What is the real impact of this law? One, it will continue to leave Congolese children on the hook for our cobalt supply. Two, it will embolden Mexican cartels to support Chinese iron mining. Three, it will displace more Atacama communities to mine lithium in South America. Four, it will embolden the Chinese government to push their slave labor mining industries harder. Mining and minerals, like all global industries, in, is in question. If we don't produce it here, we got to get it from somewhere else. The California oil issue is the classic example. California bans its own drilling and suddenly imports a majority of its oil from foreign nations like Saudi Arabia. Minerals are the same thing. Either we get them, we get cobalt from mines here in Minnesota, or we get it from child labor in Congo. Either we produce new lithium in Arizona or Nevada, or we watch the Chilean government displace entire communities for new lithium supplies. Either we mine uranium here or we fund the Putin regime. The choice is clear. Folks, this is, this is a, a very important aspect. Um, uh, we can't keep get, passing on taxes. I guess, you know, it goes back to the old adage. If you want less of it, tax it. Because that's exactly what we're doing here. We are we do things fundamentally better than anywhere else in the world. And by doing that and sending that standard and use, utilizing materials that are home built, home grown, and home mined uh, is the right ad attitude uh, for a, a tumultuous uh, uh, geopolitical world that we live in. If our way is the right way, stand up for it. Do it, do it right. Otherwise, what you're doing is you're following a course uh, for non-ecological uh, protocols, child labor violations, and no compensation for those communities around the world being uh, uh, victimized by foreign governments. I vote, wish everybody would vote for this amendment, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Gosar. Mr. Gosar uh, yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Are we in the yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Gosar number three. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lowenthal. Yes, no. I believe they're on. Which one? Is that? This is Gosar number four. four. Yes, Gosar number four. Mr. Men Mr. Chair, I believe this amendment will undermine the intent of the provision that we have before us in the bill, uh, which is to raise revenues and to protect taxpayers. So therefore, I oppose this amendment and urge my colleagues to vote no. Mr. Chair. The gentleman yields. Who seeks to be recognized? Congressman Cohen. Mr. Cohen, sir, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I want to compliment you on the way you always run these hearings. You're so even handed and level minded. I appreciate it. And I'm concerned about the people of Louisiana and express my regards for them and, and Mr. Graves. I love New Orleans and the people of Louisiana. Mr. Gosar has been a friend. And Mr. Gosar, if you would, uh, uh, I think you disappeared. Uh, Mr. Gosar, are you around? 
Well, if not, there you go. Hey, Paul. Um, Steven. Yeah, I, I'd say this not to attack you in any way whatsoever, and I don't want to attack anybody on here, although it's been tempting for the last uh, three hours. But if you would call back, you're referring to our country as a banana republic, I would appreciate it. I mean, socialism, you want to say that? Communism, you want to say that? Uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, o o a AOC, uh, the squad, all that, you know, like, but banana republics over the top. We're not a banana republic. That has more to do with how you elect your leaders and not with legislation. And there's an old saying in Tennessee, you don't talk about rope in a house where a man's been hung. I would just hope you take back that reference to our country as a banana republic. Well, uh, uh, Stephen, I, I appreciate the, the comment. I have to go this is taken so wrongly. I, I apologize. But from that standpoint, uh, am I, yeah, I'm on. I mean, we might be even worse. I mean, because uh, when you look at the election process, we got lots of problems. And we need to get every, everybody on the same track to make sure that it's done right. I think both sides have seen it. Uh, and it's time to, to make sure that it's a fair election process. So we may be even worse. But... I, I, I yield back to you. Well, with that, I understand you're not going to take that back and you don't have to. As far as our election process, I think 62 of 63 courts or all 63 courts, a Democratic and Republican appointed judges from all over this country said the process was clean and fair and ruled against all of the challenges. So I think we're on the right path. We are not a banana republic. We are a great country who had just the most the finest election we've ever had as far as transparency, and it was bipartisan in the, in the thoughts that it was. I yield back the balance of my time. Uh, the gentleman yields, and Mr. Cohen, thank you for the uh, uh, saying that it was even keeled and uh, fair, And uh, but I have to admit that, you know, as part of this uh, process that my tongue is pretty well bitten up right now, but, uh, but I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Yes, uh, anyone else want to, uh, Speak to amendment number four. Mr. Chair. Please. Stauber, Stauber Minnesota. Yes, you recognize, sir. Thank you. I just, I, I stand uh, in support of this as well. You know, uh, to tax seven cents of every ton uh, of dirt that you move from one place to the other during, it uh, could be even during the, uh, uh, construction, uh, to me just doesn't, just, just doesn't make a lot of sense uh, as you're, as you're, as you're building and, uh, you, you move equipment, you move dirt, you move materials, uh, and, and change it up depending on where you are in the construction process. So um, I understand you're trying to, uh, uh, you know, raise revenue here, uh, but ultimately the consumer is going to pay. Just like when when you raise taxes, ultimately it's the consumer, well, it's the middle middle class that's going to pay. So and I yield back. Gentlemen, yield back. Anybody want uh, wish to be recognized on Mr. Gosar's amendment number four? Uh, Mr. Ben, the chair. Mr. Chair, uh, Ben's here from Oregon again. Mr. Benz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just wanted, uh, perhaps I haven't had enough time, and that's the truth, to review the bill, but I wanted to make sure that the uh, definition of uh, hard rock mineral activities uh, was in some way limited, and I may I hope I am correct in understanding that this applies only to those who are mining for something other than aggregate, something other than uh, dirt. Uh, that this is something that they're doing uh, to obtain gold or uranium or something they're extracting from hard rock. And likewise, I'm unclear in, in the way it's written on whether it applies to both private land and also federal land. And so maybe someone who knows way more about mining than I do can weigh in and, and clear this up for purposes of the record. I yield back, Mr. Chair. When if, uh, gentlemen yields, anyone else seek to be recognized? Westerman. Mr. Westerman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and Mr. Chairman, I have to give it to, uh, give credit to whoever wrote of this reconciliation bill and who wrote these provisions because if you were trying to come up with a policy to really destroy mining in our country uh, this bill i think achieves it from several different perspectives uh, you know it's more than death by a thousand cuts uh, i think there are places here where you you really 
uh, run the sword through on the uh, on the mining industry, uh, like uh, making an example out of the the mine in Arizona where they get permitted, they invest money, and all of a sudden the rugs pulled out from under them. Um, you know that's going to discourage a lot of people from ever thinking about investing in a mining operation uh, in the United States going forward. Uh, but this one is, uh, you know, it's one of those cuts. Uh, it's just a, an opportunity to make it less attractive to mine in the United States. And again, if it's the uh, objective of the majority party to say not in our backyard, uh, you're not welcome here, we're going to take business somewhere else, American jobs aren't worth it, not just the jobs in mining, but the jobs downstream where you uh, really get a lot of investment and a lot of high paying jobs and smeltering and refining and making stuff out of these ores that are mined. All of that goes away when you do away with mining. And I have to really compliment the majority party on a strategy that I totally disagree with. But if this bill's passed, it will be very effective in saying we're not open for business in the United States for mining. Take it somewhere else. We'll just spend our hard earned dollars and ship it overseas. Uh, so I support the gentleman's amendment, and uh, you know the last thing we need is a, a tax to move dirt around in a mining operation. But it, it will be very effective in achieving the majority's uh, goal to stop all mining. I yield back. Chairman yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized? And Mr. Gosar's number amendment number four. There is no further debate. The question is on Gosar amendment number four. I pause for those members in favor to unmute and indicate by saying aye. 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 Members aye. opposed can unmute and indicate by saying no. 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 And you know, the chair of the no's have it and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman, I ask for a recorded vote. Mr. Gosar asked for a recorded vote and that was postponed as per agreement. Mr. Gosar, you're recognized for amendment number five. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The bill before us establishes a massive new royalty on mineral production in the United States. This bill will deeply undercut our domestic mineral production and makes us more reliant on foreign imports. That is simply a fact and something that we should all work to avoid. However, recent global developments have made our foreign dependence even more concerning. On this side of the dais, many of us are deeply concerned about the fall of Afghanistan and the fact that now we have given a roadmap of mineral resources to the Taliban for exploitation by the communist Chinese government. For two decades, nearly $90 million of American taxpayer money was spent on Afghanistan mineral exploration and mapping to the United States Geological Survey. Research conducted in Afghanistan by the USGS has produced detailed maps and studies showing that Afghanistan by the, US, by the USGS has produced dollars, uh, sits on more than a trillion dollars in critical minerals from copper, gold, silver to lithium and critical rare earth elements. The USGS work was to support the diversification of the Afghan economy and the people of a peaceful Afghanistan, not to enrich the Taliban. Now that these resources have fallen into the hands of the Taliban regime, and we cannot allow the development of these resources to enrich terrorist activities. Last week, joined by Ranking Member Westerman and Ranking Member Stauber, I introduced legislation to ban minerals and products made with minerals from Afghanistan and other nations that support the Taliban from being imported into America, as long as the terrorists continue to hold and control Afghanistan. While I would like to add the Stopping Terrorist Mineral Trade Act to this bill, this amendment will have to do instead. The amendment will su suspend the job-killing massive new tax on American mining, including in this bill, as long as the Chinese government is mining Afghan minerals. We simply shouldn't hamstring our domestic energy after spending nearly $100 million on subsidizing mineral research, exploration, and mapping for the Chinese government to enrich the Taliban terrorists. I would like to think that we can all agree that undercutting our domestic industry while the Chinese enrich terrorists to provide enrich terrorists to provide us minerals makes no sense whatsoever. Somehow, if Congolese children, Mexican cartels, and Chilean communities won't move you to support American mining, maybe cutting off funding for the Taliban terrorists 
will make you see the importance of our domestic industry. Support this amendment. Co-sponsor the Stopping Terrorist Minerals Trade Act. And let us work together to ensure that the terrorists don't fund their future attacks with money from the USGS research. Good old taxpayer dollars hard at work against the United States. I, with that, I yield back. Gentleman yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized on uh, GOSAR number five? Mr. Chairman, I wish to be recognized, Congressman Mr. Lowenthal, thank you. You're recognized. Thank you. Without sounding like a broken record, we've already discussed the general topic of this amendment. Uh, and I don't believe we need to elaborate on this subject any further. I urge a no vote and I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, Mr. Lowenthal. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Westerman. Mr. Westerman. Uh, sounding like a broken record, I'm again going to support uh, Mr. Gosar's amendment. Uh, you know, as we look to the future, and we look again where America is getting smaller and China is getting larger. It's not if this will happen, but when it happens. When we determine that China is getting larger because they're mining uh, elements and minerals from Afghanistan, where our American tax dollar money and uh, not just tax dollars, but when we buy uh, components from China, it goes directly through China to Afghanistan. All this amendment does is says, when we determine that China is selling us material from the terrorist nation uh, run by the Taliban, that we restrict those things from being imported to our country. I think that's pretty much common sense and something most Americans would support. I appreciate the gentleman for offering this amendment. I support it and yield back. Gentlemen, yields. Anyone else seek to recognition? Mr. Chair. Gentlemen, recognized. Uh, stop stop. The minister. I, I, I again uh, support this amendment. Um, we, we cannot allow uh, uh, the the Chinese or, or other adversarial nations go into the country of Afghanistan and, and, and mine those minerals, and then and then we turn a blind eye to. Uh, you know, purchase them in this country. I think that what we need to, uh, what we need to do is support this amendment, um, uh, and it disallows any domestic uh, uh, mineral royalty if we're doing that, if we're purchasing from a foreign adversarial. And I think that uh, obviously uh, we're talking about Afghanistan right now because of uh, uh, the, the failure of the withdrawal itself. Otherwise. Uh, um, you know, would have probably a different conversation, but uh, the country of Afghanistan now is uh, rich for the communist kind of country of China or Russia or others to come in there and uh, extract those minerals. By the way, not using the same environmental standards or labor standards that we certainly demand uh, of uh, when we uh, mine our, our rich resources here in this country. So I stand in support of uh, uh, Congressman Gosar's amendment and I yield back, Mr. Chair. Yield back. Anyone else seek to be recognized on number five? Uh, Hearing no further debate, the question is on Mr. Gosar's amendment number five. Pause for those members in favor to unmute and indicate by saying aye. 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 Members opposed will unmute and indicate by saying no. 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 Opinion of the chair, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman, I ask for a recorded vote. As uh, recorded what being requested, that is postponed until uh, as per agreement. Next is uh, Mr. Gosar. Uh, amendment number uh, 115. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The bill before us, this massive bill, opens a landslide of attacks on American mine, miners at a time when we and the entire world will be needing a significant increase in our mineral supply. This amendment will make significant strides towards securing our nation a domestic supply chain of critical minerals from the United States for the United States. All of you know critical minerals are the building blocks of modern life, necessary for applications in defense systems, renewable technologies, healthcare, and more. For years, our country has become increasingly dependent on Chinese slave labor, Congolese children, and other nations to fulfill our demand for minerals. 
The global pandemic has demonstrated the severe consequences of allowing this long-standing over-reliance on China to go unchecked. And this amendment will begin the process, complex process, of unraveling our addiction and addressing these problems. This bill tackles impediments to domestic critical mineral development, including inefficiencies in the federal permitting process and short-sighted mineral withdrawals. I will quote Steve Trussell, Executive Director of the Arizona Mining Association. Mining is, a, is vital to Arizona and the economic development in the nation, as well as providing clean energy solutions for a sustainable future. We must make the proper measures to protect, responsibly extract, and utilize our resources so we are not relying on foreign sources such as China and Russia. We are sincerely grateful for members of Congress who understand this. End of quote. I hope you will join me and support this amendment to promote domestic mining, secure our supply chains, and tell the slave masters in China that we will produce our own minerals. I think Americans want that. They get it. They, they, they want to see technology move forward. They don't want to see it impeded. They know China is stealing it wantingly uh, on the technology side, and they see them taking it around the world for the supply chains. It's high time that we start protecting the citizen and the United States, putting them first instead of putting China first. With that, I yield back and I hope everybody uh, will vote for this amendment. Anyone Mr. else wishes Mr. to be- Mr. Chairman, I re request Mr. recognition. Mr. recognized, sir. Thank you. Again, we've already discussed this general topic of the role of China and, and, uh, and I don't believe we need to elaborate on this subject any further. I urge a no vote and I yield back my time. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Hoffman, sir, recognize. Good to see you, sir. Well, you too, Mr. Chairman. Good to see everyone. And just on the the broken record uh, aspect uh, of the conversation we're having over and over again, um, you know, I, there, there's a real disconnect here because we began this hearing with our Republican colleagues telling us we shouldn't even be having the hearing that. Um, the suggestion that there's all these Marvel superheroes across the aisle who would be out defending the border and defeating the Taliban and fighting the Chinese Communist Party and pulling kittens out of trees with first responders. Uh, and yet um, they are taking what could be a two hour markup and turning it into the Bataan Death March uh, with redundancy after redundancy. Every one of these amendments is a slight variation of ones we've already heard many, many times. So. I just want to suggest that if, <clears throat> if my colleagues really think that all of these other crises must be attended to, uh, we could move this markup along a little faster and we could all move on to other work. Uh, but I also want to make the point that governing uh, the hard work of passing a budget reconciliation bill when we have a government shutdown starting October 1st, if we don't get this work done, sometimes calls on us to do hard work and to multitask and to walk and chew gum. So uh, hopefully we can take care of all of our crises, including uh, avoiding a government shutdown uh, and do it a lot more efficiently. Uh, and with that, I will yield. Mr. Well, Chair. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be recognized on Gosar's uh, 150 number 115? Mr. Sir? Chair Stauber. Mr. Stauber, you're recognized. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, to my colleague, um, uh, Congressman Huffman, you just insulted every single American that has ever worn the uniform by saying that this markup is like the Bataan Death March. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, and I'm disappointed in you. For the members of the military that gave their life, we just buried the last surviving Minnesota in the Bataan Death March. So for you to do that, Mr. Huffman, I am, that's not who you are, and I know it's not who you are, but I gotta call you out. I'm spending the rest of my life with the greatest veteran alive that served in Iraq. And I Would you yield, back. sir? Would you yield? Would you yield, Mr. Stover? Mr. Huffman, I, I obviously mean no disrespect to veterans, and uh, maybe that's not the best analogy. Uh, my point being that uh, there's an attrition aspect to what my colleagues across the aisle are doing today, and it undercuts these arguments that they would prefer to be dealing with 
uh, pressing crises. So I, I don't need to invoke the Bataan Death March. You're, you're right to uh, take umbrage at that. But I, I think my point remains, and, and uh, maybe we could just tone down all the political theater. Gentlemen, Mr. Stauber, do you yield back? Gentleman yields. Who else, wishes, who else wishes to be recognized on uh, 115? Hearing no further debate, the question is on the GOSAR Amendment 115. Members in favor, please unmute and indicate by saying aye. 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 Members uh, opposed, unmute and indicate by saying no. Oh, no. No. The no's have it. The opinion of the chairs, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. That's for a recorded vote. Mr. Gosar requests a recorded vote, and uh, that'll be postponed that's for agreement. Uh, Representative Gosar, you're now recognized for five minutes for Amendment 116. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a simple amendment, one I wish all my colleagues will join me in supporting. As you know, for a decade, I have sponsored the Bipartisan Public Land Renewal Energy Development Act, known as PLORIDA. This bill will increase production of wind, solar, and geothermal energy on public lands, while also establishing a revenue sharing mechanism that ensures a fair return for states, counties, sportsmen, conservation, and taxpayers. This process has been overwhelmingly bipartisan, and while much of the bill was passed at the end of last year, this amendment finishes the job we have started. This amendment will streamline land use and promote new, more renewable energy on federal lands, increasing access to public lands for energy, as well as ensuring counties and states receive adequate revenue for developing, impacting their communities is a no-brainer. I know that in this Congress, my colleagues have attempted to make this a partisan issue, drawing lines in the sand on who can support what legislation and when. However, this amendment today asks us to come together to support the policy that makes our public lands work for energy recreation in our counties. I would encourage all of my colleagues to support this amendment. Now, getting back to uh, the gentleman from California, good process builds good policy, builds good politics. If it takes a, a plethora of uh, amendments to get that across, I have said it to my leadership I'm saying it to you now, is we got to get back to a good process. Because if we don't have good process, we will build bad policy. And we have seen the rules being manipulated right and left from the day one of this, this current congressional year. So if, if, if there's an, an acknowledgement to get back to open process, where people can present their bills, present their amendments, and have the fair aspect of uh, debating it, Count me in. But until that time, this is the result. I yield. Gentlemen yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized on the Amendment 116? Mr. Gosar's amendment? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, Mr. I wish Lowenthal. to be recognized. Mr. Lowenthal, you're recognized, sir? Again, I uh, believe this amendment, while certainly worthy in terms of the content, but this is not the place to be raising this amendment. I think it will undermine the intent of the provision in question, which, which is to uh, our ability to invest in our country and to build back America, uh, build back better for all Americans. I urge my colleagues uh, to oppose this amendment. Mr. Lowenthal and uh, gentlemen yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Hearing no further debate, yeah. the question is on the Gosar Amendment Chair. 116. Somebody seek recognition at this point? Yes, it's Westerman. Mr. Westerman, you're recognized. Yep, Mr. Chair, I want to uh, rise in support of the amendment and commend my colleague, Mr. Gosar, for actually putting something forward that's uh, proactive and pragmatic. If you look at the bulk of this bill that, that you all are proposing, especially onshore, it's simply an attack on energy. There's nothing in the bill when you look at from an onshore perspective that promotes additional energy, renewable or otherwise. And what Mr. Gosar is doing with this bipartisan amendment, I believe uh, 
Mr. Levin has proposed this as a standalone bill um, is uh, trying to do something to actually increase energy production. So as we, uh, I say we, as you all attack energy production in our country, uh, you would think we could do something proactive to offset all the attacks on energy and actually um, produce more energy through even if it's renewable energy resources. So again, I uh, commend the gentleman for the amendment. Uh, this is a bipartisan uh, idea and I, I would hope that everybody would vote for it. I yield back. Gentleman yields, anyone else would wish to be recognized in Mr. Gosar's amendment? Hearing no further debate, the question is on the Gosar Amendment 116. I will pause so the members in favor can unmute. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Members opposed can unmute. They uh, indicate uh, your opposition by vote by voting no. 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 Uh, in the opinion of the chair, the no's have it. The no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman, I ask for a recorded vote. Mr. Gosar has, has asked for a recorded vote and postponed uh, till uh, as, a, as per the agreement. Before we move on, I just want to put out a general request. I want to give every member a fair shot at offering amendments and making the points they want to make. Uh, that I, I also hope that we will respect each other's time while we're doing that. There, there are many, there are if there are any sponsors out there, particularly to those who have multiple uh, amendments that they filed, who might consider offering some or all of those amendments in black, I would deeply appreciate it. And certainly we would, uh, that, that would be, uh, that would be an important contribution toward moving the uh, meeting forward. In black still means you will be recognized to make your points and you will get a recorded vote on black if you seek one. Uh, that might save some time. But if you would be willing, uh, if you would be willing to consider offering amendments in block, please let committee staff know, and they will uh, make that happen with you, for you. And uh, now uh, the next amendment is designated uh, represent uh, Harold number three. Representative Harold, you're recognized for five minutes on amendment number three. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, this amendment would strike from the bill the punitive fees increasing uh, that increase um, uh, the fee increase on producers as uh, well as newly created fees on onshore energy development. Uh, my colleagues disguise these fees as a way to get a better return from the taxpayer, which we know to be a complete falsehood. The real intent of my colleagues is to get no return for the taxpayer because the true motive behind these fee increases is to make producing energy on federal lands so unattainable that the federal leasing program virtually no, no longer would exist. This would be absolutely catastrophic for my district in my state where over 130,000 people are directly employed by the oil and gas industry. Over half of our energy production occurs on federal lands and nearly 40% of our state budget comes from oil and gas revenues. I would like to see my colleagues visit my district and speak to a restaurant owner in Artesia or one of our store owners in Roswell after a large portion of their customer base has had to move or lost their job because this committee thought they were getting a good return on their tax dollars. Small businesses across the district are still struggling to come out of the pandemic. As I tra travel across my own district, help wanted signs often greet me as I walk to the door of a business in all shapes and sizes. Imposing unnecessary and unwanted punitive fees on the largest job creator in my district will only make things worse. I also want to draw the attention of my colleagues onto these fees, on how these fees, um, on who these fees will affect most. Small independent producers, the multinational corporations that my colleagues love to beat up all the time, they will most likely be able to survive these, char these charges just fine. But the small independent producer that is the backbone of my district will be hit the hardest. Many of them will be faced with cho the choice of either shutting their operations down on federal lands, laying off employees, or in some cases, even shutting down their operations altogether. These are not publicly traded companies that have operations in 10 different countries. These are hardworking men and women who live and raise their families in the areas they produce energy. To say these people are out to profit 
off polluting our environment is a slap in the face and factually incorrect. Mr. Chairman, the increases and in the new fees imposed by this bill are not insignificant. In some cases, there is a five fold increase over existing levels. Flipping the switch and making this significant, this significant of an increase is an oversight. Turning our backs on the very people who have powered our nation through good times and in bad, while simultaneously turning a blind eye towards the real global polluters like China brings shame upon this committee. I ask my colleagues to help restore common sense to our energy debate in this committee and support my amendment. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gentle lady yields. Uh, anybody Mr. Chair? Anyone wish to be recognized? This is Representative Porter. Madam Chair, Ms. Porter, you're recognized. I oppose this amendment. This amendment will undermine the intent of numerous provisions in the committee print, which are to raise revenue and protect taxpayers. Increasing the minimum royalty rate that fossil fuel companies pay for extracting resources from public lands will raise hundreds of millions of dollars for taxpayers over the next decade. The minimum royalty rate for coal, oil, and gas extraction on public lands has not increased in over a century, even as states have charged higher rates. By charging an expression of interest fee and eliminating non-competitive leasing, we could raise revenues for American taxpayers from companies that want to lease public land for oil and gas extraction. And by increasing the minimum bond amounts and charging fees on idled oil and gas wells, this legislation will raise revenues and protect taxpayers from incurring the cleanup costs. I oppose this amendment and urge my colleagues to vote no. I yield back. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Oh. Who, who seeks recognition? Sir, you're recognized. Mr. Rosedale, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, again, Mr. Chair, committee members, we continue to hear this false premise that we can raise a fee, we can raise a royalty fee, we can raise a tax, and it's going to generate more revenue for the United States. This is a, a false theory. It has been proven time and time again, as we have reduced the taxation on the individual, on the corporation, that it generates more revenue for the government. They collect more revenue. It's not even a theory anymore. This has been proven. So why you continue to state this false theory is just beyond me. I can't understand it. Once we've established what the value of something is and the, and the consumer establishes that value, what are you going to be able to pay for a gallon of gas? What are you going to be able to pay for, for a, another service or product? Then the, the folks that produce this, they can only pay so much for the raw materials that it takes to create that product. And so when you continue to cause the producer of the product to raise their prices up, then you drive down the consumer's ability to purchase it. These are simple principles in business. So please stop stating this false premise that you will generate more revenue by raising fees because it's a lie. I, I, I uh, yield back. Uh, anyone else wish to be recognized? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Benz from Oregon here. Mr. Benz, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And and uh, to build slightly on uh, Mr. Rosendale's remarks, the, the the thing that I find most interesting about this section is everyone's focus on how it's going to reduce the production of of uh, oil and gas in the United States, and I think that's probably true. Um, it, but what's what what follows, and I thought that Mr. Rosendale was going to get to it, and he almost did, is that uh, we will simply drive further up the cost of fuel in the United States, which I think is ultimately the goal of those who are trying to force a shift to electric vehicles. But the trouble is, uh, th this bill is being sold as something that's not going to raise taxes on anybody that makes less than $400,000. But what this 
truly does is impose a cost upon everybody from the lowest income level on up. And it's a significant cost here in Oregon. We are now paying close to $4 per gallon for fuel. And this will drive these costs up to the extent that it does not. It simply means that we will be importing more from countries we really don't want to be helping. We've already, we already discussed that. But I think it, to, be, to be clear with the American people, we need to say when we're talking about this bill, yes, you are going to pay more. Yes, you are going to be paying not a tax, but you're going to be paying more because of the inflation that goes with a bill of this nature, 3.5 trillion, uh, which is this just a small part of, even though it's huge. Um, and you're also gonna be paying more because the price of the, that which you're going to be buying is going to be higher. And so with that, uh, Mr. Chair, I yield back. Gentleman yields, anyone else wish to be recognized? Mr. Chairman, it's Westerman. Mr. Westerman, sir, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I support this uh, amendment by my colleague, Representative Harrell. Uh, again, this is another death by a thousand cuts in the bill that she's trying to avoid. Um, energy does make a huge impact in her state. As you can see, uh, generated $467 million in New Mexico uh, by a record-breaking BLM lease sale and late, enabling a major raise for the state school teachers in 2019. So who can argue with doing something that's gonna create revenue to be able to increase uh, salaries for school teachers? I know that's something that gets talked about a lot, but that actually happened. It happened in New Mexico through this BLM lease. But what my colleague Representative Harrell is trying to protect is that, uh, she's trying to protect that so it can happen again in the future. The bill that's on the table, this reconciliation bill is going to gut energy production in New Mexico. It's going to destroy funding for public schools. Uh, this has far reaching effects. We talk about how it's going to just um, make us dependent on foreign countries for energy. It's gonna destroy American jobs, but it's also those other areas like school teachers that benefit from the revenues that are generated by these energy projects. We've not talked a lot about offshore production but we know that funding for the Land and Water Conservation Fund comes from offshore production. There's a lot of uh, outside entities that will be damaged by this bill. And that's what Representative Harrell's trying to protect is to stop these excessive fees and these royalties that are proposed in this bill that again are a percentage and they do go up and they go down. They go up and down based on the price of the energy. It's ingenuous to say that these prices never change because they change with the price of the product. I urge adoption of the amendment. I yield back. Gentleman yields. Anyone, uh, anyone else want to uh, comment on Harold Amendment number Three. Hearing no further debate, the question is on the Herald Amendment. Those members in favor unmute and indicate by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Those members opposed unmute and indicate by saying no. 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 In the opinion of the chairs, the no's have it. The no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Uh, I now will recognize Representative Harold again for your amendment number four. You have five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this amendment would ensure that the new fees and fee increases in this bill cannot go into effect if they are proven to negatively affect revenues for public education. And this is a very important uh, amendment for me by virtue of what Ranking Member Westerman just said, but. We know these punitive fee increases will disincentivize production on federal lands, and I can't overstate enough how much production in New Mexico comes from public lands. Hey, hi. How are you, dear? 
Are you on mute? Is somebody Joe. talking? Uh, um, anyway, sorry, I'm hearing some other people talking. Yeah, so some others could mute while. Uh, this, well, so the punitive fees will disincentivize production on our federal land, lands, which is the main source of revenue for public education in my state. In fact, according to a study conducted by New Mexico State University, but, revenues from oil and gas production some year some Mr. years. Chairman, can I interrupt just briefly? I apologize, Representative Harrell. Mr. Chairman, was there a roll call vote um, on the last? Was there a roll call requested on the last one? No, I think was we were. I'm I'm sorry. Was there a roll call? No, there was not. Okay, it was, it was our intent to have one, but I, I guess we missed that. I think the, the time slipped by. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, before I forget, I'll ask for a roll call on the remainder of my amendments. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're going you're gonna to start a new trend and ask at the, at the beginning of your amendment now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, Unless you just want to pass them all in block and then we can just roll right through these. Um, <laughs> Anyway, but according to the study by New Mexico State University, revenues from oil and gas production some years can account for over 70% of the education funding. Any disincentive to produce energy on federal lands puts the revenues at risk and brings great uncertainty to school districts across the state of New Mexico and other energy producing states in the West. And as of yet, my colleagues have not been able to come up with a viable solution that would make up for the lost revenue if they are successful in their crusade to destroy energy production on federal lands. Some in my state have suggested the film industry or legalizing marijuana, but neither of these industries come close to matching the revenues my state sees each year from the gas and oil production. Others have suggested programs modeled after PILT or SRS programs, which these pay out pennies on the dollar and New Mexico cannot rely on Western welfare. Every single county in my district relies on PILT funding, but it, it is so unreliable that we have to ensure that we have the revenue sources there for our budget and our schools. And the truth of the matter is my constituents, they don't want to be given handouts when this committee has artificially decided to tax their jobs out of existence. And as I stated, the people who bring the most negatively affect, the people who will be most negatively affected in the district are those who live, work, and raise their families in energy producing communities. And these constituents of mine are the greatest stewards of our public lands and conservationists in the entire country because they want to leave their communities better than they found it for their children and get grandchildren. According to some at the same report at New Mexico State, Eddy and Lee counties, which are the heart of the prolific Permian Basin in the district, each contribute over 100,000 per resident to the state budget on average. This is compared to roughly 29,000 per resident in Bernalillo County, the largest county by population in my state. So crippling this economy of these counties would have a domino effect across every county in New Mexico as an integral education funding from the state will dry up and vital resources will be cut. I'm asking my colleagues to stand with me to protect public education in New Mexico and other energy producing states by supporting this amendment. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. Uh, if, if, Mr. if uh, Mr. Chairman, I, re I request recognition. Mr. Lowenthal, please, you're recognized. You know, this amendment really is really a procedural amendment that does just attempts to kill the bill. Really what we're talking about is that the fossil fuel industry has been up until now costing American taxpayers billions of dollars in lost revenue each year by not paying their fair share. That's all it is. By including this revenue raiser in the Build Back Better plan, we not only uh, raise revenues that will benefit the taxpayer, but we are engaging in hopefully having a, a level playing field for energy production. I urge opposition to the amendment and I yield back. Gentleman yields, anyone else? Chair? Wish to be recognized? 
Mr. Chair Stauber from Minnesota. Mr. Stauber. I, uh, I uh, want to say that I really support this amendment and, and Congresswoman Harrell, it was great to be in your beautiful state of New Mexico and uh, talk to the, uh, the people in the Chamber of Commerce and um, those uh, small business owners that uh, spoke uh, just as you talked about their economy, those economic drivers and what have you. Uh, and it's really important, I think, that uh, for me uh, to hear uh, the startling amount that is paid for public education out of the oil royalties. It's, it's, it was it a was, uh, staggering amount. And I think that uh, for you to uh, protect your public education in New Mexico uh, is, is admirable. And I think that um, having gone down there and, 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 and spoke to the people uh, and, and watched uh, uh, an actual uh, old oil well being capped was just very informative and, and uh, the beautiful city of Artesia was, was welcoming. And, and so I, I stand with you along this amendment and will support it as well. Mr. Chair, I yield back. Gentlemen, yield. Mr. Stubborn, if I, I'm gonna recognize myself, just to ask you a question, if I may, sir, let me yield to you. In terms of the collection, I think we're, we're talking about revenue raisers, we're talking about royalties and fees, is, uh, and talking specifically about federal lands and waters. Uh, in your state, does the state charge royalties and fees, or in New Mexico's case, uh, in proportion to what the feds want to charge or do they charge less or do they charge more? It's just my own curiosity because I'm almost certain the state is collecting royalties. No, you're, you're exactly right, Mr. Chair. Uh, the state of Minnesota, every public school district in the state of Minnesota benefits from mineral royalties. And what's happening is some of the districts and some of the areas don't uh, support mining, yet they take the mineral royalties uh, for the school district. So the answer is yes, your your intuition was right, Mr. Chair. So 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 the revenue riser that 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 Mr. Lowenthal was speaking to is is uh, has you the same consequences in terms of revenue as does the state royalty. Fees and, and, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, uh, you broke up at least maybe it was my on my end. Could you repeat? Is it the same then what we're talking about with federal land that, you know, an increase and in, in some cases like hard ride mining for the first time to talk about uh, generating royalties there? Is that we, how we come that? On, yeah, we have it on state e, land. Yeah. Is it either or then that the state can charge, but the gov the feds can't? The, the state charges on state land and uh, the federal government at this point uh, is not doing that at this point. That's my point. That's my point. So it's not like, you know, we're not doing anything uh, particularly, uh, if you pardon the pun, earth shaking. <laughs> so it well, is, I would you know, Mr. Chair, it, with what states. Arizona here does it. Mr. Chair, does it. Uh, Mr. Pennsylvania Chair, I, does it. Mr. Chair, if I may respond. No, let me yield back. I'm sorry, sir. No, Mr. Chair, I think that my point to Congresswoman Harrell was when I went down there um, after uh, uh, this administration uh, came to be and, and the concern on okay. the, uh, the, the, the permitting and drilling on federal lands, this is what I heard from her constituents that, that, that elected her to fight for this. And so that's why um, I'm I'm agreeing with her because not only am I did I hear her say it here I okay, actually I you. went to our, I went to Artesia and saw it so my support for what she is uh, re requiring on this amendment is exactly what I heard from her constituents. Thank you, and I yield back. I appreciate it, Mr. Stubborn. I uh, reclaiming my time, and uh, I don't know. I'm sure, uh, it, my point is apples to apples, oranges to oranges. You know, and uh, I appreciate your response. Uh, Anyone else wish to uh, come in on Herald number four? Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, Benson, Oregon. Sir, you're recognized. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. And of course, I support this amendment primarily because so much of my district is rural and so much of my district uh, saw the impact of these types of uh, greater good uh, activities uh, impacting local communities negatively. And so the question has always been, do we just, go well you know it's too bad collateral damage was the greater good 
or do we actually take into account the damages that will occur as a result of the types of um, ac actions and fees and, and uh, royalties that are suggested in this bill? And, and uh, th th we can't ignore the consequences that Congresswoman is bringing to our attention. We, we simply cannot. There's too many kids that are hurt and, there, and there's too many uh, families that are hurt there, and, and we, we just can't ignore it. Yet that appears to be what is happening. And it's not, that is simply not right that this, this kind of damage can be, can be so easily ignored. And I want to go back again to the increase in prices that everybody's going to pay as a result of this increase in costs, because that's what will happen. These costs will be passed on. And it's, and it's just, it's, it's not, it's not right that, that we should, uh, we should allow this to happen without, uh, without talking about it. That's why I'm so happy for her amendment. That's why I'll be supporting it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Gentlemen, yields. Anyone else wish to uh, comment on uh, Herald number four? Hearing no further debate, the question right. is on the Herald Amendment number four. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I had a comment. Mr. Westerman. I know you love to hear my comments, Mr. Chairman, so no, I'm going to keep them keep them coming. No, 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 it's it's fine. It's just a little quicker on the trigger. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> got to get this technology working better so uh you know i want to commend uh, the gentle lady for bringing this amendment again she expressed the importance of um, energy to school funding in new mexico and she's trying to protect that i'm just glad that she's able to be on the the virtual markup today to argue her point and uh you know representative graves who's dealing with a hurricane issues in louisiana he couldn't even have gotten a flight out to get up here and he's having to recharge his equipment uh, with generators and louisiana is uh, another state that's going to be uh, greatly adversely affected if this bill actually passes um, so i appreciate the gentle lady bringing this amendment it is important to school funding and on the issue of school funding uh, you know in my home state of arkansas we have this a really unique thing called private property and schools are funded on taxes on private property uh, except in some of my counties where uh, we have about 80 to 90 percent of federal land in those counties and the school systems suffer the uh, emergency services suffer uh, road building suffers because there's no revenue being generated off of these federal lands and uh, you know my heart goes out to those members who live in districts which so much of their uh, district is covered by federal land and they have to fight just to be able to uh, have an economic or have an economy there in their districts because of onerous federal regulations that are constantly trying to drive uh, jobs off of those federal lands and that's what this bill does and that's what representative harrell's trying to protect with this amendment i support the amendment and i yield back Mr. Chairman, can I this you, is Mr. Ranking Member. Can I make just a quick comment just for clarification on the amendment? Uh, if somebody would yield to you, Ma uh, Ms. Harold. Absolutely. This is this is uh, Representative Moore. I'll yield to Ms. Harold. Thank you very much, Ms. Harold. Thank you, Congressman Moore. Um, just for clarification, on in New Mexico on this federal drilling, 40% of the uh, revenue goes to ro royalties back to um, the federal government, 10% goes to reclamation, and 50% goes back to the state. And with that, I yield back. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, anyone else wish to, uh, uh, the, the time has been yield. Uh, anyone else want to comment on uh, Herald uh, number four? Amendment number four. If, here Mr. Enough, if, Mr. Chair, I do have some some letters to submit to the record. Okay. Uh, the first letter is uh, from the Western Energy Alliance, the U.S. Oil and Gas Association, uh, the International Association of Drilling Contractors, and the Energy Workforce and Technology Council. Uh, their letter opposing the bill. A standalone letter from the International Association of Drilling Contractors, their letter opposing the bill. Uh, another letter from the National um, uh, Mining Association, their letter opposing the bill. Standalone letter from the Independent Petroleum Association of America, their letter opposing the bill. And a letter from the American Petroleum Institute, 
opposing the bill. I ask to submit those to the record. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you. Uh, here, no further debate on the question. The question is on the Herald Amendment 4. Let me pause for members in favor to unmute. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Members opposed will unmute. Those opposed indicate by saying no. 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 The opinion of the chairs, the no's have it, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chair, may I please have a roll call vote when the time is right? The time is right now. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you the, the, the request for a roll call postponed, recorded vote postponed uh, as per prior agreement. Uh, Representative Harold, uh, you're recognized for amendment number five. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This amendment would ensure that the new fees and fee increases in the bill cannot go into effect if they are proven to increase energy costs for those making less than 400,000 a year. A rallying cry that we have heard over and over again from President, from this president, my Democratic colleagues in Congress is that they do not plan to raise taxes on those making less than 400,000. We know this to be a fantasy. And while the text of the bill before us today does not contain a tax directly on consumers, the crusade this bill inflicts on the oil and gas industry will have a direct effect on energy prices. We should not be surprised by this, Mr. Chairman, and as the bill before us today is nothing but a partisan wish list by my colleagues to wish, who wish to use budgetary gimmicks to eliminate millions of jobs and make American companies non-competitive with the rest of the world. I believe that instead of punishing American companies who are innovating every day to produce energy safer, more efficiently, and in an environmentally conscious way, we should be targeting the real offenders in the world, our adversaries like China, whose emissions are expected to increase exponentially over the coming decades, must be laughing at us today. Mr. Chairman, the world's largest emitters continue to get off scot-free while the United States has reduced our CO2 emissions by more than the next 12 countries combined over the last 15 years, and this committee chooses to punish those responsible for powering our nation. There is already a blueprint for the path my colleagues on this committee are trying to take us down from an energy perspective, and that is the state of California. This is a troubling thought for me because the average price of electricity in California is nearly twice that of the other 49 states. California also imports more energy than any other state and suffers frequently from energy blackouts as we saw last year. As you may ask yourself, does this result in supposed substantial environmental benefits? The answer, Mr. Chairman, is no. Over the last 10 years, California ranked 43rd in reducing CO2 emissions and has one of the worst compliance records when it comes to federal air quality standards. From over the course of today's debate, it has become clear to me that my colleagues have put their blinders on and are pushing our country headlong on an unsustainable path, a path that requires the United States to be indebted to China, Russia, and OPEC to meet our energy and mineral needs, a path that requires the American consumers to pay more for less reliable electricity, and a path that does not even accomplish what my Democrat colleagues are seeking to achieve. I ask my colleagues to stand with me and support my amendment, and I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. The gentlelady yields back. Um, anyone else wish to speak to uh, Earl Emmett Mr. Lowenthal? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I oppose this amendment because this is truly a poison pill that is designed to eventually prevent our ability to invest in our country and to build back better for all Americans. Uh, that I urge my colleagues to see what this amendment is. It is an attempt to undermine our efforts of what we're trying to do today. And I urge my colleagues to oppose the amendment. Gentlemen, to uh, speak to Harold number five. Hearing no further debate, the question is in the Herald Amendment number five. A pause for those in favor to unmute. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Members opposed, unmute. Uh, those opposed indicate by saying no. 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 Oh. 
No. The opinion of the chair, the nose have it. Uh, the nose have it and the amendment is not agreed to. Frank, can I have a roll call vote on that? A recorded Mr. vote, I mean, thank you. General lady uh, asked for a recorded vote, but it'll be postponed as per prior agreement. Uh, now let me uh, recognize Representative Harold. You're recognized for five oh. minutes. Thank well, you. Number six, excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this amendment would ensure that the new fees and fee increases in the bill cannot go into effect if they are proven to negatively affect funding for law enforcement and fire protection readiness. Each year, around $80 million in revenue from energy production in my home state goes to fund law enforcement and fire protection readiness. This funding is vital to keeping my constituents and our environment safe. Even with this funding, there are still communities in my district that are down to as little as three full-time police officers, which is not sustainable. Any reduction in funding caused by the loss of energy revenues could have dire consequences on these departments. In addition, many police departments across the nation are under attack by far left local, locally office holders, local office holders who are hell bent on defunding the police and stripping them of necessary tools to keep their communities safe. Many departments across my district are also strapped for resources because they are having to respond to the Biden border crisis that we are experiencing across our southern border. Given the fact that my district contains the entire New Mexico border with Mexico and our close proximity to El Paso, my police departments are on the front lines of this crisis. Fire protection is also an essential part of life in southern New Mexico as it is across the entire West. Earlier this summer, my district was home to one of the largest fire seasons seen fire seen so far, the Johnson fire, which burned almost 90,000 acres in the Gila National Forest. Thankfully, no civilians or firefighters were injured by the fire, but millions of dollars in resources were lost forever. New Mexico is obviously not alone as we are seeing another catastrophic fire season across much of the West. And I fear this bill will only make things worse uh, and cause more problems for our local communities. While the bill does appropriate additional funds for wildfire related programs, it does not make any of the regulatory changes needed to truly address the wildfire crisis in the West, like reforming NEPA, the Endangered Species Act, and expanding the use of categorical exclusions in areas of severe, ex severe and extreme drought. Again, I'm asking my colleagues to think about the domino effects on essential services caused by making federal lands unattainable for energy development. And I would ask my colleagues to support this amendment. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. General Lady yields back. Anybody else want to be recognized? Mr. Chairman, I wish to be recognized. Mr. Lowenthal, thank you, sir. You're recognized. You know, we've already heard this general topic, and this is just another iteration of it. Uh, and I don't think we really have to go through every single one iteration on the general topic. So I urge a, a no vote and remind people the intent uh, of, the, of the bill is to raise revenues and protect taxpayers. I urge a no vote on the amendment. Harold, number six. Ms. Westerman. Mr. Westerman, sir, you're recognized. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'll uh, uh, be the broken record again and say this is exactly why we're offering these amendments is because we are trying to protect uh, the U.S. economy. Um, we are trying to uh, put reason and, and common sense into this legislation, even though it's very much void of it. Uh, Representative Harrell's amendment is one that would uh, protect funding for law enforcement and fire protection readiness. We're seeing record wildfires again uh, this year. Most of these occur in rural areas, but as many of us all know too well, fires don't always stay out of our communities. And we have seen haunting images of whole towns devastated by fire. Um, I can't imagine people wanting to uh, support a bill that would cut funding for fire protection readiness. And if that's not what this bill is going to do, then why would this amendment hurt to be in it? Just like the previous amendment that was protecting 
uh, funding for education. If this bill wasn't going to hurt funding for education, why not put the provision in it and put sideboards on the bill? I think the reason is, is because um, those supporting the bill know full well that it's going to cut funding to rural communities. It's going to cut funding to schools. It's going to cut funding to uh, law enforcement and, and fire protection. So if you really believe that the bill is going to be good, I don't see why putting these sideboards on the bill would hurt. I support the gentlelady's amendment and I yield back. Gentleman yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized on Herald Amendment number six? Mr. Chair, I'd like to be recognized. The recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, th this is the false premise that we continue to hear that all of this wonderful legislation that is contained within this bill is going to generate more revenue for the people across this nation. And it's just false. It is not theory anymore. It has been played out as an absolute fact by raising the fees, by raising the, the uh, uh, amounts that our producers are having to pay. This is going to reduce the amount of revenue that is generated. And what the representative from New Mexico is just trying to do is protect her taxpayers. And I appreciate that. She's trying to protect my taxpayers because once that revenue goes down, and we don't receive it in our communities, then the individual communities are going to have to raise their tax rates to make sure that they pay their police force, their law enforcement to protect their communities, their fire services to protect their communities. And this is just a, a backdoor way that that the Democrats are using to, to force this, this uh, payment back onto the taxpayers without them having any control over it taking place. So if, if you truly believe that is going to increase the revenue, it's really going to increase the net revenue that we are going to generate, then all of us, let's support this, this uh, amendment for Representative Harrell and move down the line. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, yield back. Anyone else wish to uh... Mr. Chair, on number six. Mr. Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, may I? Uh, Mr. Stauber, you're recognized. Yeah. Before I take uh, any more of your questions, Mr. Chair, I do want to uh, congratulate my colleague from New Mexico uh, on this. Uh, in particular, it was uh, described uh, by one of my colleagues, uh, Mr. Rosendale, if, if it's not going to deduct uh, investments in our police and fire, then then allow it to to, to go forward um, it's extremely important that uh, we uh, we uh, invest in, in 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 police and fire especially during these times as we know uh, some crime rates are, are going up in, in many of the cities so I, I think that it makes all the sense in the world we support it um, and if it's not going to uh, reduce investment in the police and fire then it's not going to have any necessarily any impact on the bill if, if what you are saying is true and i yield back Gentlemen, yields. Anyone else wish to address Herald Amendment number six? If not, hearing no further debate, the question is on the Herald Amendment number six. Those in favor, please unmute and indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, unmute and indicate by saying no. 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 And the opinion of the chair is the no's have it. The no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. And I'm assuming, Ms. Harold, that you would want a recorded vote. Yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, and we will postpone the, the Herald Amendment number six uh, as agreed to. Uh, let me uh, let me just indicate right now that the, at the behest of others other than myself, but I did include myself at this behest. Uh, we're taking about a 15-minute recess after which we take up the two remaining amendments from. Uh, from Representative Harold and continue with the uh, through the amendment uh, submissions uh, with uh, and then we'll come back. So we're in the recess for 15 minutes. Thank you.
Uh, amendment number 31. You'll recognize uh, representative. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is a simple amendment that would give Congress back control over our domestic energy production on federal lands and waters. The leasing ban that was put into place by the Biden administration earlier this year was done without any input from Congress or relevant stakeholders, which is why a federal judge issued a temporary injunction earlier this summer. Finally, the administration is beginning to comply with the order by starting the leasing process, but still has not scheduled any lease sales this year. This means both states and the federal government have and will lose out on crucial revenues to pay for essential services. The leasing ban has also set back important long-term planning for energy producers and has created great uncertainty for, me, for my constituents in Southern New Mexico. Energy companies in my district plan for years in advance on where and how they will produce energy. Creating a seemingly never-ending leasing ban puts my state in an inevitable position as over half of our oil and gas production occurs on federal lands. This amendment also deals with the importance of domestically producing critical minerals and other important mineral materials. The bills before us today are an attack on domestic mining jobs and our domestic mining industry. And I struggle to see how my colleagues believe that unilaterally canceling the largest copper mine mining project in the country and making the largest domestic uranium deposit squares with the ambition to decarbonize the energy grid when we know that to build thousands of solar panels, wind turbines and electric vehicles that we all envision or that my colleagues envision, millions of tons of critical minerals will be needed. And, that just, and that's just to fulfill our domestic needs. Over time, the needs of developing countries will far exceed our own. Adopting these proposals only serves one purpose, appeasing radical environmental groups and lining the po pockets of Chinese communists, of the Chinese Communist Party, who will exploit these proposals to gain a further grip on the global mineral supply chain. Instead of taking the approach of attacking vital domestic industries like my colleagues are doing today, we should be empowering American workers to produce American energy and minerals. We as a nation have the ability to supply the world with affordable, reliable, and environmentally conscious energy resources. It is obvious to me, however, that both this committee and the administration are readopting a philosophy that we should be reliant on other nations and in many cases our, our adversaries to meet our energy needs. This is confusing because considering that American produced energy is the cheapest, cleanest and safest in the world, I can't understand how this makes sense for the committee to move forward with this bill. I'm asking my colleagues to join me in standing up for American jobs and the American energy industry that's uh, powering America right now. Mr. Chairman, I would ask for everybody to support this amendment and with that, I yield back. Thank you, uh, Representative. Uh, let me recognize myself in opposition to your amendment. Uh, this amendment essentially prohibits the president from preventing new oil and gas leases or from withdrawing certain from certain federal withdrawing certain federal lands. This limitation does not address the investments included under this title. It would undermine existing law in a manner that is harmful to the climate and the environment. Most importantly, it contains the poison pill provisions that would prevent our ability to invest in our country and build back better for all Americans. I strongly urge my colleagues to oppose the amendment and I yield back. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Hearing no further debate, the question is on the Herald Amendment number 31. I uh, will pause so that members in favor can unmute. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Members opposed can unmute. All those opposed indicate by saying no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Ms. Harold, I'm assuming that is a roll call you request. You will request. Yes, thank you. And based on prior agreement that would uh, postponed. Uh, the next is uh, Again, Representative Harold, you are recognized for five minutes on uh, your amendment number 32. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment is aimed at providing direct relief to middle class Americans by granting a temporary federal gas tax holiday for the next six months or until the federal public health emergency order related to COVID-19 expires or whichever is longer. 
For the last eight months, our constituents have had to toil under infl inflammatory policies of the Biden administration, which have been aided and abetted by this Congress. Inflation is at levels not seen in over a decade, and it shows no sign of slowing down anytime soon, as in the coming weeks, we as a Congress are going to be asked to vote on at least $3.5 trillion in new spending. This new spending will only continue to drive up inflation and put additional pressure on consumers and businesses. Possibly the highest profile of the inflammatory pressures faced by consumers has been skyrocketing gas prices around the country. In fact, in some states, gas prices have increased 100% compared to where they were just one year ago. In addition, our energy infrastructure will also be tested in the coming weeks following the destruction caused by Hurricane Ida in Louisiana and the broader Gulf, Co Gulf of Mexico region, which has shut down offshore production, refining capacity, and pipelines, which will inevitably lead to higher gas prices for our constituents. In rural districts like mine, where my constituents must drive long distances to get to town for work or to go to the grocery store, high gas prices mean they have less money to spend on other essential needs. This will have a domino effect across many other businesses and hurt overall economic activity at a time when we should be stimulating economic growth. Couple this with the rising energy costs that have, that have and will flow from this committee's and the Biden administration's lack of concern for American energy security, our constituents will be begin to feel the pinch more than before. Again, I say to my colleagues, there are many communities around my district and around the country that are still struggling to recover from the dire days of the pandemic. Help wanted signs still dot main streets across the country because the many factors, including the heavy hand of government pretending a full reopening of our economy. Providing a targeted direct relief to a vast majority of Americans will help spur growth and help guide our constituents through what could be some of the most difficult weeks ahead. I ask my colleagues to support this amendment. And Mr. Chairman, you're going to appreciate me for this. I will not be asking for a recorded vote on this amendment. I yield back. Thank you, Representative. Uh, Anyone wish to be uh, recognized in opposition to the this, amendment? Yeah, this is Congressman Lowenthal. I wish to be recognized, and I thank the so recognized. author. So recognized, sir. Thank you, and I thank the author for not wanting to have a recorded vote on this. Um, but this, this amendment is just another iteration of what we've already heard, and it's really an attempt to undermine the intent of why we're here, the provisions in question, which is to raise revenue and protect taxpayers. I urge a no vote and I oppose the amendment. Gentleman yields back. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Hearing no further debate, the question is on Herald Amendment number 32. Members in, in favor, please unmute and indicate by saying aye. 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 Members opposed, please unmute. Indicate by saying no. 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 In the opinion of the chairs, the noes have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. And uh, we now move to the next. The next amendment is designated uh, Bobert number two. Representative Bobert, you are recognized for five minutes. Representative Bobert, you're recognized for five minutes to on your amendment number Thank two. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. This amendment strikes the language concerning royalties on all extracted methane on federal lands and on outer continental shelf. The fact is, as a result of American private sector innovation, methane emissions, including venting and flaring, have decreased significantly over the past few decades. Even as energy production has gone up, today, U.S. emissions are 15% lower than they were in 1990. Currently, less than 1% of natural gas is flared in the United States. And I urge my colleagues to support this common sense amendment. 
Thank you, and I yield back. Gentlelady yields back. Anybody wish to be recognized on Representative Bobert's amendment number two? Hearing uh, no further debate, the question is on the Bobert amendment. I will pause so the members in favor can unmute. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Members uh, opposed can unmute. I will pause so the members opposed can unmute. All those opposed say no. 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 The opinion of the chair, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman, I would like a recorded vote. The gentlelady has asked for a recorded vote that is postponed uh, as per prior agreement. And now, uh, Representative Bobert, recognized for your amendment number three, five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Let's see. Did it... Okay, sorry about that. This okay. amendment limits section 7804 of the bill taking effect while President Biden's harmful executive order 14008 remains in place until Bureau of Land Management holds quarterly lease sales in each state where eligible lands are available, like my state of Colorado. The pause on new oil and natural gas leases on public lands or in offshore's waters pending comprehensive reviews has slowed down the damage, the damaged future energy extraction on federal lands. It creates uncertainty for businesses and is undermining American energy independence, which was achieved by the Trump administration. Democrats need to stop prioritizing radical out of touch environmentalist policies whose sole goal is destroying the fossil fuel industry. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment. He yields back. Anyone and wish to? Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Lowenthal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is just another one of the poison pills. That was That's designed to uh, prevent our ability to invest in our country and to build back better for all Americans. It just undermines why we're here today. It's irrelevant to the actual bill itself. And I urge my colleagues to oppose this amendment. Gentlemen, gentleman yields back. Anyone else wish to uh, uh, any discuss further discussion on this amendment? Number three. Westerman. Mr. Westerman. I thought you were probably missing me commenting there. I gave you a little break, Mr. Chairman, but I'm back. And uh, back on an important <laughs> amendment that's gentle ladies offered. Um, this amendment would prevent the onerous and arbitrary fee and royalty increases on oil and gas production from taking effect until the Department of the Interior completely reinstates the onshore leasing program and as uh, we're well aware, the president tried to stop this through executive order. And then uh, we were told, uh, you know, even though the president did this in his first week in office, the Department of Interior assured us this was only a temporary pause and that we would see a report on the leasing program in early summer. Well, here it is September. Uh, the courts have actually stepped in and placed an injunction on the leasing ban but we've yet to see the department's leasing report and certain uncertainty over the secretary's plans for the leasing program continues. Meanwhile, we're seeing gas prices increase and the president begging OPEC to increase production. Um, this is a common sense amendment. It would require the administration to do what the law says they're supposed to do. And again, I encourage a uh, support for this amendment. Now you'll back. Anyone, uh, anyone else? Uh, gentleman yields. Uh, hearing no further debate, the question is on Bobert Amendment Number Three. Pause so the members in favor can unmute and please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Members opposed, please uh, unmute and indicate by saying no. 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 
I'm the opinion of the chairs and those have it and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman, I would like to request yeah. a recorded vote. Uh, gentlewoman has requested a recorded vote in amendment number three and that uh, uh, with prior, based on going with prior notification that is postponed. Uh, uh, we now have uh, Representative Bobert, you have your amendment number four and you have five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a very simple amendment. It prevents section 70804 of having any force or effect until the Secretary of Interior consults with the Secretary of Energy and determines section uh, 7804 will not result in increased gas prices. Uh, I, you know, I'm sure we're all really grateful for saving 16 cents on our uh, 4th of July uh, cookout, but uh, we certainly would like the gas, gas prices to go down. Before we start putting uh, even more pressure on the middle class, Americans struggling to fill up their gas tank and pay their sky high energy bills, uh, we should certainly ensure that any new policy does not raise the price of gas. Uh, this is a common sense amendment. And, uh, that protects uh, middle class workers and uh, and middle class uh, the middle class working uh, Americans. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment. Thank you, General Lady Yields. And uh, let me ask uh, Con anybody w uh, wish to. Uh, yes, I wish recognize. to be recognized, Mr. Chair. Well, recognized, sir. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, this is just another attempt to undermine uh, the uh, provisions of the bill, which in general, uh, what we're talking about is raising revenues, which will enable us to protect taxpayers. We've already discussed this general topic. It's just another iteration on that. Uh, and I don't believe we need to elaborate on this subject any further. I urge a no vote. Mr. Oddsby. Anyone else wish to be recognized on um, uh, Bobert Amendment Number Four? Rosendale. Mr. Rosendale, you're recognized, sir, for five minutes. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Uh, I see this in a different light. I see this as a, a the uh, Republicans' effort to make sure that we do not raise taxes on anyone making less than four hundred thousand dollars a year, as the Democrats have promised and professed that anything they do is going to uh, uphold but they continue to insert these provisions that raise up fees and taxes everywhere else in backdoor ways so that everyone, everyone, I don't care if you're making $15,000 a year is going to have higher taxes, whether that's in the form of your bread, milk and eggs, just inflation and, and inflation is a tax. Let's get real, much less the cost of your energy. And when the cost of energy goes up, it hits those on the lower end of the, the income scale harder than anybody else. So I would certainly ask everyone to uh, support this legislation and with that, and with this uh, amendment. And with that, Mr. Chair, I would yield back. Thank you. Gentleman Yields, anyone else wish to uh, speak to Bobert number four amendment? Hearing no further debate, the question is on the Boburn Amendment number four. Um, I will pause so members in favor can unmute. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, unmute. Please indicate by saying no. 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 The opinion of the chair, the no's have it. The no's have it and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman, I would request a recorded vote. General Lady has requested a recorded vote and that is based on prior agreement, postponed. Uh, Representative Bo Bobert, you are now recognized for five minutes to uh, for your amendment number five. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment uh, prevents section 7804 um, of having any force or effect until the Secretary of Labor assesses the impacts it will have on employment, including, including job losses and wage rates for any projected job loss. It requires that the Secretary of Labor submit the findings of this report to the House Committee on Natural Resources and the Senate Energy and Natural Resources. Uh, every Democrat, I certainly would hope, 
uh, would vote for this fact finding report. Um, accountability has certainly been um, a theme that we have all been demanding for, and I think that this provides excellent oversight and um, I urge uh, a yes vote in support of this amendment. I yield back. Thank you. Thank you. General Lady Yields, uh, anyone need to be, wants to be recognized in this amendment? Yes, I wish to be recognized. Mr. Lowenthal, sir, you are recognized. Uh, again, this is the, a broken record. We've already discussed this, this issue. This is just another iteration, which just changes some of the words in the attempt to make sure that this bill does not go into effect uh, and taxpayers are not protected. Uh, I don't think we need to elaborate on the subject any further. It's a continuation of the multitude of, of amendments that the Republicans have already offered. I urge a no vote and I yield back my time. Thank you very much. Uh, gentleman yields. Anyone else wish to be recognized on Bobert number five? Hearing no further debate, the question is on the Bobert amendment. Members in favor, please unmute and indicate by saying aye. 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 Members opposed, please, please unmute and indicate by saying no. 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 Opinion of the chair, the no's have it, the no's have it in the uh, amendment is not agreed to. And Mr. Chairman, I would like to request a recorded vote. The general lady is uh, requested a recording vote and as per prior agreement, uh, postponed. Uh, the next amendment is designated as Carl number one. Uh, Representative Carl, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my amendment is, is very simple. It gets rid of the increased royalty rates and all these fees that are going along with, with the, we're trying to tax on to the energy company who operate in the Gulf. Yes, Jim. we all know what this really is about is to ban drilling in federal waters because the fees are designed to make drilling unprofitable for companies who operate in the Gulf. I wish my colleagues on the other side of the aisle realize this does nothing to lower global greenhouse gas emissions. It just makes it more dependent on foreign oil while eliminating thousands of American jobs in the process. It does not take a rocket scientist to figure out, to know all these fees will trickle down to the customers. We see that right now, Mr. Chairman. Right now, our, our fuel prices are as high, Labor Day prices. I just read an article that says they are, uh, they haven't been this high since 2014. 2014, so that's uh, seven years, uh, and we've got an all-time high. And the whole time, President Biden is encouraging OPEC to pump more oil. And that simply is to cover cover up that, that trail. The thing that, that, that disturbs me the most, what we're gonna see, especially coming out of the Gulf, is natural gas. Natural gas is one component that uh, comes out of my part of the world. And it's gonna show up at the winter time when the folks start getting those bills. I spoke earlier about the sinking ship, the Titanic mentality that I feel like the Democrat party's got right now. And this is going to be a larger uh, hole in this vessel than what they're, they're planning on. These fees, they jeopardize $250 million in funding for conservative projects in, my, in our Gulf states. And Alabama will use this money to restore our shorelines, build bike trails, boat ramps, protecting wildlife habitat. We also have to turn down good projects each year because we don't have enough money. And with this, these fees, you're going to, you're going to force people, force companies to get out of the, the oil and, and gas business. If you vote no on this amendment, you're voting to eliminate that conservative, that conservation funding that I so badly need in my district. With that, I encourage everyone to support this amendment and I yield back. Thank you, sir. Chairman Yields, thank you. Anyone else wish to uh, uh, to be recognized on uh, amendment number one by Mr. Carl? 
Hearing no further debate, the question is on the Carl Amendment. I will pause so the members in favor can unmute and indicate by saying aye. 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 Members uh, opposed can unmute and indicate by saying no. 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 Opinion of the chair, the no's have it, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman, could I get a recorded vote on that, please? Absolutely requested. The vote will be postponed pursuant to the prior announcement. Thank uh, you. Now, Mr. Uh, Representative Carl, you are again recognized for five minutes for uh, Carl Amendment Number Two, sir. Thank you, sir. This amendment would uh, condition the royalty rates increase and the new fees in the bill on the Interior Department rescheduling lease sale 257 and continue to hold the lease sales in accordance to the law. In other words, if you want to make make it more expensive to drill in the Gulf, you'd better have lease sales first and comply with the court's decision that found the moratorium illegal. Illegal it found the moratorium. So we need to be moving on these leases. The Interior Department has said they will comply with the injunction, the schedule of the schedule in the lease uh, cell of uh, 257. However, the final notice of the cell has not been published yet. So we, we will believe it when we see it. Uh, we've talked about this before. We talked about it when we had the director with us. Uh, we've got to get moving on these leases and increasing these fees but for the for the sake of shutting down these these oil leases is very unfair to the to the American people, and I give my time back. Gentleman yields. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion on Amendment Number Two, Mr. Chair? Representative Carl. Yes. Mr. Chair Stauber, Minnesota. Mr. Stauber, you you are recognized, sir. Thank you. Uh, real quick, uh, you know, Interior Secretary Hallen said. Uh, quotes in early uh, in early summer they would release their report on resuming oil and gas leasing as the court ordered mr chair do you consider september 2nd to be early summer <clears throat> you further debate on the uh, amendment number two by mr carl Hearing no further debate, the question is on the Carl Amendment number two. I'll pause so members in favor can unmute. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those aye. opposed indicate. Thank you. All those opposed indicate by saying no. 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 Any of the chair, the no's have it. The no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Mr. Chairman, a recorded vote, please. Uh, a recorded vote is, uh, has been requested and ordered. This vote will be postponed pursuant to prior Thank agreement. Thank you. The next amendment is designated Young Number One. I understand that Representative Stauber will be offering it on the behalf, on its behalf by uh, UC. Mr. Stauber, yes. you recognized for five minutes on Mr. Young's Amendment Number One, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I offer this amendment today on behalf of the Dean of the House, Don Young, uh, who is unable to join us today. Uh, this uh, strike amendment removes two harmful provisions contained in this reconciliation bill. First, it removes the short-sighted repeal of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge Leasing Program. And second, it removes the bill's gutting of the National Petroleum Reserve Alaska Program. Just like any other project nationwide, I respect the member that represents the area. In this case, Mr. Young has again and again supported the oil development program in his district, the great state of Alaska, and I unequivocally support him and his constituents' wishes. Repealing ANWR alone will cost this country $40 million, and that's not counting investment in communities on the North Slope that need it the most. Matthew Rexford, tribal administrator for Kaktovik, which is the only community in Anwar, asks this. Don't we get a say in whether oil can be developed on our land so we can have an economy? End quote. I stand with Mr. Rexford and the uh, Kaktovik, and I know my Republican colleagues do too. Further, taking development of NPRA offline would 
be equally as short-sighted. Just the other day, there are reports of another massive oil find to complement the already sizable resources. Meanwhile, the majority's attack on responsible energy development could not have come at a worse time for American families. Instead of using our resources, this committee is trying to take more domestic oil resources away when grass prices are soaring and Americans' overall cost of living keeps going up. Just a few weeks ago, the Biden administration requested and begged OPEC to pump more oil. Yes, Mr. Chair, this is the same Biden administration that banned oil and gas development on federal lands, had their ban overturned, and now are dragging their feet in complying with the law. It has become abundantly clear that Democrats in D.C. and their far-left allies prefer oil pumped by Saudi Arabians, Algerians, Venezuelans, Iranians, and Libyans, and not by Alaskans, who need this investment and want to provide their country with the resources that she needs. Then they had the nerve to ask OPEC for more oil to keep prices down. If greenhouse gas emission reductions are truly the goal here, Mr. Chair, then we should be pumping oil out of Alaska and not Venezuela. I urge adoption of this amendment and I yield back. Gentleman yields uh, and uh, on, on the young amendment number one, any further discussion on the amendment? We'll yes, Mr. Chair. Chair. Mr. H Chairman Huffman, you're recognized, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And uh, the committee uh, bill in print, uh, of course, would repeal the requirement that the Interior Department hold an oil and gas lease sale in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. This is something congressional Republicans enacted as part of their 2017 tax cut legislation. It happened through budget reconciliation. And for decades, uh, our friends across the aisle and their fossil fuel friends uh, have fought to open the Arctic Refuge to drilling under this pretense that the abundance of oil in the Arctic Refuge would generate enormous profits for Americans and support uh, U.S. energy independence. In 2017, the CBO somehow was convinced to estimate that uh, this provision, this drilling provision in the refuge would generate over a billion dollars in federal revenues within a decade. And Republicans, of course, use this to help offset a portion of their tax giveaways to corporations and the super wealthy. But um, the evidence is now in. Uh, and it turns out that this uh, was all smoke and mirrors. On January 6th, which was uh, a rotten day uh, in many ways, the uh, Bureau of Land Management announced the results of a lease sale in the Arctic Refuge, and it was a total flop. The government uh, would bring in under this lease sale just $12 million. Only half of that would go to U.S. taxpayers, and that is barely 1% of the projected revenue that Republicans uh, sold to the American people and to the CBO uh, back in 2017. And that is because drilling in the Arctic Refuge is bad business and it's a bad deal for taxpayers. So this is for a number of reasons, the remote nature of the refuge, but also the growing climate awareness out there, which has made drilling in the coastal plain of this pristine Arctic Refuge an expensive risk that most people believe is not worth taking. Turns out most of the world is more interested in limiting climate pollution rather than pillaging the Arctic refuge. Um, we know that the financial risks are so clear that a majority of banks in the United States and Canada won't touch this. And they've announced that they won't be uh, parties in any way to funding of oil and gas development in the Arctic refuge. The banks know it, major oil companies know it, Drilling in the refuge just doesn't make financial sense and isn't worth the risks. Um, so this was a bad decision back in 2017. CBO now forecasts that repealing this provision, which is what we're proposing to do, uh, will cost between 40 and 50 million over the next decade. This backs up essentially what Democrats have been saying all along, uh, that there's little interest in drilling in the refuge and it is a mistake and a risky financial decision that we can and should undo. So I urge all of my colleagues to vote no uh, on this amendment and to vote yes, of course, on the underlying bill. And I yield back. Gentleman yields. Uh, anyone else? Uh, 
want to discuss uh, the Young Amendment number one? Who seeks recognition? Hearing no further debate. Westerman. Mr. Westerman, you're recognized, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I uh, do support this amendment that's offered by my colleague, the Dean of the House, uh, Congressman Don Young. I had a chance to visit Alaska a few weeks ago and speak to some of the people that would be affected um, by what's in the, the Democrats bill. Uh, as this amendment would strike provisions aimed at restricting energy development uh, in Representative Young's home state of Alaska. Uh, specifically, the provisions would repeal language passed into law in the 115th Congress authorizing energy development in the 1002 area of Amwar. It would also remove the Secretary's discretion to temporarily alter royalty rates to promote development when it is needed. Uh, these provisions that are in the underlying bill send the message to the people of Alaska and the Alaska delegation that they are not allowed to have their say in how they manage their natural resources and create jobs in their home state. Native communities in Alaska have stated their support for resource development uh, on the North Slope, noting the benefits of job creation and access to transportation, health care, and public services. But this bill says their voices must not uh, or must take a back seat to the preferences of the environmentalists in San Francisco and DC. And if there's not interest in developing these lands, uh, as my colleague, Mr. Huffman said, then they wouldn't be developed. But the people of Alaska should have the right to develop them if they want to. Uh, I wanna also make note to my colleagues that the federal government does not own the resources they aim to restrict in the 1002 area. While the lands of the uh, Arctic National Wildlife Refuge are federally managed under the Fish and Wildlife Service. The mineral rights in question are owned by Native Alaskans who have lived there for millennia. The people of the native village of Katovic live the closest to the 1002 area, and they are the only village in the coastal plain. Last Congress, two tribal members, or two tribal leaders, flew all the way from Katovic to DC to testify to this committee against the same language as included in the underlying bill today. They testified before our committee saying, we will not become conservation refugees. We do not approve of your efforts to turn our homeland into one giant national park, which would literally guarantee us a fate with no economy, no jobs, reduced subsistence, and no hope for the future of our people. The citizens of Kaktovik are directly impacted by decisions made by Congress regarding the use of this land. We need to respect their right to develop their resources. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment and I yield back. Gentlemen yields and anyone else wish to um, be recognized in discussion on this amendment? Tiffany. No further debate. The question is on the Young Amendment uh, number one, and I a pause so that those in favor can uh, unmute and indicate their support by saying aye. 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 Those opposed uh, indicate their opposition by saying no. 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 And the opinion of the chair of the nose have it. The amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. The Dean of the House would request a vote, recorded vote. Absolutely. Uh, the, the recorded vote has been requested and the vote will be postponed pursuant to my the prior announcement. And uh, the next amendment is this. Uh, Representative Tiffany, you have the next amendment designated as number one. Sir, you're recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this amendment is simple and straightforward. It simply says that none of the funds expended as part of this act may be used to construct, finance, or maintain any renewable energy project with materials or labor sourced from communist China or Afghanistan. We know that about one third to one half of the polysilicon material used to make the world's solar panels come from Xinjiang. We know that Xinjiang Goldwyn is among the China's largest wind turbine manufacturers and has deep links to the Chinese Communist Party. We know that the Chinese Communist regime is using forced labor 
and operating concentra concentration camps in Xinjiang that hold at least a million people against their will. We know that the State Department has described what's happening in Xinjiang as a genocide. We know that Afghanistan, which is home to vast lithium deposits, has now fallen into the hands of the Taliban. We know that the Taliban is a radical terrorist group that has a decade-long track record of brutality, torture, and enabling attacks against the United States and our personnel. What the majority is trying to do with this package is already an insult to American taxpayers, asking them to finance a Chinese Communist Party that is carrying out a genocide and enriching the same Taliban that provided a safe haven for those who planned the 9-11 attacks to boot would add insult to that injury. If you support, uh, if you want to stop slave labor, you'll support this amendment. If you want to stop funding terror, you're going to vote for this amendment. Or if you believe it's build back China, then you're going to oppose this amendment. And that's what we've consistently been seeing here. Are we going to continue to support communist China? As I stated earlier, we have seen some of the major corporate environmental groups give China a pass, the communist Chinese government a pass. And they have publicly said it, that, hey, let's not go too tough on China when we've made strides in terms of greenhouse gases and um, limiting the amount of emissions that we put into the environment in America for decades. The communist Chinese government keeps building coal-fired plants, keeps polluting the earth, yet the major environmental groups, what do they do? They sit on the sidelines and they simply criticize America, blame America first and give communist China a pass. I sought to be acknowledged on the last amendment that was put forward and I did not receive acknowledgement to be able to speak. So I'm gonna take a minute to say what I wanted to in regards to that. It was said by the gentleman in California, this is just tax breaks for the super wealthy. Are you referring, in regards to the oil leasing in Alaska, are you referring to Tom Steyer? Or are you referring to the ultra-rich environmental groups that are headquartered in San Francisco and in Washington, D.C., that dictate policy to us, that we don't know exactly where they're getting their money from? Some of them, it appears, getting money from countries that are hostile to us. But they are the super wealthy. They're the ones that are being funded. In the meantime, when people seeking that $80,000 a year job in northern Minnesota and Representative Stauber's district, or out in New Mexico in Representative Harrell's district, it said no to them. You are protecting the super wealthy that fund the major environmental groups, and we all know the shtick is up. It's average Americans that benefit from us having uh, uh, being energy independent, and we're already seeing the impact. My home, where we use propane, like about a third of the people in the 7th Congressional District, we are paying a buck 50 a gallon for our propane this year. At this time last year, we were paying 80 cents a gallon. You are going to raise the heating costs for the average person from 500 to to $1,000 this year because the Biden administration and Democrats have chosen that they're going to beg OPEC for more oil rather than making America energy independent. I urge people to support this. Do you stand against terror? Do you stand against the communist government of China or not? This is your test right now. I hope you'll vote for this amendment. And I yield back. Gentleman yields. Uh, one uh, else wish to, uh, to speak to the amendment and Seeks recognition. Yeah, I wish to seek recognition. Mr. Lowenthal, Mr. Chairman, you're recognized. Well, you know, we've already discussed the general topic of this amendment frequently. This is the same amendment with slightly different words. Uh, and I don't think we need to elaborate on the subject any further. I urge a no vote and I yield back my time. Gentlemen, yields. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Westerman. Westerman. Mr. Westerman, sir, you're recognized. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, you know, my friend, Mr. Lowenthal makes the point that we've talked about these issues before. We're going to continue talking about them. And uh, it appears this uh, markup is going to go on for quite some time. And we're going to talk about these issues over and over and over because the ramifications of this bill are so negative uh, towards our country. That's why I support the amendment by Mr. Tiffany and all the other amendments that we've uh, talked about. And just to remind everybody again, this bill that we're having such discussion about is less than 1%, less than 1% of the three and a half trillion that the majority party uh, with the help of the administration is trying to push through on American citizens. A tiny sliver of the three and a half trillion is what we're marking up in a $32 billion bill that again is more than the state budgets of 27 different states. Within the last hour, there was an opinion piece that came out in the Wall Street Journal that says the title of it is why I won't support spending another 3.5 trillion amid inflation, debt, and the inevitability of a future crisis, Congress needs to take a strategic pause. That sounds familiar. Reading from this opinion, I quote, an overheating economy has imposed a costly inflation tax on every middle and working class American. At 28.7 trillion and growing, the nation's debt has reached record levels. Over the past 18 months, we've spent more than $5 trillion responding to the coronavirus pandemic. Now, Democratic congressional leaders propose to pass the largest single spending bill in history with no regard to rising inflation, crippling debt, the inevitability of future crises. Ignoring the fiscal consequences of our policy choices will create a disastrous future for the next generation of Americans. You may wonder what Republican wrote that. Well, it wasn't a Republican, it was Senator Joe Manchin. Just came out in the last hour in the Wall Street Journal. I'm glad he understands what's going on here. I'm glad he's taking that stand, that he cares about our country, that he cares about crippling debt, and that all the bad things we've talked about in here, again, are less than 1% of this total $3.5 trillion spending bill. Uh, I would like to submit this opinion piece from the Wall Street Journal by Senator Manchin for the record. Is that objection so ordered? Mr. Chair? I support the amendment and I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Who seeks recognition? Mr. Chair, uh, Stauber, Minnesota. Mr. Stauber, sir. Mr. Chair, I'd like to yield my time to Representative Tiffany. Mr. Tiffany, you're recognized. Uh, thank you to the gentleman from Minnesota for yielding. Um, uh, the same old thing, repeating uh, many similar themes here is what the charge was made by the gentleman from California just a minute ago. Um, guilty as charged. Um, yes, this is the same old theme. You seek to um, undermine America and American energy independence, and it is all about job security, economic security, and national security. You're undermining them with the bill that is before us. And so we are going to continue to bring these up because it is so important. And you know why we continue to bring them up? Because our constituents bring them up to us time after time. They repeat to us in a variety of ways. Why are you guys going down this path? Why am I paying a buck 50 for propane right now a gallon when I was paying 80 cents a gallon last year? Why is there a three rather than a two at the start of the reader board on all of these gas stations that we see around the state of Wisconsin? Why is that? They ask us that question every day. So um, is it uh, to a certain extent repetitious? Yes, it is, because that's what the American people are saying right now. What direction are you people going in? This is absolutely craziness. And then when they find out that Afghanistan has a huge amount of lithium and other minerals that the Chinese, um, that they lust for, and that the wind turbines and the solar panels are all coming to America, or many of them are coming to America from the Chinese, making us more dependent on them. That's just crazy in most people's minds. So you darn right, we're gonna keep bringing up amendments and questioning what is before us today because it's taking America in the wrong direction. I yield back. 
to I yield back to the gentleman from Minnesota. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. In, in just a couple of minutes I have left, I just want to uh, state that I support uh, Representative Tiffany's uh, uh, amendment prohibiting renewables to be purchased uh, by our government from uh, China or Afghanistan, uh, understanding that it is, it is a, about American jobs, energy and mining uh, dominance uh, for us is what we need, good paying jobs and secure our dependency. Uh, as I said earlier, in the palm of our own hands and not relying on any other foreign adversarial nation. And I yield back. Thank you very much. Gentleman yields, anyone else? And and and, and my uh, recognize myself. The, I understand completely the, 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 the decisions that are before us as a committee and before the House of Representatives and the Senate going forward are historic and monumental. There's no question about it. And 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 in our jurisdiction, whether it's 1% or 2%, uh, those are the bipartisan instructions that came from the resolution from the Senate. We're doing our job. And and, uh, and, and the job that we're doing is, is simply this. We have a responsibility and our side to take us forward, to look at the future. And, and, and then that's part of the debate as well. But the debate today is about the instructions we've received, uh, the, the caps that we received on, on, on what our jurisdiction was and the ne revenue raisers. That is where we're going and that's what's going to the, uh, to the Senate. Uh, I'm not worried about opinions at this point. I'm worried about us doing our job and uh, in terms of what Senate senators feel or don't feel. So uh, I, I, I'm not going to argue the, the, the amendment. I'm just telling you, yeah, I think all of us and, and and, and the Democrats in this committee fully understand the monumental and historic role that we're playing uh, with this reconciliation, absolutely. And so uh, we're gonna stay here as long as it takes. So uh, this is not gonna be won by attrition and it's not gonna be won by sabotage. It's gonna be won by, at the end of the day, moving this agenda item forward so we can deal with the Senate. Uh, with that, is there anyone else who wishes to be recognized? Hearing no one, uh, no further debate. The question is on the Tiffany Amendment number one. Those in favor, please unmute and indicate by saying aye. Ms. Harold votes yes. Aye. 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 All those opposed, uh, unmute and indicate by saying no. 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 The opinion of the chair, the no's have it, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. A uh, roll call will be requested on that. Thanks, Mr. Tiffany is requesting a roll call and uh and a recorded vote will so ordered and the vote will be postponed pursuant to the prior announcement uh representative gonzalez colon you have the next amendment designated number one and uh general lady is recognized for five minutes thank you mr chairman uh the committee print we're considering today includes a portion of hr 1689 the offshore win for territories act this is a bipartisan legislation uh, that I was proud to introduce, and it will study and is feasible, authorize offshore wind energy development in federal waters adjacent to Puerto Rico and the rest of the U.S. territories. Unfortunately, the committee print language does not include my bill's revenue sharing and coral reef conservation provisions. My amendment will address this exclusion. It adds language included in my bill to ensure each territory receive a portion of royalty payments made to the federal government by offshore wind developers. Territories will receive 37.5% of qualifying revenues, which is similar to the revenue sharing structure established for the Gulf Coast states under the Gulf of Mexico Energy Security Act. Uh, my amendment, just like the Offshore Wind for Territories Act does, will also direct that 12.5% of the revenues be deposited into a coral reef conservation fund, providing additional dedicated funding for coral reef conservation efforts at not additional cost to the American taxpayer. I offer a similar amendment during our last committee markup, and I'd like to briefly address some of the arguments raised against at, uh, at the time. First, it was mentioned that currently no states enjoy enjoys the revenue sharing structure for offshore wind that my amendment and bill will establish for the territories. However, this doesn't prevent or preclude 
the committee or Congress from adopting the proposal. In fact, this committee has twice supported the revenue sharing structure established uh, in the Offshore Wind for Territories Act, both in 2018 under the Republican control and in 2019 under the Democratic control. So we passed this bill with unanimous support. Similarly, in December of 2018, the House of Representatives considered and passed the bill unanimous, unanimously under suspension. Again, it included the same revenue sharing structure that I'm proposing today. I must also know that the bipartisan proposals have been filed in both the House and the Senate to ensure states receive a portion of the revenues for offshore wind projects located in adjacent waters, federal waters. Uh, I think Congress should act on them, and I stand ready to work with my colleagues to establish off your wind revenue sharing programs that will benefit all coastal communities. Lastly, I, I, I need to say that during our last markup, it was mentioned that the committee is currently working on a bipartisan proposal to reauthorize Coral Reef Conservation Act, and I strongly support efforts uh, to reauthorize and modernize NOAA's Coral Reef Conservation Program. And that's why I joined, it, uh, I joined uh, Senator Rubio and Congressman Soto in introducing the Bipartisan and Bicameral Restoring uh, Resilient Relief Act, uh, which will also achieve just that. I hope the committee move forward that bill soon. However, this amendment wouldn't disrupt nor run counter to these efforts. On the contrary, it established a new co co uh, Coral Reef Conservation Fund to provide additional dedicated funding to complement, not replace, NOAA's Coral Reef Conservation Program. And I respectfully uh, urge my colleagues to support my amendment to ensure Americans in the territories have access to a cleaner, renewable energy sources, all while boosting revenues from, uh, for local communities and helping uh, protect our coral reef. It, it passed already uh, twice, unanimous, unanimously, uh, but in a bipartisan manner. Why not including this in this provision? Thank you, and I yield back. General Lady yields. Uh, uh, any further discussion on uh, Representative yes, Colon's Desert Amendment Number One? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Huffman, Mr. Chairman, you're recognized. Thank you very much, and uh, I, I appreciate my friend from Puerto Rico's efforts on coral reefs. I've worked with her on this before. It is a shared priority. I'll work with her again. And um, I just wanna make the point that the bill before us actually does make substantial investments in programs that protect coastal communities and ecosystems, including coral reefs. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't know if this was the intent of this amendment or not, uh, but it, uh, it actually could have the effect of undermining uh, our efforts to do these good things in the bill could actually uh, have adverse procedural effects on our broader efforts as well. And so uh, it is potentially a Trojan horse. Uh, it undermines what we're trying to accomplish in this rec rec reconciliation package. And I urge my colleagues to see it as such, uh, although I think many of us are committed to working with our friend from Puerto Rico uh, on that issue of coral reef restoration and protection uh, in other ways. So uh, urge a no vote on this amendment. Gentleman yields back and uh, recognize myself for a second. Let me associate myself with the comments that Chairman Huffman just made. Uh, it is precisely that unknown factor that, uh, and uh, the level of precedent being set and what that means down the road that are, are significant. And right now the task is uh, the instructions that we have in putting this together. And uh, I agree, uh, I concur with, Mr. with uh, Chairman Huffman that down the road, it is something that uh, I, I welcome the opportunity to look at as well. Uh, with that, anyone else want to uh, comment on uh, Gonzalez Colon Amendment Number One? Hearing uh, Westerman. Who? Westerman. Mr. Westerman, you're recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do support this amendment uh, offered by my colleague and the. The single voice in Congress for Puerto Rico, uh, who represents Puerto Rico so well, Ms. Gonzalez Colon. And this is a bipartisan effort that she's worked on in the past. Uh, this amendment 
would guarantee that the territories benefit from offshore wind development on their coastlines. And I find it hard to believe that revenue sharing with the territory would put the whole bill in jeopardy. Um, that's all she's asking is to put the amendment into the underlying bill that goes along with the bipartisan work that's been done uh, so far. I was pleased to participate uh, in a hearing on the bill that she sponsored, the Offshore Wind for the Territories Act, uh, which again has always enjoyed bipartisan support in this committee. Uh, in fact, several of the provisions of that bill were included in H.R. 2780. Uh, however, as I stated, key provisions that would ensure that the territories receive a, a fair return from wind development off their shoreline was surprisingly omitted. And this amendment would simply reinstate those provisions which were agreed to by a majority in negotiating the standalone bill. Currently, the territories are largely dependent on imported fuels like diesel. This amendment would ensure that the territories not only benefit from new sources of energy, but also benefit from the revenues generated by those new sources of energy. Uh, this is a common sense amendment that the general lady has proposed. I support it and yield back. Gentleman yields back. Thank you. Anyone else wish to uh, uh, dis the discussion on this amendment? Hearing no further debate, the question is on uh, Representative Gonzalez Colon's amendment number one. Uh, those members in uh, favor, could please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, those members opposed, indicate by saying no. 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 Opinion of the chair, the no's have it, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. Chairman, I ask for a recorded vote. The representative has asked for a recorded vote, and it so ordered and this vote will be postponed pursuant to prior announcement. The next amendments are designated more number one, um, more number two, more number three. Representative Moore, you're recognized for amendment number one. Thank you, Chairman. Um, and uh, to the comments of uh, my colleague from California a moment ago, um, I, I, I do recognize that we've brought up a similar theme several times. Uh, if you would vote for one of these, we would not keep doing that. Um, so there is an absolute solution there for you. Um, uh, Which one? Stew on it for a minute, and we'll get back to you. I want to thank uh, thank the chairman uh, for getting several a few of my amendments today even um, put through in unanimous consent. Uh, I always look for opportunities to do that, uh, so I appreciate that. In fact, three of my twelve. So the last markup we did three of three out of tw three out of the twelve that we did through UC were from our office, and so I'm sincerely committed that when I offer something, I really do hope that there is a potential for bipartisanship. This is not just a messaging opportunity. Um, these are sincere. This is this is things that I'm hearing from my district. Um, I would love to take you all to my town halls, and I could I could talk to you about it. And I'm going to make a point about that in just a moment. Um, but I, but I do have several other amendments and in good faith, I will look for opportunities to not call for a recorded vote if I get the sense that there's just no, that there's no chance, but I do hope that through some of my amendments today that you'll find an, at least an opportunity to hear me out and, um, and consider not just going down the partisan lines like I see so often with, with this committee. Um, I'm not gonna let that get beaten out of me. Uh, in my first eight months, uh, you know, a lot of a lot a lot of things do get beaten out of you idealistically, and I'm not going to let that get beaten out of me. And so I look for opportunities there. Um, I recognize what's going on. Big picture is what I talk to folks about in my town halls. Big picture, uh, narrowest margins in the history of my time. In his, I've never seen it. We haven't seen it in Congress what like four seats in the House, a 50-50 Senate split. Uh, big reason why I was so concerned about. Um, Republicans in the Senate in the Georgia runoff election was that that one simple election uh, will will create an opportunity for the progressive wing in the Democrat Party to just look at these two years as the most opportunistic chance to push through as much as possible. And today's today's committee meeting started with my friend, my good friend from Hawaii and uh, Representative from from California that, that I don't know as well yet personally, but I but I do know a representative case, and I do believe they're sincere when they talk about um, this concern that they have for 
uh, continually layering on, layering on more to the debt uh, and looking and, and, and they're concerned about what this will do for our deficit spending. Um, I know them to be sincere about that. Uh, and the other big concern I have is that with this opportunistic two years, they're going to have to walk the plank and they're going to be affected in 2022. And I don't want to lose those types. Of, I mean, those, those, in my opinion, are some of the folks that we need back here in Washington that are willing to push back on their party and not always just go with the party line. Um, anyway, so this is a bit of a preamble. I have three amendments to offer here. Uh, and there, there is a couple sincere ones that I'll get to later that's for the Presidio Trust. Two hundred million dollars that should not. Yeah, okay, but you're recognized for amendment number one, Mr. Moore. Yep, and I know, and I'm just preempting it, and I'll keep to my I'll keep to my time. Absolutely, um, this amendment simply the amendment number one here is is uh, is it not? It, all it does is it makes us take a step back and say, is this going to create more importation of oil? Is this going to bolster OPEC? Like, I think the Democrat Party lost a lot of credibility when they come in with the secretarial secretarial order. They come in with the Keystone Pipeline, dropping that, and then when they recognize, when President Biden recognizes, oh no, price gases, the, the pump is going like crazy. It's way too expensive to, to to request it from OPEC. Like, we can't get to that point. Like, you lose credibility in situations like that. These are good paying jobs. I'm I'm recognizing in my industries in, in Utah, they are sincere about reducing emissions. They are taking opportunities to diversify their 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 portfolios. And all this all this does is for us to take a pause and look at, you know, for the example, um, determines that this section will not result in an increase in foreign oil imports. I don't know how that's good for any of us. Um, and uh, it doesn't move along the, 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 the climate discussion in any way, shape or form, in any substantive form. And it just it just feels to me that, you know, we're worried politically now about the high gas prices that we all predicted when we took some of these policies. So uh, I urge a no vote. And I mean, I urge you to support this amendment. And uh, my time is up. Thank you gentlemen yields back. Anyone uh, any further discussion on more amendment number one? Hearing no further debate, the question is on the Moore Amendment number one. Those, uh, those members in favor can please indicate by saying aye. 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 Thank aye. you. Those members opposed can please indicate by saying no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the, the, the nays have it, the nays have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. I thought we had it on that one. It sounded like there was more eyes. I will request a recorded vote. Thank you, sir. You're quite welcome, Mr. Moore. Recorded vote having been uh, requested. This vote will be postponed pursuant to the prior uh, instructions uh, announcement. Uh, Mr. Moore, uh, I really have a keen ear. That's the point, Representative. So when I hear voices, I can almost count them down to the minute details. So never, Mr. Moore, never distrust that count okay i'm just letting you know i'm i take that great deal of pride in that uh mr moore amendment number two thank you mr chairman amendment number two i'll get more to the point this time uh numerous groups and members advocating for the passage of this enormous reconciliation bill this budget reconciliation is supposedly the key to stopping climate change part of the argument is that we need to dramatically increase funding for renewable energy programs and battery storage development look I absolutely see the value in diversifying our energy portfolio. I am coming in with that voice to Congress. Uh, I, I want to be, you know, you know, known for that and doing good work. My 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 colleague, Representative John Curtis, is the same way. Um, so I'm all in on diversifying our energy portfolio. I spoke earlier today uh, about going to our own power company here and talking about the 30% reduction, 30% renewables that they're using. We're moving in the right direction. Industry's embracing this. And uh, so we're continuing to work on that. In Utah, in fact, we're ahead of the curve. Um, the eighth largest percentage change in renewable energy production between 2010 and 2019. And our ability to maintain rapid growth relies solely on our ability to extract those processed minerals such as copper, beryllium, magnesium, lithium, and other air, rare earth min elements that are used to build the electric vehicles. So this is my big point, is 
uh, I had many colleagues tell me I was my, my previous job was in management consulting and our whole shtick for our companies a lot of times was to help them build what we call a theory of change or right? you, you determine what outcome you want or what the final impact is you work backwards from there you create you, you list out what your outcomes are going to be and then you determine what your inputs will be it's a whole strategic plan and I just I think we're so rushed to look at what we ultimately want to achieve which I think is good uh, you know we, we, we that's a shared vision but how you go about doing it in the timeline of which doing it I, I do not see the, the strategic plan that's that's embedded into this um, and I and I continue I can't get beat that out of me a lot of my colleagues said you're gonna hate it in Congress because you know politics is nuts um, it is but you know, I think we can do better um, not US mining it helps us build and develop the world's greatest green technology we're able to extract these minerals in an eco friendlier manner than our major competitors abroad that's the common theme this this amendment simply um, this simply it, it it determines that this title will not result in increased imports of minerals needed for renewable energy or battery storage from China Russia or Afghanistan that's the that, that that's the part that we're trying to make sure that we don't continue to to import from some of these countries and ultimately have to rely on that like the trend that we're seeing um, that's that's the gist for amendment number two and I'll, I'll yield back by a couple minutes and, and jump to number three if unless there's significant debate anyone uh, wishes to uh, uh, discuss uh, mr. Moore's amendment number two Westerman here mr. chairman mr. Westerman so you're recognized I support uh, the gentleman's amendment and also support his attitude, his desire to work across the aisles and actually solve a problem. And that's what he's trying to do with this amendment. That's what many of us have been trying to do all day with amendments is to actually come up with solutions to problems. He very adequately stated how we all want to work towards a, a goal of a cleaner, safer, healthier environment. Uh, but the path that we're taking is not defined. It's kind of the ready, shoot, aim approach that was mentioned earlier. We should be sitting down and having serious conversations about how we implement new technology, how we look at things like uh, enhanced nuclear power, more hydropower, how we utilize the fuels that we've got to make them cleaner and safer, how we develop technology that's going to cause the rest of the world to adopt our technology because it's energy that's reliable, that's low cost, and it's better for the environment. Simply regulating US fossil fuels out of existence will do nothing to solve any kind of carbon issues on a global scale. And that's the crux of what this underlying bill does. It's trying to regulate some kind of utopic conditions and put all the onus on American energy, which comes back to American taxpayers and American consumers. So I applaud the, uh, the gentleman from Utah for introducing a common sense bill, one that does have rationale behind it, and for his desire to solve a problem and not make a political statement. I support his amendment and I yield back. Thank you. Gentleman yields, anyone else wish to, uh, to discuss more amendment number two? Let me recognize myself for just a second and in, 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 uh, not so much in reaction to the amendment, uh, but you know, uh, maybe in the dialogue that Mr. Uh, uh, Ranking Member Westerman was having. You're absolutely right. This is about a transition away from the past in terms of energy dependency and moving toward moving in a different direction. And so part of the discussion is about investment and the investments that that the Democrats are attempting to do and promoting in this uh, underlying bill have to do with exactly that, dealing with climate change. Now, we might disagree as to the transition. I think that the transition, there's an urgency to this. And I think this is where debate centers down. Some people don't see it that urgent. Some people think we have a lot of time uh, not to deal with the climate crisis. And as such, uh, the expenditures that we're talking about here the, and, 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 uh, and the resources dedicated here are seen as extraneous. And you're right, less than 2%. I wish it was more. 
in terms of our budget to deal with these issues. But this is what we got. This is what our side is attempting to move forward, and it is about urgency. Is a transition in your mind decades and years away, or as I see it, the transition is is needs to be accelerated beginning now. Uh, if not, this is going to get worse for all of us. And if you don't, we don't agree on that, then we're going to have trouble agreeing on a transition uh, because I don't think the patience of myself or the American people is to wait around another 10 year while we check it out. Uh, I think we've already know what's wrong and science has proven that. And so look at this as, as an investment in the transition that we see as urgent as opposed to trying to undermine everything else that we've been accused of from uh, terrorism to uh, uh, to uh, ruining the economy and killing millions and millions of jobs. That aside, because that's that's political stuff we can deal with at another time. This is about an investment and, and you with your that's the crux of it. How urgent do you see it? We see it as very urgent. And let me just yield back with that. Mr. Gosar, Gosar, I'd like to speak. Mr. Gosar, you're recognized, sir. Yeah, I like I like the conversation, but uh, once again, you can't force somebody to to invent something. That's the key here. Is that when you're looking at electrifying uh, fleets across the country, uh, automobiles and stuff like that, where does that electricity come from? The batteries are our weakest units. And we've seen time and time again that this committee is not willing to look at uh, the critical minerals that are necessary for those batteries. So you can't really force um, uh, a society to pull something out when it doesn't work. When you get rolling brownouts and blackouts, and then you get rulings that subjugate one state to another. That's what's wrong here, is that we ought to be incentivizing the, uh, the uh, finding of the new technology in regards to battery storage, uh, electrification. I mean, it's be, be smart, no, don't be foolish. You know, don't run uh, ahead of your technology. And I think when you uh, promise people and keep your promises, that goes a lot longer than uh, making promises and they can't be kept. Uh, when you make a promise and you put somebody in harm's way, when it's they're taking care of their family, whether it be driving to, from rural Arizona to the grocery store, or if it's somebody from urban America trying to get to their drugs or their VA uh, uh, visit. So I caution, in, uh, there's always great investments, but you can't force technology. In my understanding, according to the experts, it would take a quantum leap in technology, a quantum leap in technology for battery storage to uh, take the place solely of the combustion engine. So just words of a warning. Thank you, I yield back. Would you yield to me? Mr. Gentlemen, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Gosar. Anyone else uh, wish to discuss the amendment and seeks recognition? Mr. Chairman, it's it's Yvette Harrell. I seek recognition. I'd like General to- General Lady from New Mexico. Thank you. I'd like to yield my time to Ranking Member Westerman, please. Thank you, Representative Harrell. And Chairman, I appreciate you bringing up this uh, and, and further discussing the idea of transition. That's what we should be debating in this committee. We should talk about what that transition looks like. As Mr. Gosar said, there's hurdles you have to overcome. Now, you've probably heard the joke about the bug hitting the windshield. What's the last thing to go through the bug's mind when he hits the windshield? It's his rear end. And that is a transition, Mr. Chairman. It's a very abrupt transition. And that's the kind of transition we're talking about with the bill that you are proposing. It's an abrupt stop to the safe, reliable, abundant energy that we have in our country right now. But while we do that to our energy, the bugs in the other countries are flying on down the road. Think about it. If we put that stop to fossil fuels in the US, if you did away with every internal combustion engine in the United States, all the transportation sector, you're talking about 27% of the fossil fuels or of the greenhouse gas emissions emitted by the US, which is 15% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. 
So to put that abrupt stop in place, we're going to affect global climate emissions by 4%, while the rest of the world, including China, which is growing rapidly, is not doing anything to stop greenhouse gas emissions. That's why we need a transition that includes the technology that Mr. Gosar talked about that other countries want to adopt because it's the lowest cost, most reliable, cleanest energy source. So I wish we could have a hearing on the transition and how we do that, how we do more research and development, how we take the technology that we've got, how we promote that, rather than just saying we're going to magically regulate fossil fuels out of existence, it's going to come to an abrupt stop. The transition needs to happen immediately, but it's a process. It can't happen 100% immediately, but we can certainly figure out ways to ramp that up. Again, I support the, uh, uh, the gentleman's amendment. I'm not sure if he was seeking additional time, and I would, I would yield some of my time to him. Mr. Moore. Thanks, Ranking Member. I would just add, um, absolutely, transition is the key, and I'm all in on engaging on it. I, I interact with the organization called Clear Path that does, that does a lot of this type of work. Um, I'm getting involved in as many industry opportunities as, as possible. When Ranking Member Westrom came to my district last week, we visited our power company here and we had them walk us through their their timeline and their plan on the on, on what they're doing with renewables and and their limitations with the duck curve. Um, so I'm digging in. I'm all in, folks. Uh, I just don't want the transition to be aided by OPEC. Like, I think we can do it better and become the energy world leader in clean, clean technology because we're not going to be able to pressure any other country with our debt and our inability to be able to, to effectively change a lot of that. We're not going to be able to change Thai, uh, Japan, uh, China for bringing on however many coal power plants they do each year. Like we're going to have to be, do it by being the better option. And I don't want to. And, and I want to embrace our industry because I believe they've 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 thoughtfully and incredibly been doing it for the last decade. Um, when John Curtis started out the, uh, the the conservative climate caucus, that was the point I made. Was you know there's already been a lot of ton. There's already been a ton of work, and this is going to help us you know get our message going. But We've already embraced what industry's been been up to, um, and then I've heard several times, and I'll just I'll that you know this is what the Senate has charged us to do, and this is the push, and we just need to fulfill this duty. Um, like I challenge us, I challenge my my Democrat Democratic colleagues. Like I remember when President Biden, candidate Biden at the time, said in his d debate, has said I beat Bernie Sanders. I beat Bernie Sanders. I am the more pro uh, the, the the candidate that's more reasonable, and that's who the American people chose. They did not choose Bernie Sanders. So for us to rush through this entire three point five trillion dollar Bernie bill, I don't think is what even your constituents want. I definitely know it's not what mine want. And and as I try to talk them through it, I praise my colleagues on the Democrat side, my problem solver caucus colleagues. I praise them all the time to my my constituents, and I talk about how brave they're being and they're pushing back as much as they possibly can. It's not easy to go against leadership. Um, and I just I just offer that, that 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 is not who Biden ran. That's not how he ran. And I just think because of one Georgia Senate loss, which shouldn't have happened, um, that they're taking an opportunity. Bernie Sanders gets all the opportunity in the world. And I, and, I, and I just don't think that's what your constituents want as well. I yield back. I yield back to Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell. Mr. Chair, I yield back the balance of any time. Okay, uh, any further discussion? You know, I, I'm still a little bit traumatized by the uh, bug on the windshield that Mr. Westerman uh, used that analogy. Uh, uh, there's another analogy about oyster, uh, ostriches and sand that I think also we need to avoid. Uh, but uh, let, having said that, let me now ask uh, uh, Representative Moore for uh, more two. Any further comments on that? No, sir. Open to a vote. Okay, thank you. Uh, hearing no further debate, the question is on the Moore Amendment. Those in favor, unmute and indicate by saying aye. Aye. Aye, 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 aye. aye, aye. Okay, and uh, all those members opposed, please unmute and indicate by saying no. 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 The opinion of the chair, the no's have it, the no's have it, and uh, the amendment is not agreed to. Request recorded vote. Thank you, sir.
You're welcome, Mr. Moore. Request an, uh, Representative Moore request and a uh, recorded vote, and the vote will be postponed pursuant to the my prior announcement. And now, uh, number three, I think, Mr. Moore, you have number three, and you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you. You've all indulged me quite a bit, and I promise to be brief on this one. Um, this section shall have no force or effect until the Secretary of the Interior determines that this section will not result in decreased funding for conservation programs, including the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Um, a strong supporter of conservation programs in Utah, we benefit greatly. We embrace these in many different ways. Um, the Historic Preservation Fund, the Land and Water Conservation Fund, Reclamation Fund, uh, receive more, uh, they, they receive um, dollars, they receive monies from each year from oil and gas production. This is one of those situations where it's like, what are we doing here? Like, um, if we if we if, if, if we rob from Peter, Paul's going to get hurt here too. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that we could pause and address what was ultimately going to to be the issue and what these how this is going to affect conservation funds uh, because they kind of rely on the the uh, energy industry. And if we limit that, what does that ultimately do? What impact will that will will that be? Um, so. Uh, I will kind of forego my main comments. That's the gist. Um, support conservation programs. What, what, what ultimately happens when we take a lot of these measures into place um, and it kind of, it, 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 it doesn't encourage investment into what I believe in American production is, is doing it better with better labor standards than anywhere. And we ultimately get a, a positive conservation aspect out of this. Um, I think it's going to hurt a lot of different communities. I know it'll have an impact on Utah, and I just want this amendment to be able to at least um, analyze that and determine what that impact will be. Uh, with that, I will be brief like I promised. Thank you, and I yield back. Thank you. Thank you, the gentleman uh, yields back. And uh, any further discussion on the amendment? Hearing no further debate, the question is on the Moore Amendment number three. Those. Uh, in favor of the amendment, indicate by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Those opposed, please indicate by saying no. 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 The opinion of the chair of the no's have it. The no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. I'll trust your keen ear, chairman, and I'll request Thank a recorded you. vote. Uh, that means you don't trust my keen oh, ear. I don't trust it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, uh, recorded vote been uh, requested and postponed pursuant to prior announcement. Thank you. Uh, we have considered nearly 50 amendments so far. We have more than 30 recorded votes requested. After we complete debate on the next amendment, Gonzalez Colon number two, it is my intention to break away from the debate of further amendments and conduct most or all of the requested votes we have in the pipeline. We'll, we'll hold these roll votes and then we will adjourn our meeting for the day. Members can expect this committee to convene one week from today on Thursday, September 9th to conclude the markup. I am well aware that a number of committees have meetings scheduled next Thursday as well, and including uh, the, another committee that I serve on. That we were going to work diligently with your offices and with the, uh, with the uh, respective committees that are holding the uh, there are markups of those days to, and make every effort to coordinate and to not make it more difficult than it will be for members. But uh, that is the best time and that is what uh, membership uh, felt was important to come back on Thursday and, and finish it. All right, with that, Representative Gonzalez Colon, you have the next amendment designated number two and uh, Representative, we recognize for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to establish that Section 7703 of the underlying bill pretends to advance bipartisan legislation that I have introduced in the 116 and 117 Congress, H.R. 4605 and H.R. 1126, respectively, uh, to set up a process for claims and compensation for health conditions in the island municipality of Vieques. Uh, in June, this committee held a legislative hearing on my bill. However, 
uh, what we have before us today falls short uh, of what my bill intends and does not serve justice uh, to the people inflicted uh, of Vieques. Although I understand, Mr. Chairman, that the reconciliation package uh, the Democrats have put together is a vehicle uh, to which legislation could possibly move forward. Uh, this section, 7703, is a problematic and gives the impression of a desperate attempt to achieve what will otherwise be a well-intended bipartisan bill and to pass it on its own merits. Uh, H.R. 1126 details, uh, details a specific set of terms and requirements that the special master will use to determine how compensation is assigned and who qualifies for that. Instead, this section creates, this, creates the risk that the compensation process will become a prolonged bureaucratic regulatory procedure to decide uh, who gets compensation for what. Uh, this section, again, also does not contain either the specific provisions for compensation to the municipality that, in, that include the long-term upgrades to the Vieques Medical Center and the electrical grid beyond the current disaster reconstruction. Uh, and this is one of the most critical elements of compensation to the community as a collective. Uh, furthermore, HR 1126 proposed the compensation come from the government judgment fund uh, as the claims be become ad uh, adjudicated under the jurisdiction of the Department of Justice, which has the expertise and legal authority for these matters. Instead, these sections assign a task to the Department of Interior Office of Insular Affairs. Uh, and members of the committee, Puerto Rico is not under the jurisdiction of the Department of Interior uh, Office of Insular Affairs. It hasn't been for decades, and we don't want to go back to it. Uh, to whom we need to explain that and again, I don't know, but this is yet another area that will create a bureaucratic delay. Uh, my constituents deserve better, quite frankly. And, and, and again, HR 1126, but partisan bill has the advantage of no new money being applicated. It comes from an existing source and is only obligated as the claim progress. Uh, on the other hand, um, so this section makes a new appropriation capped at $300 million in one lump sum. And it's very important we make it clear that if this is intended to be just a down payment or limit, it creates the impression that this is an effort to make sure it stays inside our committee of jurisdiction and perhaps get a headline that we are not solving the issue uh, in the long run. And, and Mr. Chairman, we are creating a problem here. Uh, in an effort to make uh, this section better. I'm proposing an amendment to place the special master exactly where our bill intends to be in the Department of Justice, which is the office with jurisdiction over these issues. So what? Uh, so that when the intended BX bill passed, which I hope it does, it will already be prepared for the implementation. Uh, to give people what they deserve is, is truly uh, try to pass the BX bill on, on, on a properly legislated uh, on this matter, uh, legislate on this matter of justice for our community and not just assign a sum of money and let the details be worked out later. Uh, putting a cap to $300 million uh, should not be uh, an issue here, no new money when you got already a fund in the Department of Justice. So let's do it the right way. Uh, I think the people of VIECAS have suffered enough uh, to just have more bureaucratic process to go through. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. The general lady yields back. Uh, any further discussion? Let me recognize myself. Uh, I and 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 uh, the majority is a strong supporter of, of the investment uh, that uh, the representative is seeking to amend. Uh, however, her amendment causes significant procedural problems, problems that potentially jeopardize a whole uh, response and an ability to coordinate with the Senate as to what that response and the resources should be. Therefore, I urge my colleagues to oppose the amendment. I do, however, look forward to working with my colleagues to ensure much needed investments in Vieques and in its people, and uh, we'll go forward from there. But it, uh, the amendment does cause significant procedural problems, and for that reason uh, and the instructions that we are operating on, uh, I would recommend a no vote. Uh, having said that, anyone else wish to uh, comment on the 
Question of uh, Gonzalez Colon Amendment number two. Um, Mr. Chairman, Graves, Louisiana. Mr. Graves, sir, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I just want to understand the procedural concerns you have about uh, about Ms. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez Colon's amendment. Complicates it in the Senate. Uh, it just complicates it in the Senate, and it complicates it with, uh, and uh, it just complicates it in the Senate. And, uh, we are trying to provide, through all the committee work, a uh, a product that uh, procedurally is strong, and with a strong record. And we'll go from there. And I'm happy to discuss this offline and. Uh, uh, and be, be glad to explain all that to you. Thank you. So, I mean, basically, just just trying to get a bill out that will pass the Senate. Is that kind of the, the attempt here? I wish it was that simplistic, but uh, happy to discuss it offline. I will uh, yield my remaining time to Miss uh, Gonzalez. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank yield. You, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and, and I, I know uh, you're, I mean, the people of Louisiana are suffering right now, and thank you for uh, being in the hearing. And, and we understand perfectly what's going on in Louisiana as we got that experience many years ago. So, uh, you know, you, you got all support. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I know the committee did um, a hearing on, on this uh, bill and uh, Ms. Velasquez's bill uh, on the summer. And both bills at that time uh, include well, mostly the same provisions. Uh, one limits uh, the compensations to a uh, billion dollars, uh, which is better than capped uh, this bill uh, to $300 million. And I think everybody wants to help the guess. And, and, and we believe on this issue. That's the reason I, I, I dropped this bill in, in, in the 116th Congress, and then we did it again in this Congress. And both, time, both times it's been a bipartisan bill. Uh, I do have a real concern that having uh, the Office of Insular Affairs managing this when they're not, first of all, Puerto Rico does not, it, it's, it's not included in that office. Uh, so they don't have the expertise to, to deal with this uh, as the Department of Justice. And we are, we're trying to do this by, by a, a judgment fund that is already being created, that the funds are there, there's no new money. Uh, do simply uh, run a process in a less bureaucratic way and creating a new procedure in a new agency with a cap of $300 million, um, I, I think will not serve the interest of, of, of both uh, of both bills that were introduced in the, in the summer and, and, and the committee saw it. Uh, so I, I truly expect uh, the committee uh, to recommend uh, the bills that are organized that include uh, the provisions and will help the people of the Vegas. Uh, with that, um, I, I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Who seeks, yeah. Mr. Mr. Velasquez, Velasquez. Uh, Representative Velasquez, you're recognized, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me just say that I share the same goals as Ms. Gonzalez Colon, and that we have worked uh, together in legislation as it relates uh, to Vieques and uh, bringing justice to the people of Vieques. But uh, I oppose this amendment, not because I do not share its aims. I'm opposing it because I refuse to go back on the progress that we have made in this committee. Our colleagues have been here long enough to understand the committee's authority. So, I invite uh, the members on the other side, including the amendments uh, author, to please continue working together with the committee on this issue. Uh, this is a reconciliation package. This is not regular order or yep. a standalone bill. So there are restrictions and limitations, and we should uh, come together this is the train that is leaving the station. Let's get this done. And uh, where is going to be? Well, this is uh, it, it is under the jurisdiction of this committee. So uh, I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Appreciate it. Uh, General Lady Spons. yields back. Anyone? Someone wishes to be Mr. 
Mr. Sablan, sir, you are recognized. Thank you. Um, I um, I I also um share um um Ms. Gonzalez Colon's uh, concern. Uh, it is true that uh, the Office of Interior Affairs, who I just learned, has just named uh, Dep an assistant Dep the assistant secretary. Uh, and I wonder now, rather than going back and starting this, I wonder if there is eventually the possibility that um, OIA or DOI would just contract with DOJ. Uh, since I, I also agree that DOJ is the better party here to um, address this uh, long standing uh, injustice to the people of Vieques. Uh, but uh, rather than risk uh, this money, uh, maybe we could. Uh, Maybe somehow, somewhere, I hope I'm not violating anything, but there could be a transfer, a contract, or whatever. Uh, just, just a thought. Thank you, sir. But I do support the gentle lady's concerns. Thank you, Mr. Sablan. I think uh, your uh, wise advice and commentary is, it, I think people should take it to heart. This is, uh, uh, but we're more Mr. prepared Chairman. to deal individually with members offline and. Uh, as as uh, Chair, Chair Velasquez said, you know that we'd be glad to talk about that. Mr. Uh, Chairman, it's, it's an impediment at this point. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I do have a question, and I don't know if you, you you're able to answer. I just uh, one of the issues I want to know is why to cap three hundred million dollars. Is there any reason behind that number uh, instead of putting that to billion or or, or to let it open? Uh, if you can answer that, if not, we try to work. We try to work it within the total and our instructions. That and and that commitment and uh, I think uh, the effort will be to get more. Of course, I mean, let me just put it bluntly. But at this point, that's what's in there, and that's uh, the instructions and how we uh, package. Like I said, not as much as we would have wanted in order to satisfy the demand, but that's what we got. That's the figure that we got. And that's why the revenue raisers are so important. Uh, and we allocated it. And this was a commitment from, from our jurisdiction that is important, but th this is a shared responsibility as Chair Velasquez said very pointedly, and uh, we're still pursuing uh, more funding. Chairman Westerman. Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Chairman, I understand that the instructions may have designated this uh, to our committee and changing that might not fit into the uh, the instructions, but settlements normally go through the Department of Justice and what uh, Ms. Gonzalez Colon is asking her in her amendment is really just a technical fix. Uh, to put the jurisdiction back under the Department of Justice, which I realize takes it out of our committee, but uh, it seems like either there were, there were bad instructions or this should have never been in our committee to start with. It should have gone through um, uh, the Department of Justice instead of the De Interior's Office of Insular Affairs, as Ms. Gonzalez Colon has introduced in a similar bill. So I support the amendment and understand the difficulties that creates from your procedural standpoint, but I think we should still do what's right. So ranking member, can you yield? I yield, I yield my time, remaining time to uh, Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Thank you, Mr. Westerman. Uh, um, Mr. Chairman, I, I do understand that you're trying to work uh, with your guidelines, right? Uh, but we are not asking for uh, new money uh, into this bill, actually. This is this is this is this is my my, my time, sir. Um, what we are asking here is that we already have a, a fund in the Department of Justice, uh, so it, it will be no new taxpayers' money. I mean, it's a compensation that is already been there. That's the reason we included uh, a master uh, master uh, to to manage these issues like they do in other claims. Um, that was the concern. That's the reason my bill does not include a limit. 
Uh, Ms. Velasquez's bill includes a limit of $1 billion, which is more reasonable uh, it, because it, it at least uh, put a problem because we don't know how many of those claims are going to come. We don't, we don't, we, we cannot say how many health issues the people of Vieques are going to be presenting. Uh, so my concern is capping those uh, those uh, uh, compensations or reclamations to just three hundred million dollars. It could be more. It could be less. Uh, we don't we don't know that at this time, and, and that's the reason we are uh, putting a provision in, in both bills uh, to be in the Department of Justice. We are not part of the Department of in Insular Affairs. We've never been there for the last decades. Uh, I'm I'm really concerned the bureaucratic process. Uh, that is not included in a procedure in this bill. So this bill does not include how people are going to make those claims, how people are going to get access to that fund, who's going to supervise that, who's going to be the, the, in charge of, of making uh, any reclamation uh, if the agency is against uh, that disbursement. So there's no proper procedure at all. And, and what, what I'm trying it's to do- It's five o'clock. And I do understand uh, what your limitations are, Mr. Chairman, and I'll be more than glad to work um, uh, with you and whoever is in this in this committee to do the bipartisan work that both bills did, uh, does in, in, in your committee held in the summer. And, and I expect truly really that uh, after the committee got uh, hearings on those bills, at least one can come up and you know try to clarify the process, even if this bill is approved. With that. Uh, I want to say thank you to Chairman and yield back. Gentlemen, you yields. Uh, you know, uh, I I stay I stated uh, I, with the problem here in terms of the procedural issue. Uh, I I just really think that uh, everybody we're on the same side, but we're uh, I, I don't know what the debate's about, but we're on the same side, and I and I understand where it should fit and and, and what. Uh, the representative's bill attempts to do. Here's the deal. I think we have a better opportunity to carry out this precedent that we're setting here in terms of the cleanup that has been talked about for more than me being in Congress, to be honest with you. Uh, that, and we have a better chance of getting that and moving it forward procedurally. And in terms, of, uh, and that's why we was written the way it was. Then we have changing uh, jurisdictions on it, but if uh, you know, and I think uh, I think that that's why I think uh, opposing this amendment gives us an opportunity to see how far we can get uh, with the commitment to the ECAS and to the cleanup and to the people there. Uh, this is a initial. This is the beginning point. We'll see where we go. But to go any other direction and to move jurisdictions, I don't know if that's, I don't know if the people of Vieques or uh, the, the House is prepared to, uh, or the committee is prepared to do that. So uh, this is where I think we have the best chance. And that's why I've promoted it the way I have. And that's why the language is the way it is. Um, and thank you. Uh, with that, let me uh, ask if there's anybody else that wished to address uh, uh, Gonzalez Colon amendment number two. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Rep Soto. Mr. Soto, or please, you have Thanks. five minutes. I appreciate both our colleagues, Gonzalez Colon and Velasquez's efforts on this key issue. The bottom line is this is the quickest way we'll get relief to the people of Vieques at the moment. We could either try to fix it now and lose the opportunity, or we could pass this bill and then fix whatever we need to later. Um, I think it's really key we do this as prompt as we can and then work together on any additional changes we need to make. And yield back. Gentlemen, yields. Thank, thank you for that. That very good summary, Mr. Soto, and of where we're at. I appreciate it. And exactly where we're at. You said it very well. Uh, anyone else uh, wish to be recognized on this? If not, uh, no further debate. The question is on uh, Gonzalez Colon, amendment number two. Those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed indicate uh, by saying no. 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 And the opinion of the chair of the no's have it, the no's have it, and the amendment is not agreed to. 
Mr. Chairman, I ask for a recorded vote. Uh, General Lady asked for a recorded vote and uh, pursuant to instructions, uh, that vote is uh, postponed till pretty soon. <laughs> and uh, the five minute uh, recess real quick so that all offices are contacted and then we reconvene and begin just uh, the roll call on the on the votes, okay? Five minutes at max. Thank you so much.
requested on uh, many amendments and uh, members are reminded that under house regulations members must be visible to the chair in order to vote there is no exception for technical issues if a member is visible but without sound they may visually vote with a thumbs up or thumbs down members should answer the clerk by saying your name and then your vote this allows the camera enough time to switch to you and it helps reduce confusion the question is on the amendment the amendment designated as uh the Halba number one, a roll call has been requested and the clerk shall call the roll. Mr. Grijalva. Yes. Mr. Grijalva votes aye. Mr. Westerman. No. Mr. Westerman votes no. Mrs. Napolitano. Napolitano, yes. Mrs. Napolitano votes aye. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Mr. Costa, aye. Mr. Costa votes aye. Mr. Gomert. No. Mr. Gomert votes no. Mr. Sablon. Mr. Lamborn. Mr. Huffman. Huffman, yes. Mr. Huffman votes aye. Mr. Whitman. No. Mr. Whitman votes no. Mr. Lowenthal. Mr. Lowenthal votes yes. Mr. Lowenthal votes aye. Mr. McClintock. Oh. Mr. McClintock votes no. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes aye. Mr. Gallego votes aye. Mr. Gosar. Mr. Nagoose. Aye. Mr. Nagoose votes. Mr. Gosar? I'm a no. Mr. Gosar votes no. Mr. Graves. Mr. Levin. Aye. Mr. Levin votes aye. Mr. Heiss. Heiss, no. Mr. Heiss votes no. Ms. Porter. Yes. Ms. Porter votes aye. Mrs. Radawagon. Radawagon, nay. Mrs. Radama Mrs. Radawagon votes no. Ms. Leje Fernandez. Leje Fernandez votes yes. Leger Fernandez votes aye. Mr. Webster. Webster votes yay. No, nay, I'm sorry. Nay. Mr. Webster votes no. Ms. Stansberry. Stansberry votes aye. Stansberry votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes no. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes aye. Ms. Velasquez votes aye. Mr. Fulcher. Mr. Get. Mr. Get votes aye. Mr. Get votes aye. Mr. Stauber. Ms. Brownlee. Uh, Ms. Brownlee votes aye. Ms. Brownlee votes aye. Mr. Tiffany. Tiffany, no. Mr. Tiffany votes no. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes aye. Mrs. Dingle votes aye. Mr. Carl. Votes no. Mr. Carl votes no. Mr. McEachin. McEachin votes aye. Mr. McEachin votes aye. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, no. Mr. Rosendale votes no. Mr. Soto. Soto votes aye. Mr. Soto votes aye. Mr. Moore. No. Mr. Moore votes no. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes yes. Mr. Sam Nicholas votes aye. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes no. Ms. Harrell votes no. Mr. Garcia. Garcia is an aye. Mr. Garcia votes aye. Mrs. Bobert. <laughs> Mrs. Bobert, you're muted. I can't hear you. Sorry about that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before I vote, um, I'd like to call attention to the op ed in the Wall Street Journal. Um, having, uh, Mr. Chair, there's a vote in progress. That's, that's, that's not allowed. We have a vote going on. If you, Mr. if that Mr. Manchin votes no, and right. this yes, Mr. Manchin opposes this, and I vote no, and this is dead on arrival. Sorry to put the nail in the we are for voting, the coffin. Mr. Mrs. Bobert, Mrs. Bobert votes no. Mr. Case, aye. Mr. Case votes aye. Mr. Obernolte, Ms. McCollum. 
McCollum votes with the chair. McCollum votes aye. Ms. McCollum votes aye. Mr. Benz? Mr. Benz votes no. Mr. Benz votes no. Mr. Cohen? Aye. Uh, Mr. Cohen votes aye. Mr. Tonko? Ms. Talib? Votes yes. Ms. Talib votes aye. Ms. Trahan? Aye. Ms. Trahan votes aye. Uh, are there any members who wish to change, uh, wish to vote or change their vote? Uh, Mr. Yeah. Chair Sablon. Mr. Sablon, how oh, is Mr. Sablon yeah. recorded? Mr. Sablon is not recorded. Aye, please. Mr. Sablon votes aye. Mr. Chairman, how is Mr. Lamborn recorded? Mr. Lamborn's not recorded. I vote no. Mr. Lamborn votes no. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, how is recorded? Uh, Mr. Mr. Fulcher, I, I think he's on, but something's wrong with the audio. Is he recorded? Mr. Fulcher is not recorded. Up or thumb down. Uh, How is Stauber recorded? Mr. Stauber, uh, Stauber is not recorded. Mr. Stauber votes no. Mr. Stauber votes no. Yeah, Mr. Fulcher is giving a thumbs, thumbs down on his, his video. Mr. Fulcher votes no. Thank you. Mr. Graves. Mr. Graves is not recorded. Mr. Graves. Mr. Graves, you are not recorded. Graves Mr. Graves votes no. Mr. Graves votes no. Uh, the vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 25 and the nays are 20. The, amend the amendment passes and uh, the, uh, the ayes have it and the amendment passes. The next amendment is designated. Mr. For Chairman, par parliamentary inquiry. Please. Um, I, I would like to inquire, is it only acceptable to interrupt when we are making um, campaign calls on the side during a committee and talking to our TIAs and, uh, and CEOs or is, is the does not state a parliamentary I, Excuse inquiry. me, uh, re it's reclaiming inquiry. my time, that is, I, well, I, I you require, have, you, have an you don't have time to reclaim. I, I am, I am requiring if that is, uh, if, if the those next, are times the, that Mr. we are John interrupted the order and silenced by other members. Party. Save, save it for your social media. Right now, you have another amendment designated as number 25. Um, yeah, we call the roll. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Grialva. No. Mr. Grialva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. Napolitano, no. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Mr. Gomert. Mr. Sablon. No. no. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. <coughs> Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Uh, uh, Mr. Whitman, I don't have a visual. Mr. Whitman? Mr. Lowenthal? Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock? Aye. Mr. McClintock? Whitman votes aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Whitman? Don't votes see a visual. Aye. I'm sorry, I don't see a visual. Let me search. Then? Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Gallego? I votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar? Aye. 
Mr. Gosar vo uh, votes aye. Mr. Nagoose? No. Mr. Nagoose votes no. Mr. Graves? Mr. Levin? Yes. No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss? Heiss, yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Mr. Porter? No. Ms. Porter? Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon? Radawagon, aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leger Fernandez? Leger Fernandez votes no. Ms. Leger Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster? Ms. Stansberry? Stansberry votes no. Ms. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Ms. Deget. Deget votes no. Ms. Deget votes no. Mr. Sauber. Ms. Brownlee. Votes no. Ms. Brownley votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Tiffany, aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl. Yes. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin. McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. No. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San, Lick San Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes yes. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. No. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Bobert votes aye. Mrs. Bobert votes aye. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte. Ms. McCollum. McCollum votes no. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib. Talib votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Mr. Han. No. Mr. Han votes no. Uh, Mr. This Chair. Gilmert, how, how did I, uh, how am I recorded voting? Mr. Gilmer, you're not recorded. Uh, the, uh, vote aye. Mr. Gilmer votes aye. Graves aye. Graves aye. Mr. Graves votes aye. Stauber aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Madam Clerk, did you get the uh, Mr. Fulcher recorded? Uh, Mr. Fulcher is not recorded. He, he did give a thumbs up. I need to see it one more time, sir. Okay, I see him. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Are there any members? If not, uh, any, any members who wish to vote or change their vote? Uh, if not, the vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 19 and the nays are 25. The nays have it and the uh, amendment is not accepted. Uh, amendment designated uh, Bobert number 218. Uh, the clerk will read the names. Uh, the clerk shall call the roll. Mr. Grijalva. No. Mr. Grijalva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. Napolitano, no. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. No. Mr. Costa votes. Mr. No. Mr. Costa, I don't have a visual. <clears throat> no. I see. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Aye. Mr. Gomer votes aye. Mr. Sablon. Um, no. 
Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes no. Yes. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. H Huffman. No, no. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Yes. Whitman votes yes. Mr. Woodmitz votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Yes. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagoose. No. Mr. Nagoose votes no. Mr. Graves. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Heiss, yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Radawagon, aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leger Fernandez. Leger Fernandez votes no. Ms. Leger Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Ms. Stansberry. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher is aye. Mr. Fulcher Mr. votes aye. Ms. Mr. Get. Get votes no. Mr. Get votes no. Mr. Stauber. Mr. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Tiffany, aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl. Carl, Mr. yes. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. Mr. McEachin. McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. Sam Nicholas. Sam Nicholas votes no. Mr. Sam Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harold. Ms. Harold votes aye. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Bobert votes aye. Ms. Bobert votes aye. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte. Ms. McCollum. McCollum votes no. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Benz. Mr. Benz votes yes. Mr. Benz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Tlaib. Tlaib votes no. Ms. Tlaib votes no. Mr. Han. No. And I can't Mr. Han votes no. I don't know if you can send it in another form. Are there members who wish to vote or change their votes? Uh, Mr. Chair Stauber, how am I recorded? Mr. Stauber, you're not recorded. Stauber is a yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Anyone else wish to change their vote? A vote? If not, the vote is closed and the clerk Mr. shall report. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yes. Chairman, I, I think Mr. Webster is on, but I don't think he's been recorded. Mr. Webster is not recorded. Mr. Webster? Mr. Webster? Yes. I don't see, I don't have a visual, sir. Uh, I'll, get back on, I'll get back on that, let me see. Yeah, I lost it, my sound just went off. I'm not sure what happened. Okay. okay, Mr. Webster votes. Uh, how do you vote, sir? No. Mr. Webster votes no. Vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Is there a way to get my uh, video? Mr. Back Chair, on? On, on this vote, the yeas are 18 and the nays are 27. The nays have it and the amendment fails and we move to amendment 
223, uh, designated October 223. Uh, the clerk shall call the roll. Mr. Guialva. No. Mr. Guialva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. No. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Aye. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sublon. Sublon votes no. Mr. Sublon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes yes. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Hoffman. No. Hey, I appreciate your help. Thank Mr. you so Hoffman much. votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Yes. Mr. Gosar vo votes aye. Mr. Neguse. No. Mr. Neguse votes no. Mr. Graves. Two, two, three. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter. Mrs. Radawagon. Aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leisure Fernandez. Leisure Fernandez. Leisure. Ms. Leisure Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Yes. Mr. Webster, I don't have a visual. Mm. Come on, guys. Ms. Stansberry. No. Ms. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Fulcher Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Get. Get votes no. Mr. Get votes no. Mr. Stauber. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Mr. Tiffany. Tiffany, aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes no. Mr. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl. Yes. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. Votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes yes. Mr. San Nicholas votes aye. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes yes. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. No. Mr. Garcia votes no. Ms. Mrs. Bobert. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte. Ms. McCollum. No. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. Very no. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Tonko. No. Mr. Tonka votes no. Ms. Talib. Talib votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Mr. Han. No. Mr. Han votes no. Ms. Napolitano votes. How is Ms. Napolitano recorded? How is Ms. Napolitano recorded? Uh, Ms. Napolitano is not recorded. No. Ms. Napolitano votes no. Is this Representative Ms. Porter? How am I recorded? Ms. Porter, you're not recorded? Ms. Porter votes no. Ms. Porter votes no. Mr. Chairman, this is Robert. Mr. McEachin. How am I recorded? Mr. McEachin, you're not recorded. I would like to be recorded as no, please. Mr. McEachin votes no. Is Lamborn recorded? Yes, yes sir, you're recorded. Thank you. I'll stop. Mr. Nicholas. Okay. Mr. San Nicholas, I, I have you recorded as a yes. I change vote to no, please. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. 
were recorded. I'm sorry, can you repeat um, the speaking? How was Stauber recorded? Uh, Mr. Stauber, you, you are not recorded. I'm, uh, I'm a yes, and I apologize with, uh, I've got troubles with my connection here. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Recorded. No, Mr. Webster, you're not recorded. I would vote aye. Mr. Webster votes aye. Bobert votes aye. Ms. Bobert votes aye. Uh, any members who wish to vote and have a vote and or change their votes? Not. The vote is closed. And the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 19 and the nays are 26. The nays have it and the amendment fails. And we now move to amendment uh, designated Bobert number one. The clerk will so call the roll. Mr. Grijalva? No. Mr. Grijalva votes no. Mr. Westerman? Aye. Mr. We Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano? Napolitano, no. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young? Mr. Costa? No. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert? Yay. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sablon? Sablon votes no. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn? Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman? No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman? Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal? Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock? Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego? Mr. Gosar? Aye. Mr. Gallego Gosar, votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Oh, no. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagus? No. Mr. Nagus votes no. Mr. Graves? Mr. Levin? No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss? Aye, she yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter? No. Ms. Porter votes no. M Mrs. Radawagon? Aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leisha Fernandez? No. Ms. Leisha Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster? Mr. Webster votes yay. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Stansberry? No. Ms. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon? I vote aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez? Velasquez Mr. votes no. Mr. Vla uh, Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher? Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Get? Get votes no. Mr. Get votes no. Mr. Stauber? Stauber votes aye. Mr. So uh, Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee? Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany? Tiffany, aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle? Dingle votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl? Aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin. McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Mr. Soto. Aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. Ms. Harrell. Votes yes. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Ms. Mrs. Bobert. Mr. Case. Aye. Case is a no. Mr. Case is a no. Mr. Obernolte. Ms. McCollum. One votes no. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Tonko. Mr. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib. Talib votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Mr. Han. No. Mr. Han votes no. Mr. 
members who wish to vote have not been recorded or changed their vote. Not the vote is closed. How is Bobert recorded? Ms. Bobert, it's not recorded. Bobert, Bobert votes aye. Ms. Bobert votes aye. Sir Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Mrs. Bobert votes aye. Graves, yes. Graves, yes. Uh, Mr. Graves votes aye. Anyone else? Vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 20 and the nays are 26. The amendment, uh, the nays have it, the amendment fails, and we move to uh, amendment designated stopper number one. Uh, the clerk shall call the roll. Mr. Rialba. No. Mr. Rialba votes no. Mr. Westerman. Mr. 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 Westerman votes on. Mrs. Napolitano. Napolitano, no. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. No. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Uh, Gomert. Aye. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sublon. No. Oh. Mr. Sublon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagoose. No. Mr. Nagoose votes no. Mr. Graves. Uh, Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Heiss, yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leje Fernandez. No. Ms. Leje Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Ms. Stansberry. No. Webster votes yes. Ms. Stansberry, Ms. Stansberry votes no. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Get. Get votes no. Mr. Get votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. No. Mr. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Tiffany, aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl. Carl, aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin. McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale. All right. Rosendale, aye. Um, Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Moore, Mr. Moore votes aye. Ms. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nic Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harrell. Harrell votes yes. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Bobert votes aye. Ms. Bobert, I don't have a visual. Uh, Ms. Bobert, I see you. Mr. Ms. Bobert, Mrs. Bobert votes aye. Mr. Case? No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte? Ms. McCollum? Votes no. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz? Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen? No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Tonko? Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Tlaib? Votes no. Mr. Lee votes no. Mr. Han. No. Mr. Han votes no. Are members uh, who wish to vote and are not recorded or change their vote? Mr. Chairman, is Mr. Graves recorded? Mr. Graves is not recorded. Graves, Mr. aye. Graves, aye. 
Mr. Graves votes aye. Any other members? If not, the vote is closed <coughs> the virtual report. And Mr. Chair, on this vote, the A's are 20 and the nays are 26. Nays have it and the amendment fails and we move to stubborn, stubborn number two. Uh, the roll, uh, the clerk should call the roll, please. Ms. Mr. Grialva. No. Mr. Grialva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Ms. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Aye. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sablon. No. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagus. No. Mr. Nagus votes no. Mr. Graves. Graves votes aye. Mr. Graves votes aye. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Heiss votes yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leje Fernandez. No. Leje Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Webster votes yay. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Stansberry. Ms. Stansbury? Sorry, Stansbury votes no. Ms. Stansbury votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Deget. Deget votes no. Ms. Deget votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Tiffany, aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. No. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl. Aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin. McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Bobert votes aye. Mrs. Bobert votes aye. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte. Ms. McCollum. McCollum votes no. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib. Votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Ms. Trahan. Mr. Han votes no. Yes, are, are there members who have not voted and wish to be recorded or change their vote? If not, the vote is closed. The clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 20 and the nays are 26. The nays have it. The amendment fails and we move to stubborn number three. The clerk shall Follow the rules. Mr. Grialba. No. Mr. Grialba votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. No. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Aye. 
Mr. Comer votes aye. Mr. Sablon. No. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes. Mr. Lowenthal, I don't have a visual. Now, do you have a visual? No, sir. Now, do you have a visual? Yes. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Okay. McClintock. Aye. I'm sorry, Mr. Lowenthal? Yes. Uh, Mr. Lowenthal votes aye. Mr. McClintock? Aye. No, Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock, uh, Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClint Mr. McClintock? Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego? Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar? Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagoose? No. Mr. Nagoose votes no. Mr. Graves? This is yes. Graves, yes. Uh, Mr. Graves votes aye. Mr. Levin? No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss? Heiss, yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter? No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon? Aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Lasia Fernandez? Mr. Webster? Lasia Fernandez yes. votes no. Webster votes yes. Ms. Lasia Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Stansberry? Stansberry votes no. Ms. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Get. Get votes no. Mr. Get votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Tiffany, aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl. Carl votes yes. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin. Ed? McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. All right. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harrell. Votes yes. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Mrs. Bobert. Bobert, aye. Mrs. Bobert votes aye. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte. Ms. McCollum. No. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Tlaib. Tlaib votes no. Ms. Tlaib votes no. Mr. Han. No. Mr. Han votes no. Party members, uh, who not voted, Mr. Record their vote or change their vote? Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia votes no. If no one else, uh, the vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Is Mr. Madam Clerk, is Mr. Whitman recorded? Mr. Whitman is not recorded. Mr. Whitman votes aye. I just need a visual, sir. He's right there. I don't have a visual, sir. We all saw it. need a visual. Hello? He, he is currently having connectivity issues. I do not have a visual. Okay. Oh, there he is. Mr. Woodman, how do you vote, sir? 
Mr. Woodman, we had a visual. How do you how do you vote, sir? Thumbs up or down. Mr. Woodman, vote aye. Uh, I'm, I'm. The vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Uh, Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 20 and the nays are 26. Uh, the, the nays have it, the amendment fails, and we move to stopper number four. Mr. Grijalva. Yes, excuse me. Yeah. No. Mr. Grijalva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano? No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young? Mr. Costa? No. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert? Mr. Sablon? No. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn? Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman? No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman? Mr. Whitman votes Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagoose. Mr. No. Nagoose votes no. Mr. Graves. Votes aye. Mr. Graves votes aye. Mr. Levin? No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter? No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon? Radawagon aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leja Fernandez? Leja Fernandez votes no. Ms. Leja Fernandez votes no. Ms. Mr. Webster? Webster votes yay. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Stansberry? No. Ms. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon? Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez? Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher? Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Digget? Get votes no. Ms. Digget votes no. Mr. Sauber? Stauber votes yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee? Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany? Tiffany aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle? Dingle votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl? Yes. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin? McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale? Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto? Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas? San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harrell? Ms. Harrell votes aye. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia? Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert? Bobert votes aye. How's Mr. I Whitman reported? Miss, Mrs. Bober votes aye. How's Mr. Whitman recorded? He he has been recorded as an aye. Aye, thank you. Uh, Mr. Case? No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte? Ms. McCollum? No. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz? Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen? No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Tonko? Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib? Votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Mr. Han? No. Mr. Han votes no. Any members who wish to vote have but been recorded or changed their votes? Madam Clerk, is, is Mr. Gomert and Mr. Webster recorded? Are they recorded? And Mr. Gomert is not recorded. Mr. Webster is recorded. Mr. Gomert?
On this vote, uh, Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are uh, 19 and the yeas are 26. Uh, the, the nays have it, the amendment fails, and we move to subject number five, and the clerk shall call the roll. Mr. Grijalva? No. Mr. Grijalva votes no. Mr. Westerman? Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano? No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young? Mr. Costa? Mr. Gomert? Mr. Sablon. Uh, Sablon votes no. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. M Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagus. No. Mr. Nagus votes no. Mr. Graves. Graves is aye. Graves is Mr. aye. Mr. Graves votes aye. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Heiss is yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Mr. Porter. Mrs. Radawagon. Radawagon, aye. No. Mrs. Rad Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Porter votes. How do you vote, Ms. Porter? No. Ms. Porter votes no. Ms. Leje Fernandez. No. Ms. Leje Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Yes. Mr. Mr. Webster votes yay. aye. Ms. Stansberry. Stansbury votes no. Ms. Stansbury votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Deget. Deget votes no. Ms. Deget votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Tiffany, aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Mrs. Dingle? Mr. Carl? No, sorry. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl? Mr. McEachin? McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale? Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. San Nicolas. San Nicolas votes no. Mr. San Nicolas votes no. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes yes. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Bobert votes yes. Mrs. Bobert votes aye. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte. Ms. McCollum. No. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib. Talib votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Ms. Trahan. No. no. Mr. Han votes no. I didn't know about it. But. Okay, so let me send this to Melissa. Any, any members who wish to Mr. vote or how am I recorded, Mr. Chairman? Has Mr. Costa recorded? Please, Mr. Costa, Mr. Mr. Costa is not recorded. Mr. Costa votes nay. Mr. Costa votes no. Anyone who uh, anyone wish to record the vote or change the vote? How is Carl uh, recorded? Uh, Mr. Carl, you're not recorded. Uh, please put me down. Yes, aye. Mr. Car Mr. Carl votes aye. Anyone else? If not, the vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, uh, uh, the yeas are 19 and the nays are 26.
the amendment fails and we move to amendment uh stubborn amendment number six uh the clerk please uh, mr grialva no mr grialva votes no mr westerman aye mr westerman votes aye mrs napolitano no mrs napolitano votes no mr young mr costa Costa votes no mr costa votes no mr gomert Mr. Sablon. Votes no. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagoose. No. Mr. Nagoose votes no. Mr. Graves. Graves is yes. Mr. Graves votes aye. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Heiss votes yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leja Fernandez. Leja Fernandez votes no. Ms. Leja Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Webster votes yay. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Stansberry. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Mr. Falter. Falter votes aye. Mr. Falter votes aye. Mr. Get. get votes no. Mr. Get votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Tiffany votes aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl. Yes, aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin. No, McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Votes no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Uh, how am Mr. Chairman? Just a moment. Uh, Mrs. Bobert votes aye. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte. Ms. McCollum. McCollum votes no. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. no. Mr. Tonko. Mr. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib. No. Okay. Ms. Talib votes no. Ms. Trahan. No. Ms. Trahan votes no. Are there any members who have not voted in which to be recorded or change their vote? Yes, yes. the chairman, Ms. Velasquez. Ms. Velasquez, you're not recorded. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Anyone else? If not, the vote is closed. The clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 19, and the yeas are the yeas are 19, and the nays are 26. The amendment fails. And, uh, the nays have it and the amendment fails. Recorded vote uh, requested an amendment designated Gosar number three. The clerk will please call. Mr. Grialva. No. Mr. Grialva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. 
Mr. Sablon. Sablon votes no. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Mr. Negus. No. Mr. Negus votes no. Mr. Graves. Yes. Mr. Graves votes aye. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Heiss, yes. Mr. Heiss I'm votes aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Uh, Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Radawagon, aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leisure Fernandez. No. Ms. Leisure Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Webster votes yay. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Stansbury. Stansbury votes no. Ms. Stansbury votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Get. Get votes no. Ms. Get votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Mrs. Dingle. No. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl. Yes, aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin. McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harrell. Harold votes aye. Ms. Harold votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia is no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Rosendale's aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. And Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte. Ms. McCollum. No. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. Uh -huh. Mr. Cohen votes aye. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Tlaib. Tlaib votes no. Ms. Tlaib votes no. Ms. Trahan. No. Ms. Trahan votes no. Any member wish to be recorded or change their vote? How's Mr. Whitman recorded? Mr. Whitman, you're not recorded. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Any other members? If not, is Mr. Moore and Mr. Tiffany recorded? Are they are they recorded? Uh, Mr. Tiffany and Mr. Moore are not record recorded. Thank you. Is there any other uh, members? Yeah, there's me, Mr. Cohen here. Mr. Cohen. Got my video started. Uh, how am I recorded? Uh, Mr. Cohen, uh, Cohen is recorded as an E I. That was entirely a mistake. Should have been a no. Mr. Colin votes no. Okay, you guys gonna be no for the rest of the night. I knew that. I just screwed up. I'm about how many yeah. votes have we been through? How many more to go? Okay. Is there any other Chairman, votes? How am I recorded? Oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Costa, uh, you are recorded as a no. Very good. Thank you. The vote is closed, and the clerk shall report. Just 
Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 16 and the nays are 26. Uh, the nays have it. The amendment fails. And we move to amendment designated Gosar number four. And the clerk will call the roll. Uh, Mr. Grijalva. No. Mr. Grijalva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gilmert. Mr. Sablon. Sablon votes no. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagoose. No. Mr. Nagoose votes no. Mr. Graves. Mr. Levin. No. no. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Aye, she is. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Radawagon, aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leje Fernandez. Leje Fernandez votes no. Ms. Leje Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Webster votes yea. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Stansberry. Stansbury votes no. Ms. Stansbury votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher is aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Get. Get votes no. Mr. Get votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Got it. All right. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Uh, I've got my lows. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl. Carl votes yes. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin. McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes yes. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Yes, yeah, a no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mrs. Uh, Mr. Obernolte. Ms. Ms. McCollum. No. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Tonko. Uh, Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib. Talib votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Mr. Han. No. Mr. Han votes no. Are there any members who wish to record their vote or not recorded or change their vote? The vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 16 and the nays are 26. The nays have it and the amendment fails. Uh, amendment designated goes to our number five. Uh, the clerk shall call, please. Mr. Grijalva. No. Mr. Grijalva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Costa votes no. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Aye. Mr. Gomert vo votes aye. Mr. Sablon. No. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Mr. McClintock. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Lowenthal. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. 
Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Negus. Mr. Graves. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Heiss, yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Radawagon, aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leje Fernandez. Aye. Ms. Leje Fernandez votes aye. Mr. Webster. Webster votes yay. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Stansberry. No. Ms. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Mr. Falter. Falter votes aye. Mr. Falter votes aye. Ms. Deget. Deget votes no. Ms. Deget votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Tiffany, aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl. Aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin. McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Hi, oh, sweetie. Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Mrs. Bobert. Garcia's a no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obermulty. Ms. McCollum. Votes no. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Mrs. Talib. Votes no. Mr. Talib votes no. Mr. Han. No. Mr. Han votes Mr. no. Chair, how am I recorded? This is uh, Joe Nagus. Mr. Nagus, you're not recorded. Uh, Nagus votes no. Mr. Nagus votes no. Uh, Madam, I'd like to, this is Ledger Fernandez. I'd like to change my vote to no. Ms. Ledger Fernandez votes no. Good day. Does anyone else wish to uh, record their vote or change their vote? If not, we're supposedly stopping at seven. The, the, the vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Just a moment. I got 1825. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Mr. Chairman, this is Velasquez. How am I recorded? And Ms. Velasquez, you're not recorded. I'm a no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Okay. Must. Uh, Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 17 and the nays are 26. The nays have it and the uh, member, the member defeated, uh, it fails. Uh, amendment designated Gosar uh, 115. The roll, please, clerk. Uh, Mr. Grialva. No. Mr. Grialva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no, Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Yay. Mr. Gomert, Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sablon. No. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Aye. 
Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Negus. No. Mr. Negus votes no. Mr. Graves. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Aye, yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leje Fernandez. Leje Fernandez, no. Leje Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Webster votes yay. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Stansberry. Stansbury votes no. Ms. Stansbury votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Ms. Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Deget. Deget votes no. Ms. Deget votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Me, okay. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl. Aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin. McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. Votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte. Ms. McCollum. McCollum votes no. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Benz votes yes. Mr. Benz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tlaib. Tlaib votes no. Mr. Tlaib votes no. Mr. Han. No. Mr. Han votes no. Anyone uh, not recorded that wishes to record their vote or change their vote? If not, is Lowenthal recorded? Yes, Mr. Lowenthal, you re you're recorded as a no. Thank you. If not, the vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 18 and the nays are 26. The nays have it and the amendment fails and we move to amendment designated GOSAR 116. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Grijalva. No. Mr. Grijalva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. Right. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. No. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Yay. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sub Sublon. No. Mr. Sublon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Negus. No. Mr. Negus votes no. Mr. Graves. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Mr. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leje Fernandez. Leje Fernandez no. Ms. Leje Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Webster votes yay. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Stansberry. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. 
Mr. Falter votes aye. Ms. Duguet? Duguet votes no. Ms. Duguet votes no. Mr. Stauber? Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee? Uh, Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany? Mrs. Dingle? Mrs. Dingle? Tiffany, aye. Mr. Tiffany, aye. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl? Yes, aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin? McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale? Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto? Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas? San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harrell? Ms. Harrell votes aye. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia? Mrs. Bobert? Mr. Case? No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte? Ms. McCollum? McCollum votes no. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz? Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen? No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Mr. Tonko? Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Tlaib? Tlaib votes no. Ms. Tlaib votes no. Ms. Trahan? No. Ms. Trahan votes no. Any member who wishes to change their vote or uh, record their vote if they're not recorded? If not, the vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 18 and the nays are 25. Amendment fails and uh, the nays have it and the amendment fails. We now have uh, amendment designated Herald number four. The clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Grialva. No. Mr. Grialva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Sounds very interesting. Mrs. Napolitano Wait votes second. no. Mr. Young. Can you wait about two seconds? Mr. Costa. No. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Aye. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Lamborn. Mr. Sablon. Sorry. Uh, no. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Okay, I'm back. Mr. Huffman no. votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes aye. Thanks no. so much. Have a blessed Mr. day. Mr. Lowenthal yeah. votes no. Mr. McClintock. Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagoose. No. Mr. Nagoose votes no. Mr. Graves. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Ms. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Lady Fernandez. No. Ms. Lady Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Webster votes yay. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Stansberry. No. Ms. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Mr. votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Deget. Deget votes no. Ms. Deget votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee Mr. votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Tiffany, aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Dingle votes no. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl. Aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin. McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. 
Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia the no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte. Ms. McCollum. No. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz. Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib. Talib, Talib votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Mr. Han. No. Mr. Han votes no. Members wish to record their vote. Is that recorded or change their vote? If not, the vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 18 and the nays are 26. The nays have it and the amendment fails. Uh, the amendment designated Herald num number five. Uh, the clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Grijalva. No. Mr. Grijalva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. No. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Aye. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sablon. Oh. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Mr. McClintock. Lowenthal votes, Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Nagus. No. Mr. Nagus votes no. Mr. Graves. <coughs> Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Yes. Mr. Heitz votes aye. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leje Fernandez. No. Ms. Leje Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Webster votes yay. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Stansberry. No. Ms. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Deget. Deget votes no. Ms. Deget votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Uh, Mr. Ms. Brownlee. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Tiffany aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. No. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl. Aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin. McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harrell. Harrell votes aye. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Mrs. Bobert. No. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte. Ms. McCollum. McCollum votes no. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib. Talib votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Mr. Han. No. Mr. Han votes no. Any member not recorded that wishes to be recorded or want to change their vote? If not, 
The vote is closed. The clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 18 and the nays are 26. The nays have it. Uh, the amendment fails. Amendment designated Herald number six. Uh, the clerk shall call the roll. Mr. Grijalva. No. Mr. Grijalva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Okay. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Mr. Gomert. Yes. Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sablon. Yeah. No. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman. No. Mr. Huffman yeah. votes no. Mr. Whitman. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock. Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar. Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Negus. No. Mr. Negus votes no. Mr. Graves. Mr. Levin. No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss. Yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter. No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon. Radawagon aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leisure Fernandez. Leisure Fernandez votes no. Ms. Leisure Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster. Webster votes yay. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Stansberry. No. Ms. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez. Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher. Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Deget. Votes no. Mr. Gett votes no. Mr. Stauber. Stauber votes yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee. Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany. Tiffany aye. Mr. Tiffany votes aye. Mrs. Dingle. Mr. Carl. Aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin. McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale. Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto. Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. San Nicholas. Ms. Harrell. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia. Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert. Mr. Case. No. Mr. Case votes no. Uh, Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte. Ms. McCollum. McCollum votes no. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Tonko. Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. no. Ms. Talib. Votes no. Mr. Lee votes no. Ms. Trahan. No. Ms. Trahan votes no. San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Any member wishes to record their vote that's not recorded or change their vote? Mr. Chairman, how am I recorded? How is Mr. Ms. Costa recorded? Mr. Costa is not recorded. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Costa votes no. Thank you, Mr. Costa. If not, any other members, then the vote is closed. The clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on, Mr. Chair, on this vote, the A's are 18 and the nays are 25. The, um, the nays have it and the amendment fails and we move to amendment designated Herald 31. And uh, the, the clerk should call the roll, please. Uh, Mr. Grijalva. No. Mr. Grijalva votes no. Mr. Westerman. Aye. Mr. Westerman votes aye. Mrs. Napolitano. No. Mrs. Napolitano votes no. Mr. Young. Mr. Costa. Costa votes no. Mr. Costa votes no. Mr. Gomert. Aye. 
Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Sablon? No. Mr. Sablon votes no. Mr. Lamborn? Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Lamborn votes aye. Mr. Huffman? No. Mr. Huffman votes no. Mr. Whitman? Whitman votes aye. Mr. Whitman votes aye. Mr. Lowenthal? Lowenthal votes no. Mr. Lowenthal votes no. Mr. McClintock? Aye. Mr. McClintock votes aye. Mr. Gallego? Gallego votes no. Mr. Gallego votes no. Mr. Gosar? Aye. Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Negus? No. Mr. Negus votes no. Mr. Graves? Mr. Levin? No. Mr. Levin votes no. Mr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Heiss votes aye. Ms. Porter? No. Ms. Porter votes no. Mrs. Radawagon? Radawagon aye. Mrs. Radawagon votes aye. Ms. Leje Fernandez? Leje Fernandez votes no. Ms. Leje Fernandez votes no. Mr. Webster? Webster votes yay. Mr. Webster votes aye. Ms. Stansberry? No. Ms. Stansberry votes no. Ms. Gonzalez Colon? Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Gonzalez Colon votes aye. Ms. Velasquez? Velasquez votes no. Ms. Velasquez votes no. Mr. Fulcher? Fulcher votes aye. Mr. Fulcher votes aye. Ms. Deget? Deget votes no. Ms. Deget votes no. Mr. Stauber? Stauber votes yes. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Ms. Brownlee? Brownlee votes no. Ms. Brownlee votes no. Mr. Tiffany? Tiffany, aye. Mr. Tiffany aye, votes aye. Mrs. Dingle? No. Mrs. Dingle votes no. Mr. Carl? Aye. Mr. Carl votes aye. Mr. McEachin? McEachin votes no. Mr. McEachin votes no. Mr. Rosendale? Rosendale, aye. Mr. Rosendale votes aye. Mr. Soto? Soto votes no. Mr. Soto votes no. Mr. Moore? Mr. San Nicholas? San Nicholas votes no. Mr. San Nicholas votes no. Ms. Harrell? Ms. Harrell votes aye. Ms. Harrell votes aye. Mr. Garcia? Garcia votes no. Mr. Garcia votes no. Mrs. Bobert? Bobert votes aye. Mrs. Bobert vote. Uh, I did not see a visual. Okay. Mrs. Bobert votes aye. Mr. Case? No. Mr. Case votes no. Mr. Obernolte? Ms. McCollum? McCollum votes no. Ms. McCollum votes no. Mr. Bentz? Mr. Bentz votes yes. Mr. Bentz votes aye. Mr. Cohen? Mr. Tonko? Tonko votes no. Mr. Tonko votes no. Ms. Talib? Talib votes no. Ms. Talib votes no. Ms. Trahan? No. Ms. Trahan votes no. Any member wishes to uh, have their vote recorded or to change Moore. their vote? Moore is an aye. Mr. Moore votes aye. Mr. Cohen wants to vote no. Mr. Cohen votes no. Anyone else? Any other member? Uh, if not, the vote is closed and the clerk shall report. Mr. Chair, on this vote, the yeas are 19 and the nays are 26. The nays have it. The amendment fails. And uh, we have about a dozen roll votes left. We will approach that uh, hour with, uh, that we said we would in this part, uh, we have a dozen roll votes in the in the pipeline as well as uh, a volume of uh, amendments left to consider. Uh, on Thursday, when we reconvene at uh, at ten o'clock Eastern, uh, we'll deal with the roll votes and get them out of the way, and then uh, continue the amendment process. Uh, let me thank all the members, their patience, and probably more than patience, and. Uh, Certainly the patient coming up on Thursday, but uh, we'll see you 10 a.m. next Thursday. And let me thank the committee staff for their work. Uh, and the committee stands adjourned and we'll see you then. Thank you very much.